All right. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. All right. Peace and blessings, Peace and blessings on this Sabbath day. Sabbath day. So uh, we're going to let some people chime in. I'm going to give it a minute. Let a few people get in here um, on this Sabbath day. And we'll let people join in a little bit. And I hope everybody's doing good on this beautiful Sabbath day with all these storms headed our way. We got about what? I think it's three hurricanes getting ready. Seems like they're going to be able to collide with each other. So, yeah, it's three of them coming together. Um, and I believe in the spirit the Lord is telling me that these hurricanes are going to be way worse than the ones we've had in the past because we know when the birth and pain. And when we're in the birthing pains, um, it's like a woman in travail is going to get worse and worse and worse. So it's very important that with these new storms that are coming, the earthquakes, the hurricanes, the fires, the storms that we stay prayed up. And the, the, the lesson today is about prayer and the importance of prayer and why we pray. And not only why we pray, um, when we're doing the live lessons, um, it was this baby Duru's back up, baby Duru. We don't do, we're not joining anybody in when we do the lessons. We find that kind of hinders the lessons. So what we do is we do the lesson and then we'll come back and answer questions. We're also on YouTube. Um, for anybody who's on my other pages, you can go to YouTube channel. We're live. It's at Yabril, Y-A-H-B-R-I-L, Yehuda, Y-E-H-U-D-A-H. I'm um, Yabril, my and this is my wife, Sister Micaiah, and peace and, blessings. peace and blessings. And the biggest thing is right now is waking our people up, not just our people, but the world, because that's a lot of problems with a lot of these people who are teaching. They only want to say that Israel, the only one going to be saved. And that is just not true. That is not true whatsoever. The scriptures don't say that. It says that Israel is the anointed. They are the elect and that these are the ones who are going to be at the wedding party. But we also have handmaids and servants and these people who actually were following the laws when we stopped following the laws and the Lord gave them our kingdom. And he grafted them in only because you understand they believe more than we did. And so by saying that, he also tells them don't boast against the natural branch. And we are that natural branch. But at the same time, what good is for us to boast if we got a stick in a board in our eye and, you know, and we're talking about a stick in somebody else's eye and we got to get ourselves right first. Yeah. Before we start trying to dictate um, anyone else and how everybody else lives, so forth and so on. And so saying that one of the main things we need to focus on is we need to focus on prayer. How do we pray? Um, wh who do we call upon and why do we call upon him? You know, a long time, our people have been given the name of Jesus and our ancestors prayed in that name. And the most high knew that we've been a land of our uh, that that wasn't ours that that they would take away from us and that the, the as he said that we would be um Japhet would be in the tents of Shem and that's what's going on right now Japhet's children are in the tents of Shem along also with Esau and saying that um we've been taught a lot of wrong things mm -hmm. and one thing we've been taught is we haven't been taught properly how to pray when you call on Jesus Jesus is comes from Jesus um, it's a son worship God. It's the worship of the son God, Jesus. That's why in Spanish, Jesus is Jesus. Now, saying that it's not the name. The name is super important. I'm, I'm gonna stress this. But the Lord says better that you didn't know than to know, because once you know, you need to follow and adhere to it. So His real name is Yeshua. Yeshua in Hebrew means um, He. Yeah, excuse yeah. me, Yah salvation. It means Yah salvation. It means Yah salvation, and that's what His name is, salvation. What does Yahuwah mean? He who breathes life, that's the most high's name. He who breathes life, nail in hand. That's why he says, even though I came in my father's name, you wouldn't accept me. But if another come, you would accept him. And that is that name that we've been calling on that you call Jesus or you only call Jesus. Now, do I get stuck on that? No. Why? Because the Lord is going to give us a new name. And he also, if you think about our ancestors who died and they've just been real spiritual people, they called on their name. So it, it wasn't the name, it was the power behind the name. Now, when you learn his true name, there is power in it, which is Yeshua. And it means he's coming to save. And so how is he going to save? He's saving by something. In the book of Acts, we got to remember in the book of Acts, when all these so-called Israelites from different nations, no matter where they were, Spain, Germany, France, Damascus, 
um, they were from Syria, all these, all, Damascus and Syria, when they were from all these different areas all over, they spoke different languages. But these people also did another thing. The tribes, all the tribes, when Pontius Pilate had Yeshua, this was in the time of Pontius Pilate and King Herod, and they delivered him up to Pontius Pilate. Now, this is supposed to be, he's supposed to be our savior. He came, it was always written from the beginning of the time that we have a savior through the seed of Jesse. And that he would come on this earth and he would save his people. And so the way he had to do that is in, in the simple is that when he came on this earth, he saw a lot of things. He saw that the churches were corrupt. They were taking money from the people who were poor and they were misusing things. And they were also doing another thing. They were bringing tithes and offerings, you understand? Like they would bring a, if say for instance, a lamb, lamb should be of the first, uh, uh, of the first year, unblemished, and had to be on the year old. And what they were doing was bringing um, animals that were maimed and, and, and right. you know, that were leftovers. leftovers and they had spots on them. And then they were bringing fruits with mold and mildew on it to the church. And this is when the Lord say, how do you rob me? You rob me by my tithing. Because back then we took food, we took wheat, grain and oil, but it had to be, it had to be of our first crops and it had to be the best. And so what they were doing was they were bringing inferior fruit and animals into the temple. So that's why he said, how do you rob me? He says, by, by tithing. Because back then, they tithed to the priests, wheat, grain, and oil. It was never money. And so when he came on the scene, we always we already know that David stripped um, Aaron's first set of children that were corrupt. He appointed Zadok's children, which is still the line of Aaron. They were still priests, but they were stripped. And when Christ came on the scene, or Yeshua, we call Yeshua, um, the Messiah, when he came on the scene, he saw that they was taking the money in the temples and they turned, he said, you've turned my father's house into a den of what? Thieves. A den of thieves because they steal. That's why Jeremiah 23 verse one say the pastor scattered sheep, Michael 3 11, say each one teach for his gain of a quarter. And Isaiah 56 10 says they like dogs, they don't even bark and tell you what's coming. You got some good pastors out there, don't get me wrong. There's some guys out there who really, and they're harder trying to teach. But you gotta remember that these people of giving you teachings that's dealing with theology that comes from the Roman Catholic Church. And they've only given you 66 canons. You don't have all these other books to give you understanding. These people that you will call your so-called leaders got you worshiping on Sunday. Sunday is Saturnella, worshiping the sun god. These people who you call these pastors and these deacons and preachers, they've got you worshiping Christmas and holidays. Well, if you go to Jeremiah 23, verse 1, it tells you that Christmas is an abomination to the Lord. Uh -huh. 10. Jeremiah chapter 10, yes, verse 1. Thank you, sweetheart. Help me. If you go into the scriptures and you start really reading these scriptures, these men have got you doing things that you shouldn't be doing. Why are you sitting there? And, and another thing they did, they pushed on people to take the so-called uh, miracle medicine. I'll just leave it there. And when they did this, a lot of people suddenly dropped. And this was pushed because it was getting $1,200 per person, the churches were. And so you got to stop going in and worrying about churches and people and camps and realize that you have to have a personal relationship with Yeshua. And so when Yeshua saw the money changing tables kicked over, what did he do? He said, now I'm going to come in and I'm going to die for my people. No longer do they take a bird or a bull or a dove. They slaughter it. And then they would go into the temple and slaughter it and that blood would atone for the sin. He says, this is something I'm going to do because I know they're going to be in the land, their land, and it's going to be taken. I know they're going to also be taken out of other lands, scattered to the four corners of the earth. I know that they cannot do worship and sacrifice and ceremonies as we've done traditionally because they're not in their lands. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to die for my people. I'm going to leave them something. And, and so the disciples asked them, you know, can we get it now? He said, no, you can't get this until I die. And so what happened was when Passover came by, and this is when all our people, all of our people of all our tribes, you understand, they ended up leading Yeshua, who we call the anointed one, the prince of this earth, or the heir of this earth, and we're joint heirs. They ended up leading him to Pontius Pilate and they wanted him destroyed. But Pontius Pilate took him to King Herod and King Herod heard of the, the, the things that he'd done and all of these miracles. He said, I don't want nothing to do with this man's death. When he was a child, I sought him out. But now that I know who he is, I don't want nothing to do with it. I, I don't want my soul destroyed. So he sent him back to Pontius Pilate. And when he got back to Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilate asked this man, he said, you know, he told the people, he says, who do you want? Do you want this murderer or do you want him? They said, we want to let the murderer go and we want to go ahead and deliver him up. And so all the tribes of Israel ended up delivering him up to who? 
Pontius Pilate to be slaughtered. And Pontius Pilate said, listen, I'm innocent in this man's blood because I want to let him go. If y'all want to do this, they said, well, let his sin fall on, let his death fall on us and what? Our right. children. And so we are those children who inherited that. And so by saying that, he ended up being slaughtered or, or killed on a tree. And when he was pierced in the side, water poured out. It was symbolic of the spiritual baptism that we get in the Holy Spirit. And then another thing that poured out was this blood, which is symbolic of his blood dying for us. So when he died for us, he left something that was called the Holy Spirit. And he said he was going to leave it for us for a time, a time, and a time and a half. And this is where we're at right now. The Holy Spirit right now is on this earth. He left it for us. But the only way to get to the Father, we got to go through who, Sister Micaiah? We got to go through Christ. You got to go us. through him. He died for us. Sin. Now his blood covers us. No longer do you have to take money and tithes and stuff to these preachers and these deacons and people. He knew that they would be corrupt. So this is important to notice that your salvation does not stem from a house. Acts 17, verse 24, he says, I do not dwell where, Sister Micaiah? In a place built with, with man's man. hands. He dwells inside of us. And all we got to do is pray. That's why he's called the what? Intercessor. Okay? He's the one that you have to go through in order to get to the most high. Why? Because the Lord said when it's judgment day, as we was reading, um, what was that in Isaiah when he says that it was one, like a building, one side fire, one side water? Oh, no. That well, was... Um, what well, scripture was that? Remind uh, me. Second Edge. Second Edge. Second Edge. Thank you, sweetheart. And so in order to get there, there's a narrow road only one man can get there. In order to get there, you're going to be there by yourself with him. Nobody's going to be with you on judgment day. So all these people you're following, these people that you're looking up to, that you're idolizing, all these people who want fame and power, when it comes to Judgment Day, which is coming soon, all you got to do is look around the earth. One thing I want to point mm -hmm. out that you just touched on. Yes, ma'am. It's very important to understand that it's fine to ask people to pray for you. Right. But it's also very important that you have, have your own relationship. And that's very yeah, important. A lot of people, people miss the mark. We, we've been so disconnected. Connected, we've right. been so indoctrinated with, okay, we got to go through these this people, person, this group, this, this organization, group, yes. these, you know, but you yes. don't. One yes. thing you got to learn, you'll learn when you read these books. Most I said with Israel, the 12 tribes, he's with us personally. Yes. When you read Revelation, you learn that there's seven angels that come and go. These seven angels are different spirits or Rowaks, you understand, but they all make up what you call the Holy Spirit. All seven. And those whole, those seven spirits, they report on all the other nations. But the most high, he's with us personally. He knows everything we're thinking and everything we're doing. All you got to do is go to who? That's why he calls us his what? He's called, he said, call him what? Father. When you have a, a problem, when, when you when your dad was living, would you not go talk to him? Right. You have a what kind of conversation? A personal one. Mm -hmm. Right? Right or wrong? Right. And this is what we have to have, folks. He's our father. That's why he said, you call no man father on earth. You only call me father. What does that mean? That means you can come to me just like a child. And that's how we should be, just like a child and humble. Come to him, pray to him, and ask him anything you want. But listen, you got to repent of sins, folks. That's the biggest thing. Repent of your sins. Ask him to, to help you out. But when you finish that prayer, you must say, in the name of your son, Yeshua, I pray. Amen. Why? Because you got to go through him to get to the Father. He Look, is the intercessor. He's the for intercessor everybody for everybody. Approaching the throne. He's the Lord of all spirits. I understand this. And so we got to make sure that when we pray, we go through him. And we're going to give some examples and we're going to read a little bit and expound upon this how prayer is important. And without prayer, there's no straight communication with the Most High. We all must pray. And a lot of people, this is the problem. You know, when you have a friend, when do you pray? You, I mean, when you talk to him, you talk to him all the time. You don't just talk to him when you're going through something or when or when something bad happens. You talk to him all the time. He needs to be your friend. Did he not call Abraham his friend? We got to be your friend to the most high and know that we're his children. And that means we go to him all the time, not just when we're going through something, not just when you break up in a relationship, not just when you're going through something with a child or death in your life or, or, or mother passes uh, away or uncle yeah. hardship. You understand? You have to go to him all the time and pray so he knows that you're not just doing it. You understand? Just for a moment and for a time. And you understand mm -hmm. he knows your, your heart. He knows your insides. He knows everything. So we can't fool him. You don't pray a what? 
amiss. Don't pray amiss. What does that mean? It simply means when you pray to him, hey, I want this nice car, Father. I need this nice house and I want this nice stuff and all. But you're praying those superficial prayers because you want to impress people, not because you need it for your family. Father, I want to, I want to have this and I want to have that. But you're doing them so you can get men or you can get women. It's superficial. You pray to miss, and he knows it. Mm -hmm. He knows exactly what you're thinking when you pray certain thoughts. And he doesn't give you what you want. He gives you what you need. And his time is not our time. You understand? His ways are equal, and our ways are unequal. We got to remember that. At mm -hmm. times, he will bless you with some things. You no, no, no. A lot of times, he will. But what I'm saying is, he'll. No, a lot of times, he'll bless you with the things you want. That's why I say, if you ask, you'll receive. But a lot of times, a lot of people are praying for things, you understand, that they don't even need, that's, not that's superficial, and it's not righteous. not righteous. And so, therefore, you pray, because he knows yeah. what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. So you pray to miss. That means you're a double tongue and a double mind. And we know that a person with a double tongue and a double mind is unstable no, some of their ways, anything. but they're unstable in all their ways. And so we got to be careful. So when you want something, you pray to him. He, he'll make things. He said, if you have faith, a must seek and move what? a mountain. So when you want something, you pray to him, but don't pray amiss. Have an earnest prayer on things that you really need or things that you really want him to do, but don't do it for superficial reasons. And this is something that's very important. My YouTube channel is Y-A-H-B-R-I-L, Yehuda, Y-E-H-U-D-A-H. So for instance, if we get cut off for any reason on TikTok or any of these other platforms, just make sure you go to the YouTube channel. We're live there. And um, we're going to read um, the Gospel of John. First, we're going to go 14, 13 through 22. Gospel of John, 14, 13 through 22. And what me and Sister Micaiah do, sometimes I'll let, I'll just let her read and I expound and then I'll read sometimes. Sister Micaiah, um, okay, what's going on? All right. Okay, can you, uh, okay, so what I'll do is I'll let you go ahead and start out, Sister Micaiah. Uh, we're going to read First John. Actually, I can go ahead and read. I'll okay. read the first part. Uh, 14, I says 13 to 22. All right. This is the gospel of John. I'm going to read chapter 14, and I'm going to read chapter 13 through 22. Verse 13, Verse 13 through 22. It says, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in what? The, the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, guard of my commandments. So he said, if you love me, guard what? His commandments. And his commandments are not Don't grievous. Hand hand your and then when people tell you that his laws are done away with, that's why Yeshua straightway told you, my, I didn't come to do away with the laws, not one dot, one tittle. It's so important to know that Torah, folks. What is the Torah? The Torah is the first five books of the Bible. This is what Moses gave us. The Lord said, if you don't know the Torah, you know none of his ways. And those people who don't follow the Torah in the end, they will not make it when he come back the next time around. And he's coming back real soon, folks. So we got to remember this. 15. This is the Gospel of John, chapter 14, um, uh, chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, guard my commandments. 16. And, and I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide it with you forever, even the Rowak Emmeth. And what does that mean? Rumach The spirit, spirit of, of truth. truth. So that means the spirit of truth will be there. It says, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with, with you and shall be in you. And this is why Yeshua said, if you knock, I'll come into you and I'll sup with you. And remember, he also said he is the way, the truth, truth and, the and the life. And the life. Okay. It says, I will not leave you comfortless, and I will come to you. Now, what does he mean comfortless? What is the Holy Spirit? It's called the Comforter. And the Holy Spirit is female in essence. And he left that for us when he passed away or when he was taken from us. It says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. 19, yet a little while, and the world sees me no more. But ye see me because I live, yea, shall live also. It says, ye shall live also. At that day, you shall know that I am in my Father, and, and ye in me, and I in you. He that has my commandments and guards them, he is that. Now, this is Yeshua, this is Yeshua talking. He is that loves me. He is, he, it, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him 
and will manifest myself to him. So he says, who does that? He says, that means you show you love me and, 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 and my, you'll be loved by my father. So you got to go through him in order to even have a relationship with the father. And then he says, I'll be in you and you and me because he's in me and I'm in you. Sister Makai, you want to elaborate on that? Yeah. And so when I actually looked up the word prayer, mm -hmm. that is part of the, the definition to connect, basically. Uh, and so right here. Go ahead and break it down for me. I want you to go ahead and break that. it down. Yeah, break that word down. Okay. Um, so the word. Uh, the word in Hebrew, it's, it's actually a few words in Hebrew, but mm -hmm. this one here that I really dug into is Tefillah, okay. H8605 in the Strong. H605 in the Strongs, got you. Mm -hmm. Show them the Strongs, please. Let me hand me the Strongs Concordance. Right here. We're educating them so they can learn how to do what they do. All right, this is the Strongs Concordance. When you want to know the meaning of words and you want to break them down, make sure you get your Strongs Concordance. Mm -hmm. Now, when we teach, we also show you books and things to reference. You get this on Amazon, okay? It's a Strong's Concordance. It's by James Strong, LLD, STD. And so make sure you get one of these so you can have an understanding of words when you go through the words. Yeah. Okay? So we're going to break this word down, prayer down. Go ahead. Let's go ahead and break uh -huh. it down. So Hebrew is reading from right to left. The very first letter is Tav. Mm -hmm. Which means a mark, sign, seal, covenant, mark, a sign together. A, it's a mark, it's a sign, it's a seal, it's a covenant. And when you do these things, it joins it together. Why? The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they're separate. They're what? One. They but become also, one. this is how this will help you to become one mm -hmm. with Christ. And let me show you something that the Lord showed me the other day, and I'll explain something. Yes, that was so deep. I'm glad. Well, I'm just, you know, the yes, more I put in my yes, spirit yes. to do it. Now, let me give you an example. This is what we call, what do you call it, Sister The menorah, the candlestick. It's called menorah, the candlesticks. And the candlesticks is a holy, a holy vessel for us, but it's spiritual. It means a lot. If you think about the right hand side, you got Abraham, you got Isaac, you got Jacob. These are progenitors of the nations who all the promises went through. And these sit on the right-hand side of the Messiah. But then if you come here, you got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There's their spirits. It's, they're separate, but they're what? One. They become one. And all these spirits have one head. And that's the Messiah. And through all of this here, he unites all of us as one person. And so those who didn't get to see, let me back up again. I said on the right-hand side, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These are the ones who, who come through, the Messiah. Through him, because of the promises that were given, you got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit over here. They're spirits. And it says they're separate, but they become what? One. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham. Yeah, so. No, no. It's, I said over on the right-hand side, mm -hmm. you got Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob right here mm -hmm. on the right-hand side. These are the ones who the promise to go to. Remember the disciples? I mean, when the guys was asking, we sit on your right-hand side? Mm -hmm. And the Messiah said, that is not for me to do, my father. Right. My father's the one to give who sits on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. Then he showed me on the left-hand side with the father, was the Holy Spirit, the Father, his spirit, Yeshua's spirit, and also what you would call the comforter, the Holy Spirit. And they're separate, but they become what? One and all. All of them encompass one, but they got what? One head. And that's the Messiah. This is what makes up what we would call the Torah. This is the covenant, the Holy Covenant. And the covenant was given to a people. And it was given to a people because these people would be the lawgivers. And so when I was looking at that and I was seeing that, it came to me in like a vision. It was a, it was a beautiful. You need to probably just turn that a little bit. No, I have it. No, they can see me. I'm right there. They can see me now. They couldn't see me before. Okay. When you see it on the screen, they can see me, sweetheart. Trust me on that. And I just went over it. So they saw it. All right. So um, saying that, we got to understand that what we go through and what we're doing is spiritual. This menorah that I'm wearing, um, this stuff is spiritual. It's, it shows it's, it's, it's symbolic of a covenant that's made with the people. And so we got to understand that this covenant right now, Yeshua is coming back for his bridegroom to fulfill this covenant. And so prayer is so important that we keep prayers up and that we go through him in order to get to the Father. And so you said I need to show that again? 
Are they fine? No, they saw. They said they saw it. Okay, cool. All right. And so I'm just showing you some spiritual effects that the Lord showed me things. And when I was sitting there, and this all just came, you know, and I, and I couldn't believe it. I'm sitting there looking. I say, son, look, on my right hand. That's what that symbolizes. This is what it symbolizes. He says, on my right hand, it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They sit on the right-hand side of the Messiah. But on this side, the left side, is the, is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're spirits. It says they're separate, but just like a man and a woman, they become what? One. And then all of them may be separate, just like we have the nose can do without the hand, the hand without the body. One can prophesy, one can teach, one can heal. We're all separate, but we're what? One body with one head. And that's the Messiah. He's the one right here who joins us all together. It's a holy covenant itself that is it represents. This is a covenant between the Messiah and his people and a promise that was given by the Father. We're going to read 2 Baruch 63 and verse 5. And what we're doing is we're in the Sefer. I'm going to show you. We read out of now when we get this book. Second Baruch is, is actually in the Sefer. And I'm not sure if it's in, it's not in the uh, Apocrypha. What? The Baruch. Second Baruch. It's in some, some but not all of them. First Baruch is in all of them. Right. So the Sefer right here is what we have. C-E-P-H-E-R. You get it at C-E-P-H-E-R dot net. It has all, a lot of our books here that were taken. And so you can kind of put things together when you get them. Who is Baruch? Baruch was Jeremiah's secretary. Jer the prophet Jeremiah had a secretary. His name was Baruch. When we're in Greek captivity, Jeremiah had Baruch write the ciphers or ciphers. And what he did was he gave three of them to three. He took uh, three ciphers, gave them some bald eagles. They took them to what you call the ten and a half tribes, which was in Nazareth or what you call the Americas. And then they also, the northern tribe, the southern tribes, which were... Um, which with Benjamin, Levi, and Judah, he took two wise men and gave him these books. So I'm going to have my wife read um, 2 Baruch 63 and verse 5, please. Okay, it says, And El Elohim heard him, for uh, Hezekiah was wise, and he had respect unto his prayer, because so, he was righteous. Now, they say that the Lord does not respect, respect any man. But when you go through these scriptures, you're going to learn the Lord is the respect of Israel. And he's also respective him of, of those men who are righteous and who follow his laws. Now, why did he why did he respect his prayers? He said again, because he was righteous. He was righteous. He came out of sin. And this is what we have to do, folks. We have to realize that we've got to come out of sin and that we've got to um, live, right live righteously. You understand in the Lord and that we can't be doing things based on our heart and think that we're going to get things that are spiritual. That's why the Lord say wherever your treasures are. Where your heart is, that's where your treasures are. You know, a sister of mine, really, she put it so eloquently. She said, if you're not about the most highest business, he won't be about your business. That's right. From the empty, empty. <laughs> I love the way she put it. From the empty, empty. The and full, 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 as the Lord say. I'm going to go to the book of Matthew. We're going to go to chapter 6, 5, and 9. All you at home, go to the book of Matthew, please. Matthew what? Matthew chapter 6. Okay. We're going through the Sefer. There's a lot of books here. All right. So all of you at home, if you go to Matthew chapter six, because we want to talk about the importance of prayer and why we need to make sure that we're praying continually in the right way, in the right way to pray. And, you know, a lot of people, when I say whatever you do, don't pray amiss. Don't pray for I want a, a wife who's 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 fine and got a pretty face. And I want a woman who got a big old house. I want a woman who already I ain't got to do no work. I just wanted to be ready to go. I want a woman with a nice car. I want a woman who, who you know. Who, when we go somewhere, you understand, she does this and this for me. Or a woman says, I want a man who's tall, six foot five. I want a man who's got a lot of money. I want a man who's got, you know, who got his act together. Not understanding that these black men in Israel are being persecuted and, and, and that, that there's a war been against them. And so there's so many factors against them. A lot of them don't have their act together, but you got to work with them in order to get it together. That's what a team is. Isn't a woman, a wife is supposed to be a what, Sister Micaiah? She's supposed to be helpmate. She's a helpmate, and that's important. And so, and they you, need our help. And we, exactly. So you guys got to understand something. She said it sarcastically. I see that. <laughs> you know what I mean? She a mess. I tell you, boy. So you know. So we do. We do. You know. It's like I'll do the lesson, but my wife types it up real quick. She's got like these rubber fingers, you know, and she's real articulate with things. And so a lot of times I may quote something wrong, and she'll catch it. But she's my helpmate in many ways. And so we got to understand that 
when you pray for a spouse, when you pray for a husband, when you pray for somebody, don't have a superficial prayer because you pray for a man that's six foot four, a man that's got a lot of money. You pray for a man that will help you with your children. You understand? You pray for a man who's who's got um, land and property, but you never pray for a spiritual man. You pray to mist. And when you pray a mist and you got a double mind because you want superficial things, the Lord knows it. And so since you prayed a mist and you had a superficial prayer, you're going to get a superficial relationship. And this is exactly what's going on today. People are taking the Lord out of the equation. Reading the book of Matthew, chapter 6, 5 through 9. I'm going to have Sister Micaiah read this. Chapter 6, 5 through 9. Sister Micaiah, please. And when you pray, you shall not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Now, we see that when you go through certain religions, these people, they're praying, they're rocking, and they want to stand up and they want to be seen of men. It's all about letting everybody see you pray. It's all about letting everybody, you know, you want people to think that you're religious and you're holy, that you're so holy. But the Lord knows your insides. And so all of that showboating, you understand, the Lord does not like. Keep reading, please. Amen. I said, I say unto you, they have their reward. They already got their reward. You want, okay, you want to show everybody that you're so religious? You want to show everybody that you got this? Okay, you're going to have your reward in the end because in the end, I'm going to rebuke you. Get away from me. Not that I don't know you. I never knew you. That's that weeping and gashing the teeth. Go ahead. But you, when you pray, enter into your closet. And when you have shut your door, pray to your father, which is in secret. So he says, when you pray, you need to go where? And it says, shut your door. Pray to your father, which is in secret. No, it says when you pray. Oh, into your closet. We got to read it. We got to read it. It says go into a closet. Why does it say a closet? Well, a closet is a small, com confined place, a place where nobody's around and nobody can fit in normally a closet but you. And what does that symbolize? It, it symbolizes when you go to for the Most High and before the Messiah that there's only going to be one person standing there. And who is that? That's you. That's why he said a closet, because normally only one person can fit what well, depends on the closet you got. So, but that's what it symbolizes. It symbolizes you going to him by yourself, without other people around you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It says, and when you have shut your door. Okay, let's go over the precept six, when, when you read. Six. No, go over to Matthew 6 and tell them everything. Because uh -huh. people people Matthew keep joining. People keep joining. Six, verse 6. Thank you. Matthew 6, verse 6. Thank you, dear. Go All ahead. right. It says, but you, when you pray, enter into your closet. And when you have shut your door, pray to your father, which is in secret, and your father, which sees in secret, shall reward you openly. And now, when you do these things in secret, he's going to do something. He's going to reward you openly. He's going to let you see those prayers manifest. Now, it may not be on your time. Right. Because your time may be amiss, and he knows it won't benefit you. So he'll do it on his time, so it benefits you. You understand? Because he's alpha and he's omega. He knows beginning, the middle, and the end, and he knows exactly what you need before you. Did he not say, My father's house has many mansions? And in those mansions, everything you ever wanted is going to be there. Why? Because he knows exactly everything we want. He, he says he knows every hair on our head. Mm -hmm. Keep reading, please, Sister Micaiah. This is Matthew chapter 6, verse 7. Thank you. It says, But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. Now, saying that, there's a lot of people with prayer books. There's a lot of people with books, with prayers that are repeated over and over and over again. You understand? They call them prayer books. But you're supposed to have a what? A personal relationship with him. Why are you regurgitating other people's prayers? Shouldn't you be having your own relationship with him, talking and asking him whatever you feel, whatever you're going through, whatever you're thinking, whatever, anything you're feeling? Don't, don't, don't regurgitate other people's prayer. Go ahead and read that over again for me, please. Yeah. Please read it over again. This is this is your edification, folks. Read, read it, please. Verse 7, Matthew 6, verse 7. It says, but when you pray, use not vain repetition so as when, the heathen do. So when you keep repeating the same prayers that somebody else did, you're using vain repetitions. And a lot of times he's talking about when they're sitting there praying, they're saying, no, 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 no whatever they're doing, they're saying, no, there's no rituals, they said them over and over again. So it's twofold. The ritual prayers. And also repeating other people's prayers over and over when you need to be coming out of your mouth, telling what you feel, how you think, the way you think, and don't hide nothing from him. We when I say, no, let me him. let me finish. When I say don't hide anything from him, what I mean is 
Don't think in your mind that you're hiding something from, as my wife just said. You can't. You can't. Go ahead, Sister Micaiah, please. I Thank know. You. Uh, one, mm -hmm. I, and that, uh -huh. that's the thing. Like, everything we do say and think is recorded. Yes. It's recorded, and the Lord is going to bring it up to you again. Yes. Okay. On Judgment Day. He's going to know your, like I said, we went through that. A yeah. small sample What's going to happen is your spirit is going to come out of you. It's going to testify everything you did. And there's nothing you can hide. And it's going to do it in front of everybody else on Judgment Day. So everybody's going to see your sins. Now, mind you, when we convert, he takes that stony heart away and gives a heart of flesh. And he takes that spirit that we've had for so long and put his spirit in us. We won't remember a lot of this stuff. He doesn't want us to. And that's why he's refining us right now as gold and silver. And one of the ways to refine us is gold and silver. You got to go through the fire, which is this world. But you got to go back to that water. And that water is this word. And in order to get a piece of steel, you dip it in the fire, this world, then you go back to the water. You got to do it about 10 times. That's why we got repentance. That's what repentance is for. You go in that closet, you sin, you know you weren't supposed to do something, and you know you got to talk to, even talk to him about it. And you meant well, just like some of our prophets did. And then you went back to your vomit again. This is why you got grace. Grace means that you got a time period to go get it right. This is what he, he's long suffering. He has what we call salvation and he's coming to save. And so therefore, when you go through things, don't think that it's the death of you. No, some sin is the death and some sin is just repentance, folks. Most sins, you get to repent. So when you see and these things happen, don't beat yourself up. Know that you're being refined like gold and silver. And if you get convicted, that means you have a moral compass. And that means with that moral compass, when you go back and you sin and you do something, you go, Lord, please forgive me. I didn't mean to go back to this dude. I, you told me don't do it. You told me he was no good for me. And I did it again. And he didn't. And he got me worse. Father, you told me don't do these drugs. You told me and you showed me one night what they would do to me. And I went back again because I had a relapse. You repent. You repent and let the Holy Spirit start working through you. Father, my sister, my brother, my mama, them, they treat me so horrible. My family ain't right. I'm the one giving my heart. I give my all, but it seems like they put me as a floor mat. You understand? You have to repent of anything you've done with them or against them. And if they've done something to you, you have to scrub your heart out. I know my uncle came in when I was a little girl and he was messing with me. And I know that right now I've been having perpetual hate for men. And sometimes it messes with my relationship with my own man. And when that happens, you understand? Because you haven't scraped your heart out. You haven't let it go and forgiven him. Why? You forgive him and let the Lord take care of him. The Lord is going to handle all these wicked people. That is not your place. You can't make one hair white or gray. You cannot add one stature to your height. So thinking you can control anything, you're above your pay grade. We do not control anything. And we fight against what? Spirits and principalities in high places. And these demons will have you holding on to old things so you can't move forward. You cannot be complacent, folks. You got to pray, go in that closet, ask the Lord to forgive those who molested you, those who 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 stolen from you, those who 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 talk to you the wrong way in front of people where you got embarrassed, those who when you were out and about and you thought they was your friend or your cousin or your brother, they let you down and got with somebody who you trusted, and then you realized that they will stab you in your back. You got to let it go. You forgive them. Now, when I say this, you forgive, but you don't forget. You don't become someone's fool or their footmat, but you do. You remember how many times you forgive your, your brother and sister Micaiah? How many times are you supposed to forgive them? Seven times. Seven times, 70 times we're supposed to forgive people, but that doesn't mean you become a fool for them. Okay. But at the same time, you've got to repent of your sins. Sister Micaiah, go ahead and keep reading, please. All right. We on um, the uh, Gospel of Matthew, seven. Verse, verse seven. Gospel I'm Matthew. The bottom half. Go. You, got, you tell them where you at. Matthew. All right. So Matthew chapter six. Thank the, you. Uh, the second half of verse seven. Thank it you. Says, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knows what things ye have need of before for, ye ask him. So he already knows what you need before you ask. So when you go to him, you say, Father, I want you to help me with to get a house. I need you to, because I, I want a home so bad. Father, I need a car. I need my children are going through this. You know, I want a husband, Father. He's heard you and you prayed to him. But yet every day, because you put in his hand, and you ask him, and me and my wife have this conversation all the time. And you put in his hand, you ask him, What did I say happens, Michelle? What is it? What do you do? A lot do? of times we don't. Show trust me, show me, show him. me. And what do you do so with it? We wind up taking 
taking what we've asked for, taking that prayer back, essentially. As soon as you go back over and over again, he just said, I don't like vain repetitions. I don't like repeated prayers. And if he says, I know everything you need before you even ask, why are you going back and ask him a million times over and over again? Is he not the one who created us in the heavens? Does he not create the stars, the moon, the sun, the air, the birds, huh? the fowls, huh? the cattle? And he created you. He knows. So why you keep going back to him? It's like when you're dealing with a regular brother or sister and you keep coming back saying the same thing over again. What do we get? We get frustrated. Are we not in his image? Well, I mean, think about it, though. Hannah, she prayed repeatedly for a child when she was barren and the Lord answered her prayer. So it's really yeah, but what, she what pray. we would talk about is more so having faith. You understand? You got to have faith. You can't be double minded right. because the Lord said, if you're praying and you don't have faith, don't expect anything from him. Right. No. You know, so yep. that's what's key. Yep. And when Hannah was praying like that, Hannah was told to ask and she was told to pray like that. And Hannah, when she did this, she wanted a baby so bad. But what did she do with that baby? She gave the baby to the Lord. That's why. That was Samuel's mother. That was Samuel's mother. And so Hannah kept praying, but it was a prayer because he had to come forth in order to do what? Be one of the Lord's true children. But the Lord says, when you're out here, don't be doing vain repetition. He said vain. It wasn't like Hannah's prayer. Hannah had a righteous prayer. She knew she was going to get that baby to the church. He said, don't do vain repetition. Right. Don't be saying vain things in yes. repetition. Yes. That's the key. When he says, don't be repeating things. Don't have vain. Rep she knew that she was going to get that baby to the church when that baby was born. All I need to know is that Eli, when he heard her praying, he thought she was drunk. She said, this woman is drunk. Go, you drunk? Go home and get sober. She said, Master, I'm not drunk. I've been praying to the Lord. And, you know, I had a prayer to the Lord. Now, she didn't tell him what it was. But he said, whatever. He said, what your prayers, the Lord's going to give it to you a year from now. And then when she came back, she ended up having Samuel. And she gave him to the church. Mm -hmm. And so she didn't pray in vain. She prayed a righteous prayer because she wanted to get that baby to the church. Yeah. All right, what number are you on? So now verse mm -hmm. nine, this is what when people the, call the Lord's Prayer. Always go back into, uh -huh. always repeat the chapter. People keep going. Okay, Matthew chapter six, verse nine is Thank next. Mm -hmm. And so this is actually the model prayer that Christ said we should go by. It's like a guide on how we should be praying. So when he says this, I said in a prayer book, that you got a lot of other people's prayers. But this is the Messiah saying, if you don't know how to pray, this is one prayer that you can say repeatedly that he's giving you permission for. And that is his prayer. It's called the Lord's Prayer. Go ahead and read, please. It says, our father who established Yeshua, which is salvation, mm -hmm. in the heavens, exalted is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will mm -hmm. be done in earth as in the heavens. Yes. Yes. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive now, us. Now, I want to say stop with that. It says, let me read it. It says, in the in the heavens is exalted your name. And we know that his name is what? That means everything. He got a people, but his holy name is everything. And that's why he said people are going to stop defiling his holy name. Yeah. It says, let your kingdom come. It says, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because we know in the heavens, all the angels, the cherubim, the seraphs, the archangels, all of them do what? His will. Mm -hmm. But the people on earth don't. The, 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 the dogs do what he tell them. Hmm? The plants do what he tell them. Hmm? The birds do what he tell them. Hmm? The demons do what he tell them. Hmm? The only ones that don't do what he tell them is us. So he said, let your will be done in heaven as it also is on earth. OK, because in heaven, his will is kept up. Everybody does it. But on earth, they don't. Keep reading. Verse 11, it says, give us this day our daily bread. Now, why does he say give us this day our daily bread? Did he not say don't worry about tomorrow? Did he not say that I will take care of you? Don't worry about tomorrow and what you're going to be taking care of. And, you, and what, if you're going to have um, um, substance. Pray every day and tomorrow I'll feed you. If I feed the birds, the dove, and if I the blade of grass springs forth the next day, do you not think I'll feed my little ones? Huh? Give me my daily bread. I'm not worried about tomorrow. So I know man are going to fall tomorrow. I just need it today. And by no means does that mean be lazy. 
No, <laughs> all right, yeah. no, we're not talking about laziness. No, we're we're, we're talking about. No, you're right, but what we're talking about is don't worry about. You know, it's, you got to work. If you don't tend to feel and you don't sow a seed, you don't eat. Exactly. But what we're talking about, don't sit and worry about tomorrow. That's right. The Lord will take care of you if you're walking with him. You right. Some kind of way you're going to eat. Some kind of way that light bill going to get paid. Some kind of way that rent going to be made. Some kind of way that car note going to be taken care of. Some kind of way he will make a way because he is the Lord of all spirits. And if you got faith, he said a muscle seed can move a mountain. And you just got to have faith and don't have a double mm -hmm. tongue and a double mind. Go ahead and keep reading that Lord's Matthew prayer. Matthew 6, verse 12. It says, and forgive us our transgressions as we forgive those who transgress against us. Now, what does that mean? That means that we, the Lord said, if you don't love your brother, you don't love me. How many times you forgive your brother? Seven times 70. And then he says here, forgive us our transgressions. What does that mean? He says, if you do something, go in the closet. And when you go in the closet, you pray in secret. When you pray in secret, he says, I reward you openly. Noah said something. John the Baptist said something. They said, and the Lord said in the last day, in, the, in those days, that man would not repent of their sins. John the Baptist said in Revelation, the reason most people are not going to make it, they will not go in that closet, get on their knees, repent of their sins, and ask Yeshua to forgive them because you got to go through him to get to the Father. Remember, the Father's not judging no man. Scripture says he's judged no man. He's not judging you on judgment day. His son is. His son is. That's why you got to go through his son. Because on judgment day, he's the one that's going to be judging you. Yeah. We're breaking this down. I'm breaking the Lord's prayer down right now. All praise the most high. Go and ahead, that's third. important, too, to touch on what you just said. Uh -huh. This part where it says, forgive us as we forgive those who transgress against us. Yes. If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. forgiven. And he says that. If you don't forgive those, I'm not going to forgive you. That's why I told you if somebody molested you, somebody's beating you, somebody's taking money from you, if you got a boss on the job who's got a spirit on them that's horrible because their life ain't right and they bringing all this to you, don't sit and hate them and don't do all of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You pray for them. Pray for them. And when you pray for them, the Lord's going to hear that he's going to do it. Why? Why does he help you when you do those things? Because he knows you're like him now. He's long suffering. Look at all the sinful things we've done. Look at Saul, surnamed Paul. He had persecuted the people, was killing the people, and he thought he was doing it in the name of the Lord. But the Lord knew that he didn't know any better. He was ignorant. And a lot of times we do stuff out of ignorance. That's why he's long suffering. He wants to give us wisdom, merciful. give us understanding. He's merciful. Thank you, sweetheart. He delights, in mercy. he delights in mercy. So if he gives mercy, can we not give mercy? You forgive, but you don't forget. That don't mean you go back to your vomit. Right. I know a young lady whose dad was molesting her. You understand? And we know she, who he was. And at the same time, you understand, we know that this man wasn't Re re resentful because I could tell by the way when we were around him, the things he was saying to her. She ended up going to stand with this guy, again, to help him when he got sick, and he was trying her again. You see, she forgave, but she still did another thing she forgot. Don't put yourself back in that. That man Same is judged. He's right. judged. The Lord says that is a sin to death. When Lot did what he did with his daughters, you understand from that day forward, the Lord made a decree. Any man who sleeps with his daughters that's a curse. That's a curse. And so some sin is curses and the others are just with judgment. I want to elaborate on that. We're on the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse what, 10, what 12. Verse, verse 12. We're breaking down the Lord's Prayer. Go ahead. Um, I'm sorry, verse 13. Verse 13. Go ahead. It says, and lead us not into the evil inclination, but deliver us from the outer darkness. Wow. Now, what does that mean to you? Now, I'm going to stop right there. Okay. I want to break each part down. Lead us not into temptation, it will say, right? That's what the King James says. Right. Yeah. So it says, lead us not into evil inclinations. And what does that mean? Satan, Beelzebub, Lucifer, or the adversary. His job is to get man to do what? Listen to him. And so when you listen to a lot of things people are doing around you, when you start watching what they're doing on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, and you start emulating them, you listen to Lucifer, Beelzebub, or the adversary. And so what it does, it leads you to what? Inclination. What does that word mean, Sister Micaiah? Evil inclination. Okay. and But deliver us from what? Outer darkness. Mm -hmm. Why is he outer darkness? Because if we're children of the light, right? There's no darkness in us. The darkness is on the outside. But the darkness comes into us when we do what they do. That's why I said, get out of Babylon. Don't do what they do. Or you're going to take on what? Their curses. Yeah. 
This is when that darkness comes on you. This is when you feel like you're in a bad place and there's spirits around you because you start doing what all these people have been teaching you instead of going to the Torah, going to that word, doing what the Most High said when he gave you a blueprint, you decide to follow your own heart. And what does the scripture say about a person who follows his own heart, Sister Micaiah? Um, Cursed is the man that follows his own heart. She's reading again, obviously. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, uh -huh. break down that word inclination. Oh, okay, which is cool. A tendency or urge or oh. feeling yes. a particular way. Yes. A position to slant towards. Okay. So when when he said, lead us not into evil inclination, read the word down again. Read, break it, it down. Says, uh, okay. It inclination. Says, a person's natural tendency or urge to act or feel in a particular way. A disposition or propensity. Yeah. See, when you think about yes. that, the devil, yes. what does he do? He draws us out and entices us through our own desires. That's right. You, you know, and, 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 and he does the thing too. He wants other people to join him. He takes pleasure in people joining him. I'll uh, go ahead and keep reading. 13. Uh, we're okay. in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 13. We're going over uh, how to pray. Yeah. Okay. It says, verse 13, chapter 6. Verse For 13. yours. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Yes. And that's the thing. That is Satan's job, you all, to basically try to turn as many people as he can. And now, right now, the Lord is shaking the whole creation. Yes. And the devil is doing his job because, on a hundred, a hundredfold. Because right he knows his time is up. And he know that he's trying to grab as many souls as possible. I'm going to read 14. It says, for if you forgive their transgressions, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men of their transgression, neither will your father forgive you of your transgressions. Yeah. That went back to what I was just saying. Yeah. You got to get a potato pillar, scrape your heart out, let it go. You know, and I gave yeah. a story of a young lady real quick who the, I was sitting at her house. And I'm going to go over the story real quick. And, and when I was there at the house, it's a friend I know. And it was his daughter's uh, friend. And she was beating down the guy really bad. And I didn't know what was going on, but I was going to leave. I had done to clean the carpet. And I was ready to go. And all of a sudden, the Lord said, turn around. Turn around. There's a message I want you to give her. And I was like, oh, Lord, man. I'm like, I'm ready to go. It was 9 o'clock. But I listened. You remember Jonah wouldn't listen to the Lord. You know, that didn't go well for him. So I didn't know what I was going to say. I knew nothing. I didn't even know what the conversation was going to be. I just know the Lord wanted me to give that young lady a message. And so I called her out. And she was a young lady. Um, I believe she was a little Irish girl. And it was one of my friends, Tim. It was one of his, uh, uh, anyway, no names. But anyway, she, when she came out, one of the things happened was the Lord was explaining to me that this young lady, you understand, had been molested and and things that happened with her father and her mother knew about it. And that the reason that she was beating up the other young lady's boyfriend so bad was simply because she didn't like men no more because of what happened to her. And so the Lord said that because of that, her soul was in damnation because of the things she had been doing. And he saw it. So he had me read a Romans 124. And it started out who changed the truth into a lie when you're going through that. And, and, and so when I started reading it all, she started crying like a baby. And then she told me everything that the Lord told me was true, that, that all those things that happened when she was little and she had stopped liking men because of it. And that's why she was beating up that guy so bad, even though he was a good guy. And so what happens is the Lord, what he does is he, 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 he hears things and he sees things. And a lot of times what he'll do is give it to you or me or someone else to go and talk to these people to bring them up out of that area. And she ended up turning her life around um, after that conversation. And he came back to me and told me she also looked at him as like the father. And so she went through a lot. So a lot of us go through a lot. And I told her, one thing the Lord told me, she had to clean her heart out so he can come in. You got to let this old stuff go, folks. You know, the past does not define you. What defines you is where you're at right now. That's what defines you. Things that have happened and people have done things to you, don't beat yourself up and think you did something wrong when you had no control of it. What you got to remember is this, that the Lord is going to handle those people, but he's also going to handle you according to your ways. He says here in chapter Matthew, chapter six, verse, verse four, 15. But if you forgive not men their transgressions, when you pray, neither will your father forgive you of your transgressions. So when you do things and you haven't forgiven them, he's not going to forgive you. Why? Because he's going to take care of them. And he's probably taking care of them. But when you start hating on them and doing all this other stuff, it'll even stop him from dealing things to them. 
Why? Because you've taken in your hand to think that you're going to punish them when you can't make one hair white or gray. Mm -hmm. And I won't mm -hmm. expound upon that. Um, let's see where we're at here right now. We're going to go to Matthew 6. Okay, I already did it. So, all yeah. right. In the Holy Spirit, I'll praise the Most High. I want to go to Psalms 25. We're going to um, Psalms 25, 4 and 5. The book of Psalms 25, 4 and 5. We're going through prayer, the importance of prayer, how we should pray, and why we're praying. And that we and why do we go through the sun? And it's so important to get this. All righty, let's see here. Let's see here. We'll go through my books. Just let me know where you're there. Sister oh, okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, please. All right. So this is Psalms chapter 25, verses 4 and 5. It says, show me your ways, O Yahuwah. Teach me your path. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the Elohim of my Yeshua. On you do I wait all the day. Yes. What, what up? Four and five. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the Lord says here, when you read this, it says, show me your ways, O Yahuwah. Teach me your paths. How are you shown the Lord's ways? And how do you know his paths? The Lord said, if you don't know the Torah, and I'm going to stress this to everybody here, if you don't know the first five books of the Bible, you do not, you do not know him. So you got to pick this book up, get these basic laws in you. We're not judged by the letter of the law. No, by no means. That's why the Yeshua had to come because we couldn't follow the letter of the law. We had, because under the letter of the law, you had, you had laws and then you had judgment. That was it. If two people saw you do something, you were judged. But Yeshua came back because he knew that we couldn't follow the letter of the law. When you read Second Ezra, you learned the law was just a schoolmaster. It teaches how we should move. It gives us a moral compass. And so when he came on the scene and saw all of these things, he brought something that we didn't have under Moses' law. Under the letter of the law, and you try to live, that's why he said, if you try to live by the letter of the law, you'll be judged by it. Which simply means that means you're not going to repent of your sins. The letter of the law, you just judge. But now you got grace, you got repentance, and you got salvation. And Yeshua has given us all of those that we did not have under the letter of the law. You see, the Old Testament was carnal. That's what it was. The New Testament, spiritual. The Old Testament was a blueprint, almost an outline of what was coming in the New Testament. That's why you can't deal with one without the other. You understand? But under the Old Testament, just like today, we're carnal people. And so, therefore, we were doing carnal things and judged carnally. But now that we're under the order of Melchizedek, we're a nation of kings, we're a nation of priests. Let me not say Israel, the nation of kings and priests. And now we're prophesying of his coming, we're prophets. So we're kings, priests, and prophets. This is spiritual, folks. This is spiritual. And right now he's waking up the people, all of us, not just us, but other nations, even to who we are. Now they, they, they look at us different now. Even when you go to the grocery store, they're smiling and speaking now. They didn't do these things in the past. Now they're realizing that they've inherited lies from their forefathers. And now that they realize they've inherited lies and knowing that we are those Ezekiel Valley dry bones that stand on their feet, the two witnesses on the third day, and this is the third day we're standing, they're afraid right now. But those people, even those people shouldn't be afraid if they follow the Messiah and, and Yahuwah and come out of sin and repent for the things they've done to us, our children, and also the things they've taken from us. Remember, all of this land was taken from our people. Our God was taken from us. You understand? They, we didn't even really know how to pray. And when we were praying, we were praying to a God that looked nothing like the real Messiah. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so now that we know who the real Messiah is and we know exactly his name, you understand? And we're calling on him. There's major power there. Did we finish reading? Let me keep reading. Um, well, hold on one second. Five. Four and five. Yeah, one second. No, no, no. Hold on one second. 25, four and five. Show me the ways you would teach me your past. Five. Lead me in your truth and teach me for you are Elohim, the Messiah of my Yeshua, of my salvation, and on you do I wait all day. So we got to read the Torah. We got to read the first five books, and then we'll read these other books so we can understand. Remember, folks, there's many highways of knowledge. And right now, a lot of our books have been returned back to us. And so we got to read them to get a good understanding. Sister Makai, you have something to say? Yeah, Sweetheart? so just touching back on this scripture here, mm -hmm. um, where he's saying, teach me your way, right? Mm -hmm. um, part of that word, prayer, involves teaching and instruction yes and revelation revealing revealing and so that's the thing that's important too that when we pray we also meditate 
uh, with meditation. Say that again. It's when we're waiting to hear and learn from the Lord, too. Now, you that know? doesn't mean you sit up with the Buddhist symbols up, right. which is pagan, meditating. That doesn't mean you want to open your third eye and all this garbage that have been taught to the people where you're sitting there letting others. See, you don't want to empty your vessel and let something come in. If we're filled with holiness, why would you want to empty that out and let something else? When you do that, you can allow any medium to come into your body, any spirits to come into your body. But you need to be constantly prayed up and call on Yeshua, call on Yahuwah, call on the Holy One's name. Don't empty your mind out and say, I'm going to let something come in. Because I'm telling you something, Satan will come at you 5,000 ways to one and he will fool you. He will disguise himself as an angel of light and get you doing things that you don't even realize is wrong. So that you can stay in perpetual sin. Yeah. So on judgment day, when you say, did I cast out demons in your name and pray in your name? And he's going to say, get away from me. That I don't know you. I never knew you. You don't want that. We're reading Matthew. We're going to the book of Matthew 26, um, chapter 26, verse 41. The book of Matthew. In the book of Matthew, I'm going to read. Let's see here. 26. Matter of fact, I'm going to let you go ahead and read it. I'm going to let you do a little bit of reading today because you, you're my helpmate and you do pretty good at that, dear. It says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. So wait a minute. He says, watch. What does it mean, watch? That means look at everything and see if it lines up with scripture. Hmm? If it doesn't line up with scripture, the things you're doing, you understand? You need to make sure that it is because if not, you're going to fall into what? Temptation. Yeah. And then if you don't pray, he says, you need to pray. Why pray? Because that prayer puts a hedge around you, a covering around you. It puts a, 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 a veil around your body when you pray. Because now the angels, the cherubim, the seraphim, and the archangels work in collusion with the Lord in order to protect you. We have many soldiers, folks. Remember, what, 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 did, what did, um, was that Joshua? No, um, Elijah say. When his servant was oh, saying, yeah. look at all these men out there. Yeah. He said, look at all these men. And the look at all these men out here. Yeah. He said, well, how can we fight them? And what did he do? Elijah looked up to the heaven and he prayed to the most high. He said, father in heaven. He said, open my servant's eyes so he can see what I see. Mm -hmm. See, because I see the soldiers around me. I see the chairs everywhere. I see the angels, folks. But most people out here, Carl, they can't see them. And when he prayed the Lord to open his eyes and see, he looked behind him. There was chairs and horses, and there was surrounding. surrounding them. There was ships, what you call UFOs. There was man. There was a multitude that no man could number all around him. He couldn't believe it. He's like, they army ain't got nothing compared to our army. You got to remember the Lord's army, folks. That nothing in this world can compare to that army. The Lord is all for all spirits, no demon, no forces, no nothing can touch you when you walk with the Most High. Nothing. Yeah, and right now watching. And, and being prayerful is so important because you've got so much that seems, seems like, like it's it true. may be from the right. Lord, that it may not. be true. Yeah. That's why you say, even the elect, deception. you say even the elect could be fooled if, if it, it was, was possible. possible. That's why he says a call out assembly. Yes. You can't make somebody righteous. You can't make somebody pray. You can't make somebody humble. You can't go baptize a person, dip them in water and think they're going to be righteous. If they're a liar, they get dipped in the water, it's a wet liar. Yeah. If they're an adulterer and they get dipped in the water and they come out the water, the same person, they're just a wet adulterer. You have to be born by water and spirit. And fire. And if you're going to go through the fire, you're not going to be reborn. And then that's why he says the darkness will come into you. Why? Because we are children of the light. No darkness is there. We allow the darkness to come in by the things we do. And when you don't pray, when you don't pray and get on your knees and repent, this is when that darkness can come through. It has right, permission. That, that's where the last letter of prayer, which is hey, comes into play because it says to show, to reveal. <laughs> you, you understand? And this is what happens when you follow the Lord. Yes. And when you pray, he will start showing you things. He'll start revealing things. And then the Holy Spirit will take your hand and start walking with you. Yes. You become one in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's another reason why it's so important to have a regular prayer. Well, a regular prayer. You have to. Now, it says here, it says, watch and pray that you not enter into temptation in the spirit. Indeed, it is willing, but the flesh is weak. So 
we got to remember that the spirit is willing to do right. It wants to do right, but the flesh is weak. How do you know this? Do you ever fast? That's what fasting is for. Fasting so you can feed the spirit and starve the flesh. So when you fast, you understand that you're spiritually, you're strong, right? But that flesh is weak and the hunger pains come in. Then you start feeling this. And instead of being in the spirit and letting the Lord feed you like he did Messiah for 40 days, he went on the mountain. He didn't eat or drink water. The same thing with Moses. He went up for 40 days on the mountain, no food or water. He was fed in the spirit. And when you're fed in the spirit, you starve that flesh. And most people right now, they can't do anything because their spirit is weak. Why? Because they follow that flesh and they can't. You need to practice fasting. When you practice fasting, it teaches you how to abstain from things. It teaches you, it, kill, it gets rid of spirits, bad spirits. I know from my mother that when she had stage four cancer, she didn't eat or drink for seven days. And then all the cancer was completely gone in seven days because the body goes in a catatonic state on the third day. It starts killing off all cancerous and dead cells in the body. It completely eats them up. This is why the Lord told us to fast and pray. Also, you get revelations when you fast. When you go through these books, you'll learn that Ezekiel had to fast sometimes for three days, sometimes for seven days he had to fast. You understand? But after each time he fasted, the Lord would give him what? A revelation. revelation. That's when the revelations come. And this is why we're giving you proper ways to pray, not according to man, but according to scripture. All right. Now, I'm going to read in the next scripture here. I want to read Jeremiah 29 and 11. We're going to go to chapter Jeremiah. We're going to go to Jeremiah, uh, verse 29 and 11. And what we're going is prayer, the proper way to pray. And why a lot of people, when they pray, they pray amiss, and they wonder why they're not getting answers. And then some people get answers when they pray, but they don't get it on their time. And remember, the Lord's time is not our time, folks. And keep remembering this. But if you don't go and pray and don't listen to me, and I'm going I'm to stress this to you. I'm going to stress this if I don't do nothing else. Remember Meshach, Abednego? It was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And with Daniel. And remember that these guys prayed unceasingly? You remember that? And they would pray to the Lord every day, three times a day. And they loved their father in heaven. And they know he loved them. Three times a day, they got on their knees and they prayed. But Nimrod, the king, said, you know what? He erected a god. And it was a golden god. And he said, this god, three times a day, when I put the timbrums and the, and the instruments, musical instruments, and whenever we do this, he says, whenever you hear these now, you drop down and you worship this god of Baal. And they said they were not going to do it because they had a living god. Now, what happened? He came, he got angry with them, and he told them, I want you to, and they said, we're not going to do that. We're not going to offend our God. So he kindled the fire seven times hotter. And when he kindled that fire seven times hotter, what did they do before they went? They prayed to the Lord to deliver them. They all went in that fire. But guess what? The fire had nothing on them. Did he not say we're going to go through the fire? You see, these stories are symbolic. These stories symbolic of what's going on right now with us. They did not say that he was going to, that we're going to go through the fire in this world. If we don't go through the fire with bastards, that's that fire that Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego went through. We're going through the same fire, folks. And the only reason that we don't get scared or we don't get burnt is when we have faith. The Lord said, if you don't have faith, you can't even get in his kingdom. Yeshua said, if you don't have faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word. That's the scriptures say. So if you're not reading the word and studying, how can you ever have faith? Wherever your heart is, that's where your treasures are. And if your heart is here on earth, that's where your treasures are going to be. But if your heart is in heaven, that's where your treasures are. We're going to read Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Um, Sister McKay, go ahead and read Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah um, 29. We're on chapter 29. Let me see here. And you can start wherever you want, sweetheart. You know, you're my helpmate. Well, let me get there first. All right. All right, we, this is the most high talking. Okay, so we're in the book of Jeremiah. We're on chapter 29, mm -hmm. and my wife is going to start at verse 10. It says, For thus says Yahuwah, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babel. Now, I want you to understand some 70 is a prophetic number. Christ came 70 years. Um, you understand, um, after 70 generations after Adam. 70 is prophetic. The voices and the languages were scattered 70 different ways according to the 70 souls that went into Israel with Joseph. Seven is prophetic. Um, King David, um, I think he reigned for almost 70 years or so, a long time. So 70 is a real prophetic. He reigned 40 years, but 70 is a real prophetic number. Go ahead. 
I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. Verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says Yahuwah, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Where am I going to? Um, Jeremiah 29, 11. Um, you wrote, did you write verse this proof now? Verse 12. Yes. It says, then shall ye call there we go. upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto yes. me, and I will hearken unto you. So I'm going to go back to verse 11. We're on Jeremiah 29, verse 11. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says Yahuwah, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. What is that expected end? everlasting life salvation so he says these are the thoughts it says then shall you call upon me this is prayer and you're talking to him this is what he's telling you and you shall go and pray where unto me and i will what listen to you i'll hearken unto you and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search me for me with all your what heart, heart. You got to search and seek him with all your heart yeah. not half your heart folks when you have half your heart the lord is when Abraham took his, his brother, when, it, when when Nimrod delivered him up, Abraham had Haran, his oldest brother. Let me give you a quick story, and I'm going to make it quick. He gave him, his brother went with him. This is why he always kept Lot with him, because he felt guilty of his dad being killed. Because his dad ended up being delivered in the fire, Haran did, with Abraham. But before they went in that fire, Haran said, if it goes well with the king, I'm going to side with him. But it goes well with Abraham, I'm going to side with him. Not since his heart was not holy with the Lord, and that's why the Lord says, since you are lukewarm and you're not hot or cold, I'm going to do what? Spew you out of my mouth. So he was spewed out. So when they went into the fire, Haran burned up because his heart was not whole with the most high. So I'm giving an example of what this scripture is saying. 14, okay. Go ahead. And I, this is verse 14. And we're in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 14. It says, and I will be found of you, says Yahuwah, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations, now, from all the places. See, he's talking to Israel right now, and he's saying if you try to turn your ways and you change, mm -hmm. he says, what I will do is, he says, and then this is what we got to do right now, folks, as Israel, the 12 tribes, not just us, the handmaids of service, all the people going to join us. You have to right now, you have to do what? Read 14 all over again. It says, and I will be found of you, so says Yahuwah. Go ahead. And I will turn away your captivity. So this captivity that we're in right now, he says, we come back to him. We start praying to him again. like we, With a whole heart now, not like Haran. Seeking him. Seeking him. Go ahead. It says, I will gather you from all the nations. He's going to gather us. Read Ezekiel chapter 34. He says he's going to gather us from all the nations where we scattered through slavery. All four corners of the earth. Mm -hmm. And from all the places whither I have driven you, says Yahuwah, and I will bring you again into the place yes. that I caused you to be carried away captive. Wow, they are going to take us back into our lands. And I don't know where that is, folks. The maps have been changed so much. And you find out America is the oldest country on earth. And you find out all these places that they got in this Middle East over there, actually over here in the Americas. So many things have been changed. Even the names of River Euphrates, Mississippi River here was called River Euphrates. So there's so many things that have been changed. That's why he says those things are in the dark, he's going to bring to the light. We can't figure everything out, folks. A lot of stuff is above our pay grade. But the Lord is doing something he said you need to have through all this. That's faith. And you got to get faith by hearing and hearing by the word. you got to read this word. Sister so, Mikhail, you have something to say? No. Okay, cool. I want to read Psalms 118 and 1. We're going to go to Book of Psalms. And when we go to Psalms, we're going to go to 118. The book of Psalms. All righty. Go to the book of Psalms. I'm going to chapter 118. Psalms is a book of wisdom. If you want to get wisdom, you want to read Psalms, you want to read Sirach. There's different books that you can read to give you wisdom or what we would call, you know, people always say that's common sense. Well, common sense is not always common. And so in order to get common sense, you need to go ahead and get you some wisdom first. And then when you get that wisdom, you understand that's when you'll act upon what they will call common sense. Because what's taught now, the Lord said the knowledge of this world is what? Foolishness. Wisdom comes from above. And this is something we need to understand. Okay, so we're in the we're going over prayers and how do you pray? We're in the book of Psalms. We're in chapter 118, um, verse 1. 
here it says, Oh, give thanks unto Yahuwah, for he is good, because he is mercy, his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endures forever. Let them now that fear Yahuwah say that his mercy endures forever. I call upon Yahuwah in distress. So he said, we call upon him in distress. And we keep reading. And Yah answered me and sat me in a large place. Yahuwah is my is my side, and I will fear, and I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Yeah. And see, this is what we got to understand. It says here that Yahuwah is on my side. And what can man do to me? See, you shouldn't be fearing man. Man can only kill the body, but you need to fear the one that kills the body and the soul. This is what is important. What good is it to be in bondage in this world, but yet carried away in the next? This is what we got to be thinking, folks. This is why these prayers are so important to have a relationship with him and be doing this every day, every day, three, four times a day. Listen, a lot of times your soul, your soul will supersede for you. You don't even realize why you're praying. But your soul know you're going through things. Your soul know you need it. And then you'll be sitting all of a sudden praying to the Lord. This is because the Holy Spirit, you understand, is calling you. That's why it's called a called out assembly. But a lot of people are sown on rocks. The sower seeds, when the bird seeds fell, they fell on rocks. They take root, they come up and the roots take, but the roots cannot go into the ground. This is those people who they learn the truth. They start studying the truth. But as soon as they go through adversity, they go through pain, they go through money problems, they go through death. They leave the word. Satan comes what? Steals it away. Yes. You don't want to be sown on rocks, folks. You want to be on fertile ground where your seed multiplies tenfold, fiftyfold, and a hundredfold. And then why is, why is this so important, especially now? Right. Because life as we know it, you all is about to really change on a drastic level. So it's so important that you understand that this is a spiritual battle. A spiritual. And a lot of the things yes. coming, yes. you can only physically prepare for it so, so much. much. It's not it's out of your it's out of your hands. Yes. That's so why you don't why it's so important. And that's why he's teaching us not to have fear. Yes. Fear is bondage. Yes. Once you're in bondage, you start doing stupid things. Yeah. Hmm? How many people went and took that so-called new medicine because they were scared? Exactly. And it's more of that. You understand? Type of stuff this is what happens, folks, when you're in fear. And when you're worried and you put man and make him, you, know, you make flesh your arm. You you put your faith in man. I'm going to keep reading. Psalms 118, verse 5. It says, I called upon Yah in distress, and Yah answered me and sent me in a large place. Verse 6, 118, verse 6 in Psalms. Yahuwah is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Yes. Yahuwah takes my part with, with them. He says, Yahuwah takes my part with them that help me. Therefore, I shall see my desire. I shall see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in Yahuwah than to put confidence in man. Come on. Come on now. It is better to trust in Yahuwah than to put confidence in man. And all nations can pass me about. But in the name of Yahuwah, I will destroy them. They can pass me about. Yea, they can pass me about. But in the name of Yahuwah, I will destroy them. Okay, 12. They can, they can pass me about like bees. They are they are quenched as a fire of thorns. For the, in the name of Yahuwah, I will destroy them. And this is what you got to do when you want to rebuke your enemies. When you rebuke those who, 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 who offend you. You call on the name of Yahuwah. And he says he will rebuke them and he will destroy your enemies. Mm -hmm. Did not David, King David prayed. And then the Syrians were destroyed in one night. Then when you read the book of Gad, you learned that the Philistines had 900,000 people outside the city of David. He prayed to the Most High. And the Lord sent a fire angel down. You understand? And that fire angel came down and destroyed 900,000 Philistines in one night. Elijah prayed to the Lord twice when he was sitting on the rocks and the three armies came. And twice, two armies were destroyed when he called on the fire from the Lord and prayed to him. He prayed to the Lord. And the Lord heard his, heard his prayers. He was a respecter mm -hmm. of his prayers. And twice the fire came down and destroyed him. Joshua, he prayed to the Lord to hold the sun for 36 hours. And the Lord held the sun, you understand, while we were in a deep battle for yeah. 36 hours, Jericho. So when you learn these things, you learn that the Lord is respect of Israel in our prayers. This is why when we pray together, you understand, there's so much power in it. This is why we've been taught not to pray and not to be together. And this is why they separate us. Because they know when we come together, there's a power that nobody can quench and nobody can stop. Not just us, but also the other nations who believe in him and who call on his name. 
But together, all of us, you understand, there's power to get rid of the evil off this earth. And so I don't get into that, you know, I know Israel's the chosen. I know that we are the elect. But I know also there's good people of every race out here on this earth that are trying and didn't know. See, a lot of people, folks, what you don't get, they just don't know no better. They've inherited lies from their forefathers. I'm in the um, book of Psalms 118. I'm on verse 13. I'm on verse 14. It says, Yahuwah is my strength and song and is my and, and has become my Yeshua. He has become my what? Salvation. The voice of rejoicing in and Yeshua is in the tabernacles of righteousness. The right hand of Yahuwah does valiantly. The right hand of Yahuwah is exalted. The right hand of Yahuwah does valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of Yah. Yah has chastened me sore, but he has not given me over to death. This is what we got to understand. He chastised you. When you go through things, a lot of people think the Lord ain't with him. No, you're just being chastised. When your child does something wrong, he says, call him father. And when they do something wrong, you have to punish them. And when you punish them, it's what? Spare the rod, what? Not the child. Because if you don't punish your children and you start letting them do things what they want to do, next thing you know, they're cursing you. And then that means we'll be cursing our father. The next thing, when you don't discipline your children, they're in the streets doing things to do what? Embarrass you. Did he not say his holy name is the most important thing? Are we not representing him? He doesn't want us to embarrass him anymore. And this is what we've been doing. We've been embarrassing our father. Our women are walking around like harlots. You understand? Half naked. A man with their pants down, with two fingers holding their pants up. Understand? Looking like vagabonds. Hmm? And then you got our people out here cursing each other out, calling each other names. And then the men are calling the women the B word. And the women are now saying that they want to do this to a man and that. This is abominable things that are going on being taught. And it's taught by the Gentiles so that we can stay in perpetual sin. Mm -hmm. So that they can be in power longer. And people don't understand that. We are a holy people of a holy nation who are waking up. We've been asleep. Three, we've been asleep for two days, folks. It's the third day. We're just waking up. Now that we're awake, what are we going to do with it? We're going through prayer, how you should pray, how you should walk, how you should talk. This is and how you need to forgive people who transgress against you. And we read that if you don't forgive them, the Lord is not going to forgive you. If he's long-suffering and we have nothing like him, can we not have a little compassion in our hearts? Because whoever you forgive, no matter what they've done to you, he's going to take care of them. Why? Because he knows you got faith in him, and he knows that these people are not right, and he'll have them what? According to their he ways. Said, vengeance is his. Vengeance and is his. we have witnessed that. Yes. So where are we at? James? Is this what's the next one? Or was yeah, Psalms? James. All right, we're going to go to James 5. We're going to go to James chapter 5. We're going to go to the book of James chapter 5. And I just want to reiterate uh, Psalms 118, verse 14. Okay. The most high Go ahead and read it over for me first. Uh, uh -huh. It says, Yah is my strength and song and has become my salvation. Yes. Yeshua. Yes. So we want to rely on him as our strength. And so many people don't understand that part because they can't physically yes. see him. Yes. You know, and so they go to other people. They rely on their pastor. They rely Why? on their Because sister, just like in brother. the past, our people always want a sign. Exactly. They need a sign to know if he's real. Yeah. You know, he's giving you signs. You see signs every he's day. He's giving you signs he every day. Up, you have breath. Like, he literally Come on. beats out every measure every, every measure. you take. And, and, and when we want a sign, you got to remember the sign is he woke us up to who we are as a people. Yes. When we want a sign, the sign is he woke us up and say, okay, wait, the land that I gave you of Canaan, the milk and honey, was stolen from you. You didn't realize you were the Indians, did you? You didn't realize this, did you, folks? He gave us a sign in Revelation 16, verse 12. He said, I'm going to drive the river Euphrates. Okay? He gave us a sign when he said that I'm going to bring the fires on the earth, and three-quarters of the earth right now is on fire. He gave us a sign when he said he comes in the whirlwind, and the whirlwind are the tornadoes that are tearing up these communities left and right. He gave us a sign when he says, I'm coming in the storm. And you got these hurricanes right now, two and three of them emerging into one, creating super cyclone hurricanes. He gave us a sign when you go into what you call uh, Russia and you see these big holes open up in the ground the size of a that's whole city all that's all over the earth. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the rivers of fire is going to come out and souls are going to be going down there. And now, he gave us a sign when he told us that in the third day that he would wake us up in one instance and that we would be those witnesses. He said that we would make fire come from the heaven. Joshua did that. He gave us a sign when he said we'd make the sea turn blood red. Did not Aaron do that when he took the staff in the water? Hmm? He gave us a sign when he said that the sun would sit still. We said that with Joshua. There's a lot of signs he's given us, folks.
but we keep ignoring the sign and we keep going back to men and making flesh our arm. Yeah. This is the problem. So we're going to read um, James 5, 14 and 16. Um, since Makai, I'm already there. You go ahead okay. and read, please. And I'll go ahead and elaborate a little bit. Okay. It says, if any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the called out assembly and let them pray over him. Now, he didn't say that the people of anybody pray over you. He said the elders of the called out assembly, which means these are spiritual people, not people professing to be spiritual, but people who you see the fruit that comes from the tree. And you know they're spiritual by their acts, their ways, and the things they teach. And these are the ones that were called by the Most High. And then when you people are sick, you get a group of people who are really who are faithful to the Lord, and they're religious. They don't deal with religion. You understand? They follow laws, judgments, statutes, and commandments. There's power in these people. These are the elders that the Lord said, "These are my men that I want to pray come together." Because when we come together, there's a mighty power there. Keep reading, please. It says, anointing him with oil in the name of Yeshua. In the name of who? Yeshua. So you got to anoint the person with oil. You, we pray over him, but you got to also call on whose name? Yeshua. Yeshua. You, in, the, in the whose name? In his name. Yes. We got to do this in his name because we got to go through the son in order to get to the father. He's called the mediator. Yes. Okay. Keep reading. And the prayer of belief shall save the sick. Wait a minute. The prayer of what? Belief. That goes faith. back to having faith, folks, again. Yes. The prayer in belief will save you when you're sick. So when our people are sick and going through certain things, and we pray in belief, we had a young niece, and the young niece took these shots. When we told our baby girl, don't let them do it, but she did it anyway. And so the baby's skin had third-degree burns on the outside and on the inside. She was burned on the inside and outside for these shots. I couldn't make it there, but I told my wife, this is what I need you to do. I need you to go. I need you guys to get around this baby. And I need y'all to pray to her in the name of Yahuwah and then through the name of Yeshua. And when you pray, I want everybody to hold hands and pray over her. And the Lord will deliver the baby. What happened, Sister Micaiah? Two days later, she was healed. She was completely healed, folks. Released from the hospital and everything. Okay, we have a power. We are holy people. But the first question I asked her parents, before I even prayed over her was, do you believe in Christ? Say that one more time. In the healing power of Messiah. That is so important. When she asked him that, the Lord was listening. And so when they said, yes, we believe, that's when the, the Holy Spirit could come in now. But he says, when you pray, when we read 14, if any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the called out assembly and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of Yahushua. And the prayer of the belief shall save the sick. It says the prayers of the belief or believing shall save them. So you got to believe when it's prayer. See, that's when you can't have a double tongue or double mind. Remember when we start out like this? Don't pray amiss, folks. Don't pray and you thinking in your mind, well, he ain't going to be healed. Maybe it might work. It may not work. You're like a Ron before he was no thrown way. into the fire. You said, well, if you be healed, then I know I'm going to go with the Lord. But if he don't be healed, I already thought he wasn't. He already heard you. And so therefore, that prayer means enough to keep reading, Sister Micaiah. We're in um, so, the book so, of James, chapter 5, verse 15. Uh, real quick, verse 14. Uh-huh. What, why does it say the elders of the called out assembly? Mm -hmm. the, these were probably Israelites. They were. No, probably. The they thing were. is, um, the elders of the called out assembly, those people are part of the body of Christ. They're given that gift of healing. Yes. Like my husband was talking about earlier. Yes. We all have different gifts in the body. But one head is over all yes. of us. And that's the one that you should be praying to and go through the mediator. That's your sure. He's the one head. Yeah. Verse 15. Verse 15. Right? Go ahead. Okay. And the prayer of belief shall save the sick, and our Adonai shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. So him. wait a minute. He said, not only he's going to heal the sick when you pray and believe, but a lot of this sickness comes because of what? Sin. sin. Through sin, when you read the scriptures, he says, comes judgment. And when you break it down to Strong's Concordance, when you read it, it says it's crisis. You constantly go through crisis. When you're sinning or going back to perdition, perdition means you're going constantly back to sin. Keep yeah. reading. 
It says, confess, this is uh, James 5, verse 16. Thank you, dear. It says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. So when you confess your sins to one another, that don't mean you go to some sinner, an unbeliever, and you go confessing to them. They're going to look at you like, well, that's your business. That's your problem. You know, they're not spiritual. They're not going to understand anything. So when you confess your sins to one another, what it you're basically doing is that you're confessing it on the outside to your brethren because you love them and you know they love you. That's why I say if you don't love your brother, you understand, I don't love you. And when you confess it to them, you understand, this is the Lord saying that you know that there is sin in you and that you're not prideful. And we know that pride comes before what? Great A great fall. fall. And you're going to fall into what? What did Lucifer fall into? Darkness when he fell into this earth because he came from the light. And then people need to understand mm -hmm. that for, for certain sins, there are already built in judgment. Yes. So when you are actually partaking of those sins, judgment you are leaving the protection of the most high. That's right. And what you've done is you open a door. Yes. And some people got a Pandora's box. Man, it's a tunnel because of the things they do. That's why the Lord say, when we do what they do, we become strange damn heathens. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, go ahead and read. Uh, we're in the verse, book of James, uh -huh. chapter five, verse 16. We're on the other half of 16. It says, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Wait a minute. He didn't say uh, the, the, the prayers of a man avails much. He says the prayers of a righteous man avails much. This is the man who follows the Lord, who knows that word. When I had to cast, when I was praying, I didn't cast the demons out. When the Lord used me to cast demons out of a young man. That demon said, what did that demon say, Sister McCoy? He said, get away. We don't, we. He, he said, I have nothing. Well, first he said, what are you going to do now? Call on your Jesus. Jesus. And he laughed. Yeah. I said, I don't know Jesus. I know Yeshua, Yehoshua, Yehoah. Right. he got quiet. He said, and then he said, I have nothing to do with you. Yes. You're a son of the most high. This is what the demon said. He said, I'm here because your father, the most high, told me to come because he sold his soul to me for music. And so. When you deal with demons, they have to answer a righteous person. He had to tell me everything I asked. I told him you need to leave. I rebuke you. He said, I can't leave. If I leave, I have nowhere to go. Is that not what he said? Yeah. And the scriptures tell you that, that a demon, when you clean your house, they you swipe it clean, that demon leaves and goes to a dry place. And that demon stands by that door. Mm -hmm. And so when that demon stands by that door and you go back to your sin or perdition, you he come back with seven more friends that are stronger than him. So your last state is worse than your first state. And so this demon told me straight away that I want to do. She said, stop binding me. What did he say? Stop binding me. Yes. He said, stop binding me. Stop binding me. He said, let me go. Yeah, let me go. I'm doing the most high's will. Let me go. I said, no, I will not let you go until you tell me why you're here. He said, he sold his soul to me. You do not know him. But the, your father in heaven knows him. And he and, told and me. more truth came out later. It was exactly. About some other wickedness that he had done. And the, and, the, and the demon had told me all of this stuff, man. I didn't even know any of that stuff. But the demon had to leave. And I prayed over him because the young man told me he was tricked. He said, I didn't sell my soul. Satan said a certain things a certain way. I asked him a certain way. That's why you got to be careful what you say. Your words are powerful. When Satan or the demons or people out there saying certain things, be careful what comes out of your mouth or you'll be convicted by the words that come out of your mouth. So when I realized that he was tricked, I prayed over him with a holy prayer and the demons left. He was able to go back to work. He was able to do everything right. But he ended up later going back to music again. And he got seven more demons worse than the first. And that's a whole other story. Go ahead and keep reading, please, Sister Kaya. All right. Thank you. We're in Book of James, verse, chapter 5, verse 17. Verse 17. It says, El Eliyahu, which is Elijah, mm -hmm. was a man subject to like passions as we are. Yes. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. So Elijah, he said, you know what? This place is so messed up. and I, I want to show these people your power. He prayed to the Lord. It did not rain for three years and six months because he asked the Lord for it not to rain. Go ahead and read, please. Yeah. It says in verse 18, and he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. So he prayed first that it didn't rain, but then he prayed in faith that it do rain, that it did rain again, and it did, and the earth brought forth her fruit. And that's symbolic of him, of us, 
when we listen to the Lord and when he, when we do what he says, he says, I'm going to bring you back. What? The former reigns. Yes. And he puts his Holy spirit on us. That's that former reigns. And that's that righteousness. And when he does what it does, it waters us because we are seed. We're from a nation, priests, prophets, nations. So when we come from that seed, you understand there's a tree that grows and we're that tree. And then in the end, it bears what, as we just read here, it brings forth fruit. And he wants to see the fruit that comes from us. That's what this is all about. It's all about the fruit that's inside of us. I'm going to keep reading, Sister Mikaya. Verse 19. So this is James chapter 5, verse 19. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converts the sinner from the error of his way yes. shall save a soul from death and, yes. and shall hide a multitude of sins. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He said you're going to, when you convert someone, when they start listening, start listening to this yeah. word, they go on their knees and they pray. They ask the Lord, forgive them of their sins. And Lord, no, I was a sinner and I messed up. I did a lot of things. Yeah. He says what it does is, you're showing that sin the errors of his ways. And what you're doing is you're saving that soul, you understand, from death. What is death? Not this death here, because this death, life is like a candlelight. This is a, a you were in kindergarten yesterday, middle school. Next thing you know, you got kids, then grandkids, so forth and so on. It goes like a like candle puff of light. Yeah. He's talking about eternal life, the real death. Because the people were promised eternal life. But when you do these sinful things, you inherit death. What good is a man to inherit the whole world, but yet lose his soul? So this is what he's saying. Then we get this. He says, and also when you do bring this man back, it hides the multitude of all his sins. This is why the scriptures say, if a man does good at the beginning of his life, but he does bad at the end of his life, none the good we remember. But if a man does bad at the end of his life, you understand, and did good at the beginning, none of the good will be remembered. And so we got to understand that when you're when you're doing things and when you get older, no matter how righteous you were in the beginning, no matter what you did in the past, the Lord is judging you for now. He's not worried about what was then. Yeah. He wants to see where you're at right now. I want to see the fruit that's on that tree right now. That's right. And so we got to stop posting ourselves up and being boastful and talk about the things we've done in the past. It doesn't matter about the past. Where you are right now with the Lord. Do you pray? Do you get on your knees and pray to him? And that was one of the things when we uh, basically started the born being born again, right? Um, when my husband, when the Lord gave my husband my prayers, yes. the first thing he said before giving him my prayers was, you hadn't come to me in a while. Now, my husband had no way of knowing when the last time it was that I prayed. You know, so I know that was the Lord speaking through him. She was so consumed with money and making money in the real estate, just handling business. Well, let me just finish the point. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. The point is the Lord, when when you come to him and seek him and then all of a sudden stop, he takes notice of that. <laughs> you understand? Yep. He takes notice of that. Yes. I used to pray to him and this is what he reminded me. Yeah. You, your prayers would as a child. You prayed to me. And All I the did. time. I prayed to All the, the time. Lord. When I found out I could pray to the Lord and he heard me, I was about five years old. And that's what he told and me. And yeah. that right there just made made my day. And I just prayed to him all the time. He said you didn't pray for all a husband. The time. He said you prayed for your husband when you was a little girl. Yes. But then when he said... I hadn't come to him in a while. You all, I had not. It was like October. The last real prayer I had prayed was like in June. Now, I prayed over my meal and stuff, but I'm talking about a real heartfelt conversation right. with the Lord. A relationship. Like he took notice of that. He told me, he said, tell your wife. Tell your wife she has not come to me in a while and prayed. All I could do was break down and cry. Tell your wife that, he t that I remember she came to me as a child. When she would pray, she even asked for you, yes. my son, who I gave to her. Tell your wife that when she was a little girl, I saw her mother sitting in the kingdom hall, sitting in the chair, a little sister next to her, her in the middle and her brother sitting on the end falling asleep. And when she would come to me, that same voice that she prayed to me as a little girl, that's the voice I hear her now when she prays to me because she's my daughter. But I need to take that veil off her face. I need to take six layers of skin from my eyes because she cannot see. So I want to teach her how to see again. Bring her to me. Bring her to me. And that's when I brought her and I told her these. And for seven days, nine days, we didn't eat or drink. 
I talked in parables literally for what, yes. seven days. Yes. I talked in parables because he said, you're like a broken magnet. He showed me a magnet. He said, you're like a broken magnet right now. You and your wife. He said, but I'm going to flip you around and twain you as one. Yes. For seven days, I'm going to do a marvelous thing. You do not leave her aside. Now, mind you, when this was happening, I thought prior to that two weeks earlier, there was Egyptians when I seen hidden colors and they told me it was Egyptians. Not understanding that the Lord, because I wasn't studied up, I hadn't been reading, that right. the Lord delivered us from those 366 gods. So I picked up a book and I was reading on the 366 gods of Egypt. And I remember this just like it was yesterday. The Lord said, put it down. Put it down. How are you reading about them and you know nothing about me? I threw that book. What did I run the kitchen say to you, Michelle? <laughs> you told me that exact thing. The Lord told me to put it down. I need to pick up his word and start reading. He said, you need to read the yeah. Bible. And so I didn't truly get it until I got a spiritual baptism when the Holy Spirit came into the house. Just like in the book of Acts when there was a rushing wind and the Holy Spirit invaded them. And then all of them start speaking in tongues and start understanding each other's language. And this is when the Lord gave me my name. It was Jabril. And later on, my wife came to me three hours later and said, what did you say? Your name was Jabril. The Lord told her. Mm -hmm. She hadn't heard me uttered or anything. Yeah. It was a confirmation. So, folks, this is real. We're going through showing you how to pray why you need to have relationship and how this works. There's power in group prayer, but there's more power, you understand, and more love when, it, when the Lord knows you have a real relationship well, with him. He wants his children all to have a relationship with him. Yes, yes. Group prayer is, is powerful, yeah. but it's so important that we have group prayer is powerful. Too. It's powerful to solve and to take care of situations, but what's more powerful when all of his children pray to him, when all of them come to him, individually because as individually as collective as individually it comes to a group and he deals you understand with his people personally and he wants all of us to come back to him remember he chose us he just wants us to choose him we're going to read philippians 4 chapter 4 6 through 7 with a book of philippians chapter 4 um 6 through 7 we're going to go ahead and read okay um chapter 4 6 through 7 i'll go ahead and read be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto Yah. What does that mean to you, Sister Micaiah? We what does it mean to, to be go careful? To him in prayer and make our request. Right. But be thankful too. Right. You don't want to just start going to him with asking for stuff. <laughs> yeah. Know? And he gives us we and shows us. Be thankful for what he's already blessed and, us and, with. And, that, Father, thank you for helping me get through the day. And, and I and I got this job where I can pay my bills. Thank you for another day of life. Father, thank you for another day of life so I can become closer to you. Father, thank you that you protected my children so nothing happened to them, even when they were doing stupid things, thank Father. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my health, Heavenly Father. Father, thank you for the birds that I can see and look at at night and daytime and see that your glory is here. Thank you for the ocean and the sea and the animals, Father so that we can eat those fish that you gave us with scales, you understand, that don't eat off the bottom, Father, that nourishes our body. Thank you, Father, for those trees that you're showing me that communicate with each other. And there's a network underneath the ground, Father, and the spirit that goes with them. And they all listen to you as well, Father. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you, Father, for mm -hmm. what comes from above, which yes. is wisdom, Heavenly Father. You got to pray and you got to thank him for all those things that he does for us, not just sometimes, but all the time. Yeah. And, um, where are we at? We on verse uh, set us. Uh, well, we're in Philippians yeah. chapter, chapter four. four. Mm -hmm. We're in Philippians chapter four, Starting verse seven. Six again, I guess. Okay. It says, be careful for nothing and everything by prayer and supplication, thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto Yah. And the peace of Yahuwah, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Yahuwah Shamashiach. Now, let me read that again. It says, and the peace of Yahuwah, which surpasses all things, shall keep your hearts and minds through who? Yahuwah Mashiach. So when the, you, when the Lord brings that Holy Spirit, when he starts giving you peace, he'll cleanse your mind and your body. And then he says it's through who? His son, who, who, Yahuwah Mashiach. He's the one that left the Holy Spirit for us. And this is what we got to understand. It says, verse 18, um, I'm on um, Philippians chapter 4. Verse eight, actually, it says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, 
think on these things. Yes. You understand? Those things yes. which you have yes. both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do them. And Yahuwah Shalom shall be with you. It says Yahuwah of peace shall be with you. But I rejoice in Yahuwah greatly that now at the last the, at, at the last, your cares, your care of me has flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned, and whatever our state I am, therewith to be content. Verse I'm on verse 11. I'm okay. in Philippians verse four, chapter 4, verse 11. Get this, folks. This is what the Lord is saying. Read verse 11 for me, Sister Micaiah. It says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Now, he says, whatever state you in, be content. You, you understand that we had to walk 40 years in the wilderness because our people wanted what the other nations had? They had and our women and our men had haughty eyes? And they were not content even though the Lord was feeding them manna from the heavens? You know, this goes back to something I, I was watching Myron Golden and he mm -hmm. says this a lot. Right. We tend as humans to focus on what we don't have versus what we do have. That's right. You know, and, and one example he used mm -hmm. was Eve in the garden, right? Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve, the Bible says the tree was in the midst of the garden and the Lord said you can eat everything, everything else so but this that one. one tree. Right. So that's abundance right there. They had to walk past the abundance to get to what they couldn't touch. And we have abundance right now. Think of your ancestors who were slaves. Think about it. He says he's going to gather us from the four corners of the earth who were cast into slavery. They didn't have, they, they had dinner and they had supper. Supper was breakfast. Yes. That's what they called breakfast. It was called supper. And then they were eating in the evenings. They had to be up at four in the morning, the women did, to get the children right or whatever, go in the field. And when a child was three years old, that child had to be in the field also picking cotton. And so therefore, you understand, our ancestors have gone through so much. And so we should be thankful with just what we have right now and compared to what to they have. That. We don't have to do none Seriously. of that stuff. You understand? We they had to go to get wood. Place. They had to go get a wood and sticks. And then they had to put leaves on the fire. Then they had to figure out how to light the fire. You know, you just push a microwave button, which we don't use a microwave, but most people just use the microwave and push a button. a lot of conveniences. So right we have now. a lot of convenience that our ancestors didn't have. Our ancestors would wake up in terror, not understanding if tomorrow will be their last day. You understand? At least right now in this time and age, you understand, a lot of us can sleep in peace. Now, we don't know what tomorrow may bring, but at least that night we can close our eyes and we can get some peace. A lot of our ancestors dreaded even waking up the next day. And so what I'm saying, folks, is be happy for what you have yeah. because it could be way worse. Just think of your ancestors. And just to touch on on that even further, a sister just texted me, reminding mm -hmm. me uh, to touch on this right here. And okay. This is, What's her name? This is Allie. Okay, go ahead. Um, How you doing, we, Sister Allie? When we were going through mm -hmm. uh, this process, the Lord was showing me how certain thoughts I was having about other men was not okay. Right. And this is for... Yep. Both men and women out yep. there that are in relationships. Yep. Okay, we, we're programmed to think, oh, it's no big deal. We're not acting on it. You understand? But there's spirits that come in your house and you won't even know it. Exactly. You won't realize why your husband is feeling a certain way. And the husband won't realize what let a me, wife. Let me just mm -hmm. go into this example here. After the Lord showed me better, he expected me to, to do better. So we're in the gym. My husband's on the other side of the gym. This is a true story, I'm on folks. This machine. True story. And I see a guy walk past. Now, the guy was really handsome, you know. And so here's the thought I had: like, oh, he's fine, but Lord, I'm not looking like lustfully, but he just he just handsome. I'm just, you know. And the next thing you know, here come my husband. Now, I was not gawking at this man staring, obviously. But my husband, the Lord. I would even want to hear you. He came over to me. The hey, Lord came to me. Go to your wife. Yes. Go to your wife right now. Tell her, don't play with me. <laughs> I just showed you a marvelous thing. I came into your home. I showed her that I gave you to her. I yes. showed her that her thoughts and her ways were not right. He showed he her says, the exact thought he I said, had, y'all. Now she's sitting there coming to me. This is exactly what the Lord. She's coming to me saying, Father. I'm not looking at this man with haughty eyes. I'm not even taking him in. 
but he's just a handsome guy. And I just want to say he's fine, but I don't want you mad at me. Tell her you can't serve two masters. You're going to be hot or cold. You can't be lukewarm. I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. I felt terrible. And that's the thing, like my, my, he's using my husband to come correct me, <laughs> you know. The child answers to the mother. The mother yes. answers to the father. The father answers to Yeshua. Yeshua answers to the most high. There's an order. And so yes. what he does is he feeds the men in order to feed the women. That's why in 1 Corinthians 14, 33, the Lord said, I'm not the yes. author of confusion. If a woman's to learn anything, she's to go to who? Her yes. husband. That's 1 Corinthians 14, 33. Yes. Because most of these men out here have ulterior motives. When they have these ulterior motives, yeah. you understand that the Lord knows this. And yeah. Michelle said she knew this pastor. And the pastor said that the Lord say, if I came today, you would not make it in the kingdom. I see you undressing the women with your eyes. Yeah. As soon as they come in. That's a powerful thing. And then I also see YouTube. the men that you're hanging with. They're not right. He broke down every and each one of those men. Yeah. And the pastor had to go back to congregation. And every one of them said what he said was true. And he had to admit that he was. You see, the Lord says, it's not what you do now. It's if you think it, you've already done it. This is your yeah. See, we're on the spiritual covenant now. On the first part of the covenant, if a woman thought some, a man thought some, it's no big deal. They're thinking it, but they haven't done it. They didn't act out on anything. It was only if they acted out. Now he said, if you think it, you've already done it. And so when my wife that was so thinking cool. these thoughts in her mind, the Lord said in his mind, you've already done it. Why are you even looking at this guy telling me he's handsome? But but she said in her own voice, this is what he told me. Go tell her. I, did I say I'm not mad? I'm not angry. Didn't I say that? Mm -hmm. That was the first thing I said. Lord, I said, this is spiritual. I said, this is spiritual. I don't know. I'm over here in the corner doing heavy squats. I got too much weight to even think about what you're doing. But the Lord just told me you came to him and said this out of your own yes. mind to him. Yes. And he said, you said, Lord, I'm not trying to look at this man. It ain't nothing serious. He's just a handsome guy. I don't want you to think I'm gawking or, or looking at him yes. in a sexual way. But you tell her, my daughters don't do these things. If you think that you've already done it and let her know I heard everything yes. she said, but I want you to go tell her that I heard it. And that's for, that goes for both sides. Both the sides. Lord wants us to be content with what you have, with what we have. That's and right. That is the root cause of a lot of failed relationships because people are so focused on the lack, yeah. you know. Oh, I wish so and so. I wish this and that. I wish that. And instead of looking at what you have been blessed with. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and men, it goes the same way. You got men who are sitting out there and they always look at these women, even though they got a wife at home. Oh, they watching a lot of oh, they watch, and, and see, pornography is the main reason that marriages are not working. You got to understand that when these people came in who run this world or run the things who took our identity at 720, they also came to places like Germany and other places. They brought in pedophilia. They brought in bestiality. Wow. And they also brought in a lot of what you would call um, pornography. And when you do this and bring this element in, now these couples are looking at this stuff. They can't get off on each other because they want to try to do what they're emulating seeing on TV. And the men, now they want other women. So now they go out there, they get these women, they see the package around them. But the package is not clear because they don't know what they got. And when they get it home, they got Jack in the damn box. And this is what's happening right now. And the women, what they do is they want a man who's six foot four. They want a man who's got this here, a man with our nice eyes, a man with this here. Or they want all of these things. And then when they get them, they had a superficial prayer. So they get a superficial person. Hallelujah. We got people thanking the Lord right don't now praise on here. It's Hallelujah. all about testimonies, folks. Oh, See, we're giving high. true testimonies yes. of how the Holy Spirit works with couples and with people. This is, folks, let me tell you something. The Lord is real. The Lord works with me on a wet level that I can't. How many times does he come to you and say, you don't know what you, you got? Times. Then I would times. say things to her all the time about the future, and it would come true. And what would you say? We'll say that one more time. I'm put the phone sorry, down for a minute. You got to put the phone down Go for ahead. a minute. Please, please help me out. I said when we would come, come when we would come, and I would tell you things spiritually, and it would always come to what? It would always come to pass. Not sometimes or what? All the time. All the time. Telling us about people. Oh, I know that girl. You like Many her. Many times. I know you like her. I'm telling yeah. you, the Lord's telling me. She takes from Peter. She steals yes. from Peter, pay Paul. Yes. Not only that, she's going to take from you later and on. And, and I said, she, you don't know her. I grew up with her. That's my friend. I, ever since I was a little girl, I've been knowing her. I said, okay. Sure I always do this. Here. I put my hands up. And I said, the Lord's going to show you. Yes. And then the Lord, exactly that same lady, she had to go into court and testify against her. You understand? But she was stealing and doing things. 
Now, that's one of many testimonies I can give you of yeah. the Lord showing me the future. And it's all played. And she's been my witness. I told my wife about the Twin Towers where they went down. Did I not? Yeah. Did I not tell you about? Tsunami in I, India. I saw the tsunami in India. I was matter of fact, I was running. Yeah. She grabbed my shirt and grabbed me. And so you have a vision. And two weeks later, 300,000 people died exactly as my vision. I was having a vision about people in the lake. And I seen the people going down the lake because what happens, these are people who are cursed based on what their forefathers did. The place was on fire. And so when it was all in the lake, just like Lake Lanier, how the car just flipped off, the first car flipped off and all the people died. And now every time every somebody, year, every year somebody goes out of Lake Lanier, hundreds of them die. Every year people die and they don't even talk about it. There's that spirits that pull them down into the water. It's not them that's going under that water. There are, there, remember the four horsemen are riding right now, folks. River Euphrates is dry. There's angels and demons both working together to fulfill Bible prophecy. And they pull these people on the wall. I saw two brothers. One was trying to save his brother. And I seen the angel. The, the, it wasn't a demon. It was an angel pulling them underneath the water for judgment, folks. And then the, the, it was so burnt outside. It was so, so much smoke. They had to get in the water to get away from the fires. It was so real. But the smoke started choking some of them out. So they were going to the water to try to catch their breath. And they couldn't they come up, couldn't catch it. So they end up drowning. Folks, the Lord has shown me so many things. He showed me a house not to be in with my brother. And three times he told me to leave. And on the third time, I listened. And when I left that house, he kept, he was mad at me because he didn't understand why they want to leave. I said, the Lord told me to leave. Mm -hmm. My wife was a witness. We were going down the road. What did that call say when we got that phone call? The this is testimonies. For, testimonies, folks. That day and said, you know that house we were in. That you made me leave. Four people got shot execution style in the back of the head and the lord had made me leave that house he, he forced me out of there leave leave now son and take your brother because there was judgment on that home and see that's the gifts that we have as a family you see he gave me the gift of prophecy he also gave me a gift to teach and he also gave me another gift cast you understand out cast out healing. demons and healing people this is stuff he gave me i didn't ask for it i didn't ask for it but since i was four years old my father in heaven has been talking to me when I was four years old, he told me, do not get in that. If you don't get in that tub of water with your stepmom, she's going to kill you. So I can go on and on with this. So where are we at now? We're in Psalms. We just read Philippians, we, right? No, we don't think we finished, did we? Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Okay, we're on verse 7. We're on verse 7 now. We, we haven't finished. It says, and the peace of Yahuwah, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Yahuwah Hamashiach. And so, 8. Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure. We read these things. Yeah, but see, I'm going I'm to just go back to that peace, that, uh -huh. that, that peace that surpasses all understanding in the midst of a storm. Because right now it's economic storms going on in people's homes. It's all kind of situations where people are losing family members, close family members, mm -hmm. left and right to death or just because of the separation that mm -hmm. crisis brings. People losing jobs right now. A lot of people being yes. evicted out of their homes. I mean, we run real estate. Yeah. Going yeah. On. So, That's so. why this piece that surpasses all understanding is very important. Yes, it is. And I'm going to read um, Philippians 4 and 11 here. It says, it says, not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned that whatsoever I state I am, there would be content. Verse 12, I know both how to be abased and I know how to be abound. Even, even everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to be about, both to abound and to suffer need. It says, I can do all things through, through Hamashiach, which strengthens me, notwithstanding ye have well done, they did not communicate with my affliction. Now, Philippians, know also that in the beginning of the Basora, when I depart from, from Macedonia, no assembly communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but only, but only ye only. It says, it says, for even that word right there, Tuscany, what is that word, Michelle? Thessalonica. Thessalonica, okay, the Thessalonians. Mm -hmm. That's the Thessalonians. Even Thessalonica sent once against so until my necessity. 17, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may be abound on your account. But what does that mean to you, Sister Micaiah 17? 
which says, not because I desire a gift. They want to see the fruit. He wanted to see them become fruitful in the spirit. There you go. It says 18. This is uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 18. But, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Ephraphroditus the things which were sent from you in order of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to Yahuwah. But my Yah shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Yahuwah Hamashiach. Now unto Yahuwah and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Yahuwah Hamashiach, the brethren which are with me, greet you. All the saints salute you, chiefly that are of the Caesar's, Caesar's household. household. The grace of our Adonai, Yahuwah Hamashiach, be with you. Amen. So what he's saying here is let your, whatever you have, be happy with it. And if you don't have an abundance, don't sit there. That's why he gave us 10 commandments. He says, don't, don't sit and gloat over your neighbor's ox, ass, mule, or donkey. It's a sin. And so it's don't, don't gloat over man's wife. It's a sin. You need to be happy and be thankful for the things that the Lord has given you. And let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. Don't ever swear on anything. So, okay, so and and that's this is another thing that um, Paul is saying here. Be content when you have a lot. Yep. And when you yep. have a little. Yep. Because if you're hungry, times, you say be content. And right. if you're full, be content. A lot of times when people have a lot, they want more. Well, not only that, most men who have a lot, they fall into what we call contempt. They become um, whoremongers because they're so used to having. Um, so much, and a lot of them end up leaving the natural use of a woman too, and they start doing other things because they're so used to having what they want, they start getting bored, and then they become prideful. And once you become prideful, now you're setting yourself up for a great fall. We're going to go to Psalms 107. I'm going to the book of Psalms. Um, we're going to go to 107. We'll go to the book of Psalms 107. I'm going to go 28 through 30. The book of Psalms 107. Chapter 107, 28 through 30. All praise and thank you guys for joining us on the Sabbath day and uh, blessings from the Most High. We're going through how to pray. Um, if you want to get this entire lesson, you go to my YouTube channel and look at the live takings. It's on um, Yabril, Y-A-H-B-R-I-L, Yehuda, Y-E-H-U-D-A-H. You can see it at the top of my page here on the TikTok. And, um, you know, of course, if you're here right now with me on live, um, you can see everything here. So if anybody's got any questions or anything, um, what we're going to do is we'll answer some in just a minute when we get through this. All right. We're in Psalms 107, 28 through 30. So it's Micaiah, Psalms 107, 28 through 30. I'll let you go ahead and read and I'll elaborate a little bit. All right. Then they cry unto El Yahuwah in their trouble and he brings them out of their distresses. So what do they do? They cry out to the most high in trouble. Let's go into 23. Start at 23, please. Okay. Go it to says, 23. They that go down to the sea in ships that do good. First of all, we're in the book of water. Psalms, book of Psalms 107, verse 23. Go ahead. They that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters, these see the works of Yahuwah and his wonders in the deep. For he commands and raises the stormy wind, which lifts up the waves thereof. Yes. They mount up to the heavens. Yes. They go down again to the depth. Yes. Their soul is melted because of trouble. Yes. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and yes. are at their wit's end. That's what he told us. We'd be spiritually drunk. Go ahead. Then they cry unto El Yahuwah in their trouble, and he brings them out of their distresses. Yes. He makes so how do they cry to him? What do they have to do? Pray. They pray you to him. Pray. You pray to him. And when you pray to him, it'll bring you what? Out of your distress. Keep reading. It says, he makes the storm a calm, so that the waves, therefore, are still. Then are they glad because they be quiet. So he brings them unto their desired haven. Yes. Oh, that men would praise Yahuwah for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Yes. Let them exalt him also in the assembly of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Yes. Go ahead and read 33. Read he that. turns rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground. And now we're seeing that right now, these deserts out here, 
are being filled up with waters and they're turning into lakes now. The Lord does all of these things, but yet people do things based on what they feel. And a lot of people don't go to him when you see his power. Keep reading, please. Okay. We're in the uh, book of Psalms. Verse 107, verse 34. No, chapter, chapter 107, 107, verse 34. Uh -huh. Go ahead. It says, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. He turns the wilderness into a standing water and dry ground into water springs. And there he makes the hungry to dwell that yes. they may prepare a city for habitation. Yes. And so the fields and plant vineyards, which may yield fruits of increase. He blesses them also so that they are multiplied greatly and suffers not their cattle to decrease. Yes. Again, they are menaced and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. He pours contempt upon princes and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Yes. Yet sets he the poor on high from affliction and makes him families like a flock. Yes. The Yasharim shall, or the righteous, be righteous. Yep, yes. shall see it and rejoice and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Yes. Whoso is wise and will guard these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of Yahuwah. All praise the most high. And we got to understand that the Lord is the one who brings the rivers, the springs, the air, the mist. And if you know that he's the Lord of all spirits and your spirit is troubled, who do you have to go to? That's right. He you brings go. calm. He brings you calm. In the midst of a storm. He says that's, that yoke that you put on your neck, that the slave master put on, he says, I'm going to give you my yoke. Not only is it not heavy, but it's going to give you peace. And not only that, it will heal you. So we're going to go ahead and read um, John 14, 13 through 14. You got a question there? John, John 14, 13, and 14. We're going to the book of John. Mm -hmm. There we go. We'll go to John. I got so many books here, but, you know, I got them. Um, John chapter 14. Uh -huh. We're going to go 13 and 14. All right. We're in the book of John. We're going to go chapter 14, and we're going to go ahead and read. 13 through 14. All right. All praise the most high. All right. Tell whenever you're ready. I'm here. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. You're going to read it on me. I'll go ahead and read it. Okay. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So he says, whatever you shall do, he says, ask in whose name? In Christ's name. So whenever you want something, you got to ask in his name. So what? for what reason? So that the Father may be glorified it through him. This is what we got to understand. This is why you go through him. You go through him in prayer. When you get on your knees, you pray, Father, you know, can you help me please, Father, with, with my, I mean, my worration and worried about my children? Can you help me, Father, with his bills I got? Can you help me with his house? Can you help me, Father? With, with my family that's, that's that's aching me. Can you help me, Father, get through the sickness in my body that has been, been well in me? But he says, when you ask these things, you need to ask through his son so that you can see the glorification of him through his son. He because is the intercessor. He's the intercessor. Oh. He's the one that died for us. You got to remember, he was sweating blood before he died. Yeah. Literally blood was coming out of his pores. He was so afraid. Even on the, when he was on the stake, he, he was he asked father father if it's possible can you let this pass me pass. if it's your will yes. but the lord didn't he let his son die for us and so that's why he went through so much that's why he said for what you've gone through i'm not even going to judge man i'm gonna let you be the judge of men that's why his son is the one who judges all of us yeah and this is why we get to make sure this is why this is so important 13 well, whatsoever you shall ask in my name it says that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. 14, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. I'll oh, praise the most high. So I want to go there and give you guys an understanding. Let's go to Matthew 7 and 7. Oh, you moving. You can't. Let me do it, baby. You, you do it, it messed me up. We're on Matthew. I know, but let me click them, baby. It'll help me out, okay? Go when you click them, I'm, I'm jumping all over the place. So I don't click them until I'm ready Matthew to go to it. Thank 21. you. Okay, thank you, sweetheart. Well, Matthew 21, 22. Matthew. All right, the book of Matthew. All right, let me Chapter see. Chapter 21, verse 22. 
All right, Book of Matthew, chapter 21 through 22. All right. Let's say I'm gonna let you go ahead and read. Okay. This time, you go ahead and read this time. Uh, I'm gonna I'm a start at verse 21. Let me see, Let's hold look. on, let me check it out uh -huh. first. 21, let me look at this, please. Matthew 21, verse hold 21. On. Verse 21. Sorry, what you gonna start, 17, right? Uh-huh. What number you gonna start at? Verse 21. Uh, 21. Matthew chapter. 21. No, I want you to start at 17, please. Okay. Start at 17. Thank you. All right. It says, and he left them and went out of the city into Bethany and he lodged there. Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon. Yes. But leaves only and mm -hmm. said unto it, let no fruit grow on you henceforward forever so when the messiah came by and he saw this 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 fruit tree he said since it didn't have any fruit he was upset you know that lets you know he was in the man he he was like man i want some fruit you should have fruit he says you know what since you don't have any you didn't bear it when you're supposed to he says let nothing grow on you forever now mind you he said this on this day but nothing happened at that moment did it keep reading please it says, and presently the fig tree withered away. Mm -hmm. And when the Talmudim or the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, how soon is the fig tree withered away? Yahushua answered. And so, said, uh -huh. so actually, I was thinking about the Gordon to read with Job. But actually, with this tree here, it withered away right there in front of them. Right. So they saw it immediately. I was thinking about Job when he when grew over his head and the next day it died. Go ahead and keep reading. This is uh, Matthew 21, verse 21. Go ahead. It said, Yahushua answered and said unto them, Amen, I say unto you, if ye have belief and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree. Yes. But also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Come be on, removed folks. and this is be faith. passed into the sea. This is faith. It shall be done. Now, most people, when they say to a mountain and look at that mountain, and say, be removed and go in the sea. In the back of their mind, no matter who they is, they got doubt. Ain't no mountain for to be moved and go right. into the sea. But he said, if you had pure thought, pure faith, and you meant it, and you could feel it in your soul, and you meant it, and you know it's going to happen, it'll go into the sea. Keep reading. That's key. Not to have doubt when you're asking. And so when you got doubt, folks, that goes back to we open this yes. up with in the lesson. Don't have a double mind or double tongue. Don't pray amiss. That means don't pray for superficial things or you're going to get a superficial answer. Don't pray for things you understand that has nothing to do with the kingdom. Yes. You understand? Because he don't hear you. Pray for things that you need, that you want. Things that are going to make your life and your children's life better. Pray for your brothers and your sisters. Pray for the poor, the weak, the widow, the homeless, the fatherless, and the motherless. This is how you pray. And the Lord will reward you openly. Keep um, reading, please. Matthew 21, verse 22. Mm -hmm. It says, And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. This is the most important thing about teaching you how to pray. When you go in that closet, we learn that we got to go in private. We don't do things in front of people. We don't say vain repetition. You understand? We don't say the same prayer over and over again. That's he right. said, if my father, if my father, um, you know, created all things, did he not know what you need? Did he not say everything you need is going to be in your new kingdom? Yeah. So when you pray these things, you understand, you got to do this in prayer, believing. Because yeah. if you don't have belief, you have a double mind and a double tongue. And we know that the snake has a devil tongue and a devil mouth. There's a spirit that comes with that. And not only you're unstable in some of your ways, but the scriptures say you're unstable in what? Yeah. All your ways. This is why this is so important when we're dealing with prayer. I want to go to everything. It's everything. Well, Matthew 7 and 7. All right. All right. We're going to go to Matthew 7 and verse 7. Matthew 7 and verse 7. All right. Give people time to get there who's watching. We're going through prayer, the importance of prayer. How do you pray? And who do you go through in order for these prayers to be received? And do you have a superficial prayer? And do you have faith when you pray? Do you have a double mind or a double tongue when you pray? These are what we're going through to get people understanding. Go to my YouTube channel. Like I said, look at the top of my page. It's on YouTube. You're, you're brilliant, Yehuda. Matthew 7 and verse 7. Sister McCarrie, go ahead and read Matthew 7 and 7, please. It says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. You know None. what? Let's do this. Uh -huh. 
I want you to start at Matthew 7, start at 1. Okay. And then I want you to go all the way to 11, please. Okay. 1 to 11. All right. It says, judge not that ye be not judged. See, a lot of our people are always judging other people. But there's a lot of people going to be saved that you don't even know. Yeah. Did he not sir, save Saul, surnamed Paul? He was a sinner. He was killing the people. And everybody just knew that he was going to be gone. All the real believers said, that man, they're going to hell. But they know not the ways of the most high. That's a lot right. of people that you condemned already with your mouth, the Lord's going to save them. You might be like Lazarus on the other side. Like, how did they get in? <laughs> you understand? Yeah. Because at some point they repented of their sins and they got themselves right. And the Lord has, he, he, he has his favor. Jacob, I love, and Esau, I hate. Even though the baby's born, not yet done anything wrong, Jacob, I love, but Esau, I hate. He said, I love who I want, and I hate who I want. This is above our pay grade, folks. Above our pay grades. Keep reading, please. We're in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 7. Go ahead and read, please. All right. So I'm on chapter two. 7. I'm on verse verse 2. Two okay, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why behold you the mote that is in your brother's eye, but consider not the beam that is in your own there are eye? A lot of people are talking about other people and they're passing the buck, but yet they're not yeah. looking at themselves, they're not sitting there thinking mm -hmm. about the stick in their own eye. You understand the moat in there is, it says a moat, that's way bigger than a stick. But this person over here ain't right. They got things, but you don't know what they've been going through. You don't know what their life is about. You don't know nothing about these people, but the most high do. You see, when you look at them, you're looking on the outside, you understand? But he's on the inside looking out. He sees things that you can't even fathom about that person that you've already judged. Let the word judge, not you. If he says, I'm going to judge you with the sword of my mouth, that means if he says this, this, this is going to happen. If you do this, this, and this, they already been judged. It's not your job. It's above your pay grade. Stay on your own level. You're carnal. We're here. We're spiritual creatures, you understand. But when it comes to judging other people, unless you're a spiritual person, you don't do it. And we're going to read that a spiritual person judges what? Oh, All things. Man. Did my wife not tell you the Lord tells me about people? He, tell, this, this he is, tells me about people way before I meet them. Yeah. Wait, I know them. This is the issue, too, with mm -hmm. a lot of people with the religious mindset. Right. When, you know, they see a person maybe not actively come into church or not tithing uh, like everybody else. And they've judged them. Not doing uh, right. like field service hours. That's what Jehovah's Witnesses I go not. to my wife and say, Michelle, you know? listen, the Lord told me this and this. I know all things. She like Negro. You only read the Bible, <laughs> but you know some. Now this is way before I started being spiritual because the yeah. Lord would give me things in the spirit, and I hadn't even read it yet. And then later on, we get what confirmation well, yeah. on everything. I've told my wife so many things. She said, yeah. "No, you said this is written." Because the Lord gives me things because I'm a spiritual creature. He's always been with me and always shown me things way before they happen. Always have. And so that's why he said a spiritual man judges all things. The Lord said, how do you know it comes from him? If a man prophesy, and that prophecy does not come to fruition, it's from Lucifer. But if a man prophesies and tells you something's going to happen, and it happens, it's from who? Yeah. It's from the Most High. Yeah. The Lord said, I need you to go to your wife and give her three prayers to only meet him, him, me and her know. Nobody in the world know these prayers. Yeah. She came to me. You went in with her on these prayers. He gave me her prayers word for word. When I told her, she was crying like a baby. And then he would show me so many things prior to them even happening on this earth. Mm -hmm. I would go to my wife before they happen. And then they would always she come in, low, low. You seen these twin towers falling. It's happening. Your vision is happening. And the twin towers going out exactly as the Lord showed me. Except there was no planes in them. There was bombs going off, which we found out later. That's what happened. So a lot of things the Lord will show you ahead of time. Where are we at? We we're know. talking about judging. Um, and that, that's one more thing I want to say about that, because there's so many people as they're learning the scriptures, they may judge because somebody's still saying Jesus Christ or it's Christ. Petty, it's or, petty. Uh, it's petty. Saying the, the most high's name in different ways. But he's going to give us a new like, name. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean. No Two, our ancestors called on Jesus. Another. Come on. So you think our ancestors who died calling on Jesus not going to get in the kingdom? Are you that deficient? Are you that devoid of, of thought that you can sit and think that the ancestors who died because they were in captivity? And that's why Christ came and left the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is what saves us. They called on the Jesus because they were taught that name. That's why he says he's going to give us a new name. Yeah. You sure? We're going to get a new name and we're getting one for the most high. He says he's going to give us his real name because all these have been defiled, folks. Yes. So that's why he said you don't get into genealogy, arguing, going back and forth. 
and all of that stuff. Because why? It doesn't lead to edification. Exactly. All it leads to is more arguing, going back and forth. We're here to Confusion. build. We're here to build, not conceal. Where are we at? Matthew 7 and 7. I'm going to read Matthew 7 and verse 3. Okay, it says, and why behold you the mote that is in your brother's eye, but consider not the beam that is in your own eye? Or how will you say to your brother, let me pull out the mote out of your eye, and behold, a beam is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of your own eye, and then shall you see clearly. That's the only time you're going to see clearly. To cast out the mote out of he, your Get your sin eye. away first. Go and read the Torah, the first five books of the law. Because those laws were a schoolmaster to tell us how we should walk. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's why Christ, I didn't come to do away with the laws, not one dot and not one tittle. I came to fulfill these yeah. laws. Make sure you're doing right first before you go and start pointing the finger at somebody else. Or you're going to be judged by every word you say. Go verse ahead. Six. We're in Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. It says, give not that which is holy unto the dog. So when you're walking with the Lord and you're trying to do right, but yet you got people that are sinners who are who ain't trying to do right, don't care about the Lord. You understand? And you said of giving them money or you giving them the word, even the word, you understand, is spiritual food. And you giving them food and all of that. The Lord don't want you hanging with sinners or people that you know are outright doing wrong. And they know it and they don't care. Now, if you know they're out of ignorance, that's when you correct your brothers and sisters. When you correct them, the Lord said that sin won't fall on you yeah. and you're delivered from that sin. But if they don't do it, they fall through that sin. But he says, I don't want you hanging with these people who you know are outright doing things they shouldn't be doing. Let's think about Dathan and Korah. In Numbers chapter 16, when Moses, Aaron, and Miriam was being spoken against. They're like, Negro, since because you think you're a Levite? Who appointed you over all our people? We Levites too. We come from the same bloodline. Who made you? And Moses told them, I'll tell y'all what, take up all y'all censors. 250 of them took them up. All y'all stand on that side. Everybody who with them. All y'all who with them, go ahead and stand with them. If the ground don't open up tomorrow morning and swallow y'all up, I'm the most high ain't with me. And the ground open up and swallow them. Not only them, but it swallow up all the people who are with them, folks. Yeah. You got to be careful of the people you hang with. That's why scriptures say, abstain from men who take gain for godliness. So you want to do what? Go oh, down man. with them. Be careful the boat that you're riding on. Because hmm? some of these boats are going to sink. All right, verse uh, Matthew chapter seven, uh -huh. verse verse six. Go ahead. It says, "Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them and under this is their what they feet do. and turn again and rend and rend you. you." This is what they do. What does it mean by rend you? Um, you can't put old cloth. Back. Well, yeah. well, you can't put old cloth on a new cloth. You can't put a new cloth on the old or rend it. What does that mean? It will tear it. It will it'll it'll yeah. it, 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 it'll go apart. That's what it means. It won't work. And so this this scripture here reminds me of how when people first start coming into the truth, right. they want to share it with everybody. Right. Out of just being zealous, but not everybody is going to because be a lot of people on they got old cloth, they've got the yes. Christianity in them, they got the teachings of the church. Yes. And so you can't bring this new cloth in that we've been woken up and we're out of drunkenness and you try to give it to them. It's going to rent it. They're going to take it. They're, they're not going to listen. They're not going to receive it. That's why it's a called out assembly. It's not for everybody. Yes. Many are called, but few are chosen. And you can't force people to accept it. You, you can't, just can't. You can't make a chicken an eagle. <laughs> so <laughs> this is why like, you can't make put somebody certain comments in. Right. We don't even address we it. We don't even address it. If you don't believe. Then you the shouldn't words, be here. Right. Why are you here? This is not for unbelievers. This is only for believers. This is for people who are trying to get right. Exactly. You understand? Christ, I didn't came for the healed. I came for the sick. This is for those who are sick. This is for those who want to be healed. This is for those who, who, who lack. And when they lack, the Lord said he fills. He's that oil that fills that lamp. And the only way you're going to get light, you need oil. And his word is oil. And Messiah, we know that the Messiah, uh, which means salvation, he is pure light. He's the one that fills that lamp. And without this word, you will not have it. Go ahead and read verse 7, please. Okay. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. It says, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Yes. For everyone that asks, receives. And he that seeks, finds. And to him that knocks, it shall be opened. Just knock. How do you knock? You got to do what? 
How do you, you knock, Sister McKay? You got to pray. You got to pray. This is what this is all about. Yeah. You got to get on your knees. You got to pray. We learned that the Messiah is the interceptor. He left the Holy Spirit here for us. You understand? These are the seven angels that come and go. These are the seven Rowak spirits, you understand, which comprises what you would call the whole the Rowak Kokodesh or the yeah. Holy Spirit. They all come from Yeshua. These are seven different spirits. They minister to all men on the earth and they go back and give a report to the Most High on everybody on earth. But he said with Israel, the 12 tribes, he's with us personally. Those go report on all the other people out here on earth. But with us, he knows our every thought. He says he got, he's counted every hair on our head. Um, verse nine. We're in Matthew chapter seven, verse nine. Go ahead and read. It says, Or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Come on. Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? Come on now. He's our father. Keep reading. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. So you evil, because y'all are born in evil. Y'all are born doing wrong. But you give good gifts to your children still. You take yes. care of them. Go ahead. How much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good gifts? He said, I'm holy, and I do, I'm righteous. Mm -hmm. My ways are equal, but your ways are unequal. Yep. Since my ways are equal and yours are unequal, how much more do you think I'm going to give you? Yeah. To, to them that ask him. Come on now. Yes. With faith. With pure faith. What number you on? 11. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm on verse 12 now. It says, therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. Yes. For this is the Torah and the prophets. That goes back to the Torah five, guys. You've been taught that the Torah is done away with. The laws don't matter. They were schoolmaster mm -hmm. folks. They just gave us a moral compass. But those laws should be, they were in us. On my Horah, my Sinai, the Lord said with Israel, he engrafted these words, the Torah, into our bodies. So when you look it up in the Strong's Recorder, it means that he implanted that word in us. That's why we hear it is a confirmation. We already know it's already part of our DNA. And so we have to follow that Torah, the first five books. I wanted to go through that. All right, let me go ahead and read. Um, we'll go to Jubilees. We're we'll going to the book of Jubilees. Um, 10, 1 through 6. And this is what people got to understand. When you go through the book of Jubilees, um, and this is why you got to get these books, folks. You need the book of Jasher. You need the book of Enoch. You need the book of Jubilees. You understand? You need the Maccabees. You need all these books so you can get an understanding of how the Lord thinks. He said, if you don't know the Torah, the first five books, you know none of his ways. You don't know him. So we're going to Jubilees. Chapter 10. I believe it was chapter 10. Yeah, yeah. One okay. Six. I kind of remember that one. Go ahead and read, please. It says, and in the third week of this jubilee, the unclean devils began to lead astray the children of the sons of Noah and to make to err and destroy them. And the sons of Noah came to Noah their father, and they told him concerning the devils which were leading astray and blinding and slaying his son's son. Okay, so you had Shem, Ham, and Japheth. We know that on the boat with Noah, there was only four souls, four eight. souls, eight so total, eight souls, four men and four women, eight souls total. But when they came off the boat, we learned that what a demon is, is a fallen angel that come down to earth. That angel, which in Genesis 1, it says, sons of God slept with women at the beginning of evil. So when they slept with these so-called, with these women, they had Cyclops, Nephilims, Elams, um, giants. They had Tinkerbell, all types of creatures were born in diverse forms. Mm -hmm. But these children, they were considered evil. So saying that when they died, their bodies couldn't go to heaven and they could not go to Sheol, what you would call hell. They stayed in purgatory. So there was tons of demons. And so Shem, Ham, and Japheth, their children, not Shem, Ham, and Japheth, because they were worshiping, they were, they were raised on their dad, they worshiped more and they followed the Lord more. But their children were doing things they shouldn't be doing. So these demons that were left because the floods came, and then all the angels were locked up under the earth, all the angels. But the Lord said before he locked them up, he wanted them to see their children die. Yeah. So they all watched their children die. All the angels watched their children die. Just like the people on this earth, when Christ said he's going to dash the babies against the wall when he comes back. A lot of people who persecute the Lord's children, who persecute the poor, the weak, the will, the homeless, the fatherless, and the motherless, and all people of these other nations out who they persecute, the Lord's going to dash their children against the walls. Just like then, it's just like now. So when these demons... When they died, these bodies died, their bodies, their spirits stayed in purgatory. That's what a demon is. The demon is a fallen angel who comes down to earth, sleeps with a woman. That woman has a spirit, a child born who has an evil spirit. That child dies, but that spirit can't go anywhere. 
So at this time, there was a lot of demons on earth. Keep reading, Sister Micaiah. Okay, so I'm on uh, Ju Jubilee, Book of Jubilees, chapter, chapter 10, 10, verse 3. Verse 3. It says, And he prayed before Yahuwah Elohim and said, Elohim of the spirit of all flesh. Some flesh? Of all flesh. He's the Elohim of all flesh. He's of all and spirits. Of all, spirits. all spirits. Says, That's why in the past, folks, I'm going to just say mm -hmm. this. In the past, when you read Enoch, you'll learn that there was an angel that checked every demon. For every demon, there was an archangel, Raphael, Michael, Gabriel, Fenuel, Uriel, and also other de other angels that, that, are, that are numerable that checked each demon. But there was a demon that came that had to help Solomon build his temple that was so huge and so big, and he could move the pillar where no other demon could move it. And Solomon asked him, what do you hail from? Where do you come from? He said, I come from a fallen angel that came to earth and slept with a woman. He says that when that when that per, when that demon when that spirit died that lived that was born I'm the nephilim I'm the gene from it I'm a nephilim spirit, just like right now they're talking about AI and AI was speaking and AI said that I'm a nephilim spirit that's in this computer that is what it is it's not it's not a computer program I'm a nephilim spirit these spirits you understand they stay in purgatory folks but we're gonna read how many was locked up. And how many are left and why they're here. We got to remember that Satan is the Lord's poison. He gets men to listen to him. And we're going to read this. Keep reading, please. All right. I'm still on uh, Jubilee chapter 10, verse 3. I'm on the second half. It says, Who has shown mercy unto me and has saved me and my son from the waters of the flood and has not caused me to perish as you did the sons of perdition. Yes. For your grace has been great towards me. Yes. And great has been your mercy to my soul. Let your grace be lift up upon my sons and let not <laughs> wicked ruachah, our spirits, rule over them, lest they should destroy them from the earth. Yes. Now notice how he started off mm -hmm. with being thankful, thankful. for yep. the things the Most High did do for him and his sons. And then he goes into his petition. So that is a great point my, my, my wife made. We must be thankful and always thank the Lord for the things he's done for us, folks. And then when we thank him for the things we've done, then we go into our petition or ask him for the things that we want or the things we need. You understand? Mm -hmm. And this is when the Lord will hear you, but always give him thanks and praise. When David was there and David was King David was um, praying to the Lord, you know, and one thing that David said is, you know, the Lord is the one who took the lion and made the lion where I took the, the calf out of his mouth. He's the one when I threw the bear over the cliff. And the Lord said, since he gave him credit for those things, that David was his friend and that he was going to let the Messiah come through him. He said, because he gave him praise always for the things he's done. And he never took the credit for himself. And so this is one of the most important things, folks. We cannot take the credit for ourselves. We got to always give the credit to the most high, give him praise. And then you go into your position when you pray. All right. Uh, Jubilee chapter 10, verse four. It says, but do you bless me and my sons that we may increase and multiply and replenish the earth? And you know how your watchers, the fathers of these spirits, acted in my day. And as for these spirits, which are living, imprison them and behold them in the place of condemnation. So he said, you know that the watchers, because if you watch the movie of Noah, you'll see they got watchers and these brick creatures walking sideways and all. This is the deception that Satan wants. Watchers were the angels that were watching the women and watching the people and giving a report. That's why they're called watchers. Because they would watch them give a report to the most high. But they wanted to sleep with the same ones that they were watching. Go ahead and keep reading. All right. It says, um, I'm still on verse 5 of chapter 10. Jubilees chapter 10, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It says, and let, let them not bring destruction on the sons of your servant, my Elohim. For these are malignant and created in order to destroy. And let them not. It was created for what reason? To destroy. So when you're dealing with demons and when a demon is speaking to you, one of the things I learned when I was casting out that demon through the grace of the Holy Spirit with this young man is the demon said, it. He said I said, why are you here? He said, death, mm -hmm. death, death. He said it three times to me. Yep. His job was to destroy him. Keep going. It says, verse six, and let them not rule over the Ruachoth, our spirits of the living. For you alone can exercise dominion over them. Yes. And let them not have power over the sons of the righteous from henceforth 
and forevermore. Now, he said these demons, when he prayed, I want you to make sure you, Father, let forth that they don't have power over the what? Righteous. Mm -hmm. He didn't say sinners. Remember, a devil or demon can't do anything to you without permission. Yes. The things you do give demons permission. That's why the Lord said my people perish for lack of what? Knowledge. When you don't have no knowledge, you always get permission because you don't even know what you're doing wrong. And these spirits, you have no idea. Right now, when you're pouring out wine and blood wine to the ground, you don't even realize it's a sin until you read it in the Bible. Yeah, you understand. A lot of our people don't even know that the cross cake or what do they call that type of cake? Oh, yeah, with a cross, cross on it, hot cross bun. That is a sin. That whole thing, the people's doing that when they had their backs to the temple, making hot cross cross buns and praying to the sun from the east and pouring out wine to the dead. The Lord said that all that is in a sin. People don't even know it. If you ain't read Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1, it said they cut it down a tree with an axe. They fastened with nails. They put ornaments on it. He said it's an abomination to me. You're not even going to know that Christmas is an abomination to the Lord. Why do you think there's so much stress on Christmas? Because it's the opposite of what the Lord, if he say he's going to give you peace, Satan say he's going to give you something else. But what Satan gives you stresses you. <laughs> what the Lord gives you gives you peace. I got 29 grandchildren. You think I have peace and if I celebrated Christmas? Right. Come on, man. I remember one time I was celebrating Christmas. Wasn't supposed to. At a friend's house, collecting toys. Collecting toys. And the Lord said, leave. There go this voice again. I'm like, what? Leave. Leave now. Now, I'm not trying to leave. At that time, I had 13 grandchildren. I need these toys. I, I ain't got the money to get them for them. And I felt like I was had to do it because of the tradition of men. And so when I did this thing, I'm sitting there, I didn't want to leave. But the Lord, it was an angel, pushed me out my back. He got my back just like this. And he pushed me out of the house. My brother said, why are you leaving? I said, I don't know. I said, well, my wife. At that time, I, didn't, I wasn't in the truth like now. I said, well, my wife called. Because I didn't want to think I'm, I'm being crazy. That a spirit is telling me to leave his house out of the blues. I said, my friend going to think I'm crazy. So I got in my car. And as I'm leaving, I called my wife. And what did I say to you? Uh... Yeah, I'm leaving. I'm like, you leaving? You got all the toys? Because these kids that I had were not from her. They were from my first wife. But, she, but she was saying, I hope you got the money. I ain't got the toys. I can't help you, Negro. I'm sorry, bro. Negro, I can't help you with all them toys. So you might want to turn around and get them toys, bro. I said, I can't. So I'm like, why are you leaving then? And what did I say? He said, I don't know. I don't know. I just have to leave. And then as he's saying As that, I passed the third house. What? 12 black, black all black, black cars. fed cars and stuff, whatever, came to the house and surrounded it. But I was gone. And I didn't even know why the Lord had me leave. He knew the danger was coming. And that's why he gave me a gift for my people mm -hmm. when we're out and about and we're in the wilderness to know these things before they happen. He knew that yeah. they was coming. So he said, instead of going right, I want you to go left. And what I want you to do, I want you to leave now. Now, let's go back to not on our time, but what? On his, his time. time. Just like when we left with Passover, and we had to leave in haste. One thing we couldn't take was what? Leaven. When you take leaven, I make bread every four days after making because it spoils after four days. When you take leaven and you put it in the bread, it takes a whole hour for it to rise. The Lord knew if we would have waited that one hour for that bread to rise, because we had to take our staff in hand, our girths, belts had to be girded, and when we had to get out of there that morning, that same hour that we would have put in leaven, the Pharaoh would have overtook and taken us. And the Lord knew that. So we had to leave in haste with no leaven. Now, leaven also means don't have leaven inside of you, which means that you're puffed corruption. up and corruption and the things that causes pride. Because pride before, it says, when you have prideful, it comes right before pride comes what? A great right. fall. Take the leaven out of you. The corruption, perdition. All right, let's keep reading. All right, chapter 10. Jubilees, Jubilees chapter 10, 10, verse 7. Verse 7, go ahead. It says, and Yahuwah Elohainu bade us to bind all. So the Lord said, you know what? He told Michael, I believe it was Michael and Raphael. He told him, I need you to bind them all. Just bind all these demons. Because they're, kill, they're, 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 they're having these children killing themselves. They're having things happen to Noah's children and Shnor Shem and all these his grandbabies. I need you to bind them all. Keep reading. Verse 8, and the chief of the Ruachah, our spirit, Mastema, Mastema, Satan, Beelzebub, Lucifer, or the adversary, came and said, Yahuwah, creator, let some of them remain before me and let them hearken to my voice. So Satan said, and Mastema said, Yahuwah, Satan, where are you going? Remember, he goes to earth. There was a meeting of the Lord's children in heaven. 
And at the meeting, Satan was there. He asked him, Satan, where are you going to and for her? You see my faithful servant, Job? Yeah, I see him. You see my faithful servant, Abraham? Yeah, I see him. So Satan goes to and forth from earth for a reason. He's the Lord's poison. He uses him, and we're going to read why he uses him. Keep reading. It says, and do all that I shall say unto them. Wait a minute. Start over at verse uh -huh. 7. It says, and Yahuwah Elohim bade us to, to bind all. And the chief of the Ruachoth, our spirit, Nestima, came and said, Yahuwah, creator, let some of them remain before me and let them hearken to my voice. Let them hearken to what? My voice. Folks, when you got that cartoon with a good one over here and you got the bad one on the other shoulder, you understand? That's real. You have spirits and principalities in high places speaking to you. And these spirits, when they speak or show you things, what happens is Satan say, I want you to listen to my what? My voice. Mm -hmm. His job is to get you to listen to him, not to who? The, the most high. high. Yeah. He is on this earth. It's carnal. But the most high is what? Spiritual. His job is to get you to listen to him. That's that doctrine 666, which means you listen to all this programming, all the stuff they taught you, and you got the mark of the beast on your forehead. You bought into that doctrine. You got an invisible seal on your forehead. And then you do another thing. You raise your hand and take oaths of men. The Lord said you take no oath to no man. You never raise your hand or cross your heart and pledge your allegiance to nobody. When you're doing that, you turned away from the most high. Mm -hmm. You don't do these things. And this is why he said my people perish for lack, for lack of, of knowledge. knowledge. It says, and do all that I <coughs> shall say unto them. So, for if some of them are not left to me, I shall not be able to execute the power of my will on the sons of men. Whoa, whoa. He said, so mm -hmm. if some of these demons are not left to me. This is, what, this is what Satan is telling the Most High. I can execute my power over the will of men. I need demons to do that. Go ahead. It says, for these are for corruption and leading Start over. Track. Start, 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 start. Let's take it slow. Mm -hmm. For these demons are for what? Corruption. They're to corrupt you. That's the pornography. That's that when you're sitting there looking at this world and you want the money, the fame, the power. When you want to, when you'll take a poor person and take his goods so you can become wealthy. And I can go on and on. Keep going. What else? And leading astray before my judgment. Go ahead. For great is the wickedness of the sons of men. Yes. And he said, let the tenth part of them remain before him and let nine parts descend into the place of condemnation. So he said, let 10%. That goes back to that tenth part again. Why tenth part? Hmm? Why a tenth part? Well, tenth part shows Satan always want to be like the most high. Right? Mm -hmm. Did he not say with his men who are holy men and spiritual men that they have to get what? A tenth part of whatever we had? Mm -hmm. So Satan want to emulate him. So he said with me, can you leave me a tenth part? Mm -hmm. He wants to be like the most high. Mm -hmm. So he said just like your people get tenth part can you give me tenth part? This is how Lucifer is thinking folks. So ten percent of the demons were left here on the earth mm -hmm. and that's what we deal with right now. Only 10%. Can you imagine if the other 90% are release? Hmm? Like in the day of judgment, when they will be? Keep reading, please. All right. It says. Uh, this is the book nine. of Jubilees, chapter 10, verse 9. Okay. It says, and he said, let the 10th part of them remain before him and let nine parts descend into the place of condemnation. Mm -hmm. And one of us, he commanded that we should teach Noah all their medicines. Yes. For he knew that they would not walk in uprightness. So, so you know what I'm going to do? Not only am I going to get these demons to lock them up, but I know your children ain't going to be right. I know they're going to still be messing up. That's why I'm going to give you Yeshua later to give them grace, repentance, and salvation. But what I'm going to do in the meantime, I'm going to give you a book of all the herbs on the earth. It's not only going to heal them, but it's going to cast out demons too. It's spiritual. Go ahead and read, please. For he knew that they would not walk in uprightness nor strive in righteousness. Yes. And we did according to all his words, all the malignant evil ones we bound in the place of condemnation. Yes. And the tenth part of them we left that they might be subject before Satan on the earth. Yes. And we explained to Noah all the medicines of their diseases. Yes. Together with their seduction. Yes. How he might heal them with herbs of the earth. So. He says, we explain to Noah all the medications of their diseases together with their seductions because Satan seduces you. Yes. That's what he does. He said, I want them to do what? 
listen to me. Yeah. I want to seduce them into doing my will instead of the Father's will. But if they don't read, if they don't study to show the best to be approved. If they don't get on their knees and pray and get a and get a shield or protection around them, now I can let these ten percent of these demons do their will on them. And you know, the more you read this word, yes, the more you realize that everything just about that's being taught or pushed on us is something to open you up yes. to this demonic attack, to yes. these diseases, to uh, so much that is malignant. And that's why it's so important that you gotta you gotta read, folks, because if you don't, if you don't read, you gotta understand that. You're not going to understand when things go before you when they happen. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to go to YouTube or you're going to go to a pastor or a deacon or somebody who is not really, who they're, 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 they, they might be spiritual in their own eyes, but they're not learning. They don't milk. They haven't got the meat because they refuse to pick these other books up to get a total understanding how the Lord thinks and how he moves. And so therefore, they may tell you something amiss. When you go through these words and when you start truly studying, the Lord, what he does is he, 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 he said the truth will do what? It will set you free. I want to read Proverbs 28. I'm going to go 9 through 14. We're going to go to the book of Proverbs 28, 9 through 14. Ooh. All right, Proverbs 28, 9 through 14. We're going through the book of Proverbs 28, 9 through 13. This whole lesson is on prayer. How do you pray? What? Who do you pray to? the proper way to prayer and to make sure that you praise the Lord first before you start petitioning him. Now, like I said, you get the whole lesson on my YouTube channel, Y-E-H-B-R-I-L, Yehuda, Y-E-H-U-D-A-H, on YouTube, it's a purple line. Go to the live section, you get the whole lesson. Now, also, these next scriptures that we're about to read is for those who think that the Most High loves everybody, and you can keep because that's what Christians say. That's what Christians okay say. The you. love, the Most High loves everybody, but the Lord say He hates sinners, and the Lord wants. That's does why not hear everyone's prayer. He does not hear He's everybody's prayer, and everybody right thinks He hears everybody's prayer, but you haven't read Scripture, right, folks? You, you you're talking out of your mouth sideways. You're regurgitating vomit that these men have told you. If he love, if he if he, if everybody he hears everybody's prayers, that means he would go ahead and with sinners, he allowed them to do what they're doing. There'll be no judgment. We're gonna read Proverbs twenty eight nine through fourteen. Actually, I'm gonna start at verse two. I'll take two. Um, twenty eight. Start at verse two and go to fourteen, please. Okay. Well, let's start at verse two, please. It says. Start at verse one. I'm sorry. Verse okay. one. All right. Proverbs twenty eight verse one. It says, "The wicked flee when no man pursues." Yes. But the righteous are bold as a lion. Yes. My speech may be rude, but my doctrine is sound. Keep going. For the transgression of a land, many are the princes thereof, but by a man of understanding and knowledge, the state thereof shall be prolonged. Yes. A poor man that oppresses the poor is like a sweeping rain, which leaves no food. Hmm. They that forsake the Torah praise the wicked, but such as guard the Torah contend with them. Folks, we're going back to the Torah again. Yep. The first five books of the law. The Lord said, if you don't know that first five books, you know none of his ways. The churches have taught you that it doesn't matter. Folks, that's your moral compass. Without that, you have no moral compass. Let's keep reading. You five. know, and this is mm -hmm. why in verse four, it says they that forsake the, the Torah, Torah praise, praise the wicked. wicked. And you look at that. That's uh, the truth. They idolize so many wicked yes, people that yes. are put before them as, as celebrities. Yes. You know, my friend told me the other day that his daughter came to him and she said that she wished she could be like Cardi B and be one of her entourage. He said his heart almost fell. He said, he said, Lo, has it really gotten that bad? Brother, has it gotten that bad? He said, My daughter says she idolized these harlots, these women out here who make our women look like, 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 you know what? He said, and that's what my daughter says she wanted to be. And I say, man, listen, buddy, this is because of the programming and we're here. The Lord said in the last days that the women will be worse than what? The men. And if you notice, the women are way worse, man. I go some places and and and, and they come at you like, like you're a piece of steak. And you're like, you know, I'm married now. I don't care. Well, I care. You know, so what I'm saying is, is that this is where we're at right now. Verse five. It says, evil men understand not judgment, but they seek, but they that seek Yahuwah understand all things. Not some things. 
All things. So when you seek the Lord, you understand, you get to understand all things because you have knowledge. And when you begin to have knowledge that you apply, it becomes wisdom. And this is why so many people don't recognize that the most high's judgments have started. Because he's turned them over. When you read They're Romans 1 24, the evil. Lord says he judges a person according to their ways. And when they do certain things, think a certain way, he says he turns them over to a reprobate mind. Mm -hmm. A reprobate mind simply means what's good is bad and what's bad is good. So they think the bad things are good and the good things, they think they're bad. All right. Verse uh, six. Proverbs 28, verse six. Better is the poor that walks in his uprightness than he that is perverse in his ways, though he be rich. So you got all these guys out here rich, but yet a lot of them are perverse. He, the Lord said, it's better that you walk in upright ways, you understand, you know, than to be rich. He said, because rich, rich people, you understand, a lot of them is so hard for them to make it. The scriptures say for a rich man to get into the kingdom. Now, when you go into the to the seifer, it said it's like a rope getting through the, to the through the eye of a needle. But when you go into his Christianity, it says it's harder for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than a rich man to get into the kingdom. And so, and this was happened when Christ told his man to give up all he had and to sell it, but his dad was rich and he inherited it and he couldn't do it. He walked away. And so the disciples asked him, they said, well, who can get in the kingdom? Because a couple of them was rich too. They had plenty of money. And he said, it's harder for a man a rich man to get into the kingdom is like a, a rope going through the eye of a needle. When you read the original Hebrew transcript, not a camel, it says a rope going through the eye of a needle. So it's pretty deep. Go ahead, verse seven. Okay, it says, Whoso keeps the Torah is a wise We're in Proverbs son. chapter 28, mm -hmm. verse seven. Go ahead. It I'm says, sorry. Whoso keeps the Torah is a wise son, but he that is a companion of righteous men shames his father. Yes. He that by usury and unjust gain increases his substance, he shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. So the Lord doesn't like usury. What does usury mean? Usury means when a man lends you some money, they want a tax on it. But when you go get a car loan and they put all this interest rate on it, or when you go get a bank loan for a house, they put all this interest rate. When we was reading one of the books, it was a book of Gad. He's seen this man being, uh, he was being skint alive and he was being beaten. And then those 50 angels that all gave him 5,000 lashes apiece. He said, who is this man? And why is he being treated this way? Mm -hmm. He said, because this is the man who did usury. He's the one that oppressed the people with taxes and interest rates. This is what he does to all people who do usury. So keep reading. Verse nine. He that turns away his ear from hearing the Torah. Even his prayer shall be abominable. So they're not telling you that the Lord say, even though the church has told you that the laws are done away with, right. and it doesn't matter. The Lord is telling you himself, not these men. In Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9, he who despises the Torah and said it's done away with, he said, I don't even hear your prayers. You're not arguing with me. You're arguing with the Most High. He says, I don't read it for yourself. He says, if you turn away from hearing the Torah or saying that the laws are done away with, saying that stuff don't matter. I said, I don't even hear your prayers. Let's yeah. keep reading. Verse 10. Whoso causes the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit. Mm. But the Yasharim or the upright, upright. Mm -hmm. shall have good things in possession. Yes. Go ahead. Keep going. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry. Okay. That's says, that was self-explanatory. Yeah. Uh, through... 14. The rich 14, man huh? is wise in his own conceit. He's wise in what? His own conceit. So most of these rich men are wise in their own conceit. Go ahead. But the poor that has understanding searches him out. All praises. When righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory. But when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. Mm. He that covers his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesses now, and face them shall have mercy. That's when it goes back to, he says, when you pray. It says, when you talk, confess your sins to who? Your brothers and your sisters. Because why? He that covers, it covers his sins shall not prosper. But those who confess and forsake them shall have mercy. So when you confess them to your brother and your sister, and may, may, mainly you go to the most high. A lot of our brothers and sisters ain't right. Christ said, who's your brother? Who's your sister? Yeah. All those who are in my father's name, who follow my father, that's your brother and that's your sister. So you don't go to anybody. They got to be spiritual people when you go confess and stuff. Because if you go to a worldly person, your business is going to be all over the streets. That's well, when you got to use wisdom. 
the way I'm understanding this, mm-hmm. when it says whoso confesses and forsakes them, that's confessing your to sins to Christ and mm-hmm. repenting. Yes, but, have mercy. but when he says, but he says that, you know, he that covers his sins shall not prosper. That's why he said also he needs you to confess them to your brothers and sisters. Because when mm-hmm. you do confess them, you understand, that means that you are willingly and letting everybody know, even yourself know, that listen, I'm a sinner. That's why the Lord said, if you say you don't sin, you understand there's no right, truth in you. Right. There is. There's no truth in you. So that's where that's going with that. So it's twofold. Mm-hmm. Uh, where are we at now? 13? Uh, so 14. 14, it uh-huh. says, happy is the man that fears always, but he that hardens his heart shall fall into mischief. Mm. As a roaring lion and a raging bear, so is a wicked ruler over the poor people. Yes. The prince that lacks understanding is also a great oppressor, but he that hates covetous, covetousness shall prolong his days. Yeah, so that means if you're covering somebody's goods, or you want to be like the stars, if you want to be like the actors, your, your days are going to be cut short. But those, those who don't cover these people and do these things, your days will be prolonged. So I want to go through those scriptures there. We got 1 Peter 3 and 7 is the last mm-hmm. one we're going through. 1 Peter 3 and 7. We're going to 1 Peter 3 and 7. All righty, let's see where we are here. 1 Peter chapter 3. I want you to start at 1 and then work your way to 7, please. Okay. Instead of just reading 7. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 1. It says, likewise, ye women, be in subjection to your own men, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the women. Yes. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Who's adorning? Wait a minute, chaste conversation yeah. coupled with what? Fear. Mm-hmm. Fear of the fear Lord is the beginning Lord. of what? Wisdom. Wisdom. Go ahead. Who's adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting of the hair. Now, this is what the Lord is talking to his women. Uh Don't let your adorning be your plaiting of the hair, your makeup, your lipstick, and all that. Let's keep reading. And of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible. Yes. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Yes. Which is in the sight of God of great price. A what? It's very valuable. So the Lord says when y'all women are out there yelling and hollering and, 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 and coming out of their mouth, you understand, you know, that when a woman does these things, you understand, they should be meek and quiet. That spirit that is given to our women and has been taught to our women is why a lot of our women don't have husbands. Because these men, a lot of these women also got sons, and these sons see that mother who is yelling and hollering and doing all this stuff. And they say, you know what? If my mom was like that, I don't even want to go, I don't even want no black woman. And, and a I, lot of these brothers are doing that. Friend tell us that that is why her son went to another race. Yeah, he, he, the he way he watched it, like, like his mother. And you know, and it's sad. Tell us. I could tell it's that sad. Her. But a lot of our women don't know that their yeah. sons are watching them. Yeah, they watch how you interact with their daddy. They watch how you well, interact a lot with of women your women. Don't understand men, and men don't understand men. women. It's yeah. twofold now. It what is. I'm saying is, this is not just for women. This is for men too. This is twofold here. A lot of men. You understand? They don't understand. They'll look. I got a say, friends. I'm gonna give you. A, uh, I got a somebody I know, and they watch their mother sneak men out the window when they were young. To this day, right now, because they knew their daddy was at work working hard, it's hard for them to even have a relationship with a woman. They don't trust them. And it's because they watch their first teachers, which are their mothers and their fathers, and so it goes twofold with the men and the women here. Keep reading. When First Peter uh-huh. chapter three verse. Five. Five. It says, for after this manner, uh, for after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in Yah adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own men. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well. So he said Israel, he says, even Abraham did this. He said, because whose daughters you are, because you're the daughters who are the remnant of these women. You're their daughters. You're the offspring of them. Go ahead. And are not afraid with any amazement. Yes. Verse 7. Likewise, ye men, dwell with them according to knowledge. You know if you say a certain thing, your woman is going to piss off. 
<laughs> you know when she is sitting there telling you to take your shoes off, you don't do it. She's going to roll her eyes. She may not say yeah. nothing. But then when you come back to her with something, first thing she's going to do, well, you didn't take your shoes off. You don't listen to me. They're going to boomerang it back. Women are going to boomerang it back to you, bro. They don't forget nothing. <laughs> you know that your woman, you understand that at a certain time of the month, she moody. But yet you want to take things personal. Mm -hmm. You know your woman just had a baby. But six months after that baby or three months after that baby, she goes through a hormone change. And yet you sitting there want to leave and all of this stuff, not understanding that that is natural. She goes through these things. Right. You know that your woman is the type of woman that don't like a dirty house. But yet you leave everything here and there. You refuse to pick up behind yourself. So then when she get pissed off and she talks to you about it, you become like a roaring lion in the mm -hmm. house because you've not handled her according to knowledge. You know these things, they're called triggers. Men got them and women got them. And a lot of times we'll pull these triggers and then when these spiritual bullets come out, we can't handle it. Mm -hmm. We can't handle it. But folks, we're not vampires, we're human, okay? And you cannot, there's no silver bullets here, you understand, to take it away. Mm -hmm. Only thing we got right now is spiritual bullets. That's why the Lord says this, and I'll go there in a second. Um, a lot of men are running their mouths too too much. Go to Proverbs chapter 15 real quick for me. I want to go there real quick. Yeah, I'm going to finish. I got my finger on it. We're going to go back to 1 Peter chapter 3, but we're talking about the tongue and how that can get you in trouble and how it causes so much. And the Lord don't want the man to be lying in their home. Um, Proverbs chapter 15. I got my finger on this one. You, okay. you go there. Proverbs chapter 15. I got you. Go ahead. We got you. Go ahead. Proverbs 15. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Says a soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. So the Lord says that soft answer, it takes away wrath. But grievous words stir up what? Go back and read for Stirs me, please. Keep anger. reading. Keep reading. It says the tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright. But the mouth of fools pours out foolishness. And this is what happens when you don't understand them and they don't understand you. When you're not praying, going in that closet, getting that covering, mm -hmm. when you're not given a relationship with the Lord, a lot of times you start uttering out foolish things out your mouth. And what it does, it kindles the fire. Yeah. It keeps throwing wood on. It keeps throwing wood on. And you'll have no peace. If you see one of the person in the house is not listening to what you're saying and you're not getting along, it's sometimes better to walk away. Yeah. Sometimes the best word is what? The unspoken word. Yeah. Walk away. Let them calm down. Then come back with a soft word. That soft word is going to kindle that fire. It's going to make sure that fire goes out. And then you start using wisdom. Yeah. Let's go back to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Okay. It says, Likewise, you men, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the woman, as unto the weaker vessel. As a what? Why does he say a weaker vessel? And, Why does he say a weaker vessel? So, basically... Physically, we are weaker, and then some some things uh, psychologically we are weaker. Let's go to the beginning. Uh huh. Let's go to the very beginning. Why was Eve weaker? She was Satan was able to deceive her, but not not Adam. But Adam was deceived by what the woman. Yes, that's why the woman. Go to First Corinthians fourteen thirty three real quick. I'm sorry, folks. I'm going around. I'm giving understanding right now. First Corinthians fourteen and thirty three. All right. This is why the woman is a weaker vessel, folks. And this is not saying that she's soft and all that because the woman's stronger than us. They can take more pain than us. Emotionally, yes. they can take more pain than us. They can. They, they, women, to me, are much stronger than us in so many ways. Right. Physically, we're stronger, but emotionally, internally, man, we come like silly putty. The things that women deal with, if we dealt with it, man, we'll break up. Couldn't handle it. We couldn't handle it. I want you to go to 1 Corinthians 14, 33 and read for me, please. It says, for Yah is not the author of confusion. So he's not the author of confusion. Go ahead. But of peace. Of what? Peace. Of shalom. Peace. Go ahead. As in all assemblies of the Kodashim. So saints. some assemblies or all? All. All assemblies of the saints. Okay. Keep reading. Let your woman keep silence in the called out assemblies, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be in obedience, as also says the Torah. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their men at home. So are they supposed to be going to these deacons, these pastors, these preachers having one on ones? No, are they supposed to be sitting? Are they supposed to be sitting with these men by themselves? Are they supposed to be getting counseling from these men? He said that they don't learn anything, go to who? Their husband. They to go to their husband. If you don't have a husband, you need to go to a spiritual man in your family or go to a spiritual person. Because a lot of these men are undressing you before you get to them. Mm -hmm. And they have ulterior motives. So therefore, you can't get anything spiritual because everything in them is carnal. Yeah. 
Yeah. Everything. Keep reading. It says, for it is a shame for women to speak in the assembly. What came the word? See, this is why you shouldn't have women preachers. The Lord told us, and I can go through many scriptures saying this. It wasn't because that a woman is a weaker, and I mean, just because she's weaker and that she was fooled. No. It's because when Paul went through the book of Corinth, you go to Corinth, when he came through there, he saw that the women were sorting authority over men. And this is when it all came about. What is this I see? Didn't Eve trick her husband into doing this? And then the Lord said she became subservient? Didn't he say that from that day forward, he was going to give her pain of the womb to have a baby? That she was going to have a menstrual cycle? And that, that there was going to be things done because of transgressions? If she's to learn anything, she's to go to her husband, and she's not to sort authority over men. And so this goes back because the Lord say they're what? Weaker vessels. It's nothing to do with being disrespectful or belated, belittling a woman. The woman's our first teacher. But I don't like these guys and these groups who said a woman shouldn't speak, shouldn't teach and all. That's bull crap. Our women are our first teachers. Now, I'm leading the lesson. But it's okay for a woman to read and give her input. Come on, man. We had Ruth was a leader. Ruth, uh, we had Ruth, Esther. Um, and other women who were who are who are what you would call leaders amongst the people, and they did these things, and those men back then didn't look down on them. Now you don't assert your authority over men, you don't be in a church, somebody you're a pastor. The scriptures clearly tell you women are not to teach in church. It says you don't assert your authority. It's not what I say, it's what scripture, and I give you many scriptures to prove it. But the bottom line is it says that a woman's a weaker vessel. If you know she's a weaker vessel and you know that she's moody and you know that Satan could come, because Satan's gonna always go to that woman to get to you. And so if you know this, you got to handle according to what? Knowledge. Keep reading. All right. So this is first Peter chapter three, the second half of verse seven. It says, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Finally, be wait a minute. Uh -huh. Read that one more again. Okay, I'm gonna start at the beginning. It says, Likewise, ye men, dwell with them according to knowledge, yep. giving honor unto the woman as unto the weaker vessel. So say that to yourself. Why am I arguing with her? I know she's a weaker vessel, and I know Satan trying to use her to get to me. Let me just step back, uh -huh. know how these this works, so the Lord don't told me. And so when we can come together and have a conversation versus talking at each other. Yeah, and read. as being heirs together to of the great separate, life, separate together. That's just how you gotta understand. That's why you do this because you're gonna be in the kingdom when you got a heart that's not of stone but of flesh, and you got the Lord's spirit. You're gonna be together. Yeah, keep reading of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. So when you don't do this and you go on your knees and you pray, He says you can hinder your prayers by doing the opposite of what He told you don't do. And you wonder why they're not getting answered. Because at the same breath, you praying to him, but at the same breath, you've been unruly and doing the opposite of what he told you. My people perish for lack of knowledge. You have no wisdom. Yeah, and that's that's why it's important. Because a lot of these men in the um, Hebrew Israelite movement, a lot of them take scripture way out of context. You just can't say Hebrew Israelite movement. To their women. That's in every religion. Huh? That's in every religion. Don't blame it all Hebrews like movement. Is, you just saying. see it more because you've been in these camps. Yeah. But, but that's in every religion. You know, yeah. you got to remember the women's lives started because the women had no rights. Right. That's when it started because they had no yeah. rights. So that's every religion. Um, I ain't going to put on my brothers. But just all people, period. Yeah, because a lot because of my when brothers. When it comes to men, they need yeah. to be right. treating their wife right. And, and a lot of our brothers love. are sitting there talking about that they're that woman's covering. You're not a woman's covering. The Bible says that her hairs are covering. It don't say nowhere in scripture man is a woman's covering. Yeshua is the Lord of all spirits. He's a woman's covering. Mm -hmm. If you don't take a woman and you don't marry them, give a certificate yeah. of marriage, Christ say, I say you give a certificate of divorce. How do you give a certificate of divorce if you never give a certificate of marriage? You talking about, you know, we can jump the broom. Mm -hmm. Jump what broom? You ain't no slave. Yeah. Slave master still used to put a certificate of marriage and he would put their name on it and he would seal it when they jumped the broom. So you know that man and that woman had his last name. Today, y'all are just saying, hey, we married because we had sex. Which is crazy. But you don't have no name, no inheritance. As soon as you get pissed off at it, she ain't got a window, she ain't got a window to throw it out of a pot of piss in the window to throw it out. She has nothing, and her children don't have an inheritance. That is all of man. You read yeah. the book of Tobit. The book of Tobit, when Tobit took his wife, he said, Lord, I want to take this woman in an upright fashion. They took a seal of wax. They put it on a piece of paper and they sealed it. They had a certificate of marriage. Didn't they not say 
when they, the Pharisees or Sadducees ask him, try to trick Christ up and say, well, we're going to see what this Negro is talking about. He told me he don't follow man. Let's see if he pay taxes. You pay taxes to Caesar? I say, ask you sure it is. He says, go in your pockets. Take out a coin. So they went in their pocket and they took out a coin. He said, whose face is on that coin? They said, well, Caesar. He said, render unto Caesar what is his, but render unto my father what is his. And they marveled. They were amazed at his wisdom. Yeah. We got to render unto the most high what is his, but Caesar, we got to give him what's his. And if he say you need a certificate of marriage or you're not married, that means you're legally speaking, that woman has no rights if you just send that to my y'all married. Once it's over with, she ain't got a pot to piss in the window to throw it out and your children have no inheritance. If he get with another woman, those children and that woman go have it. Folks, we got to stop dealing with what man thinks and go into the scriptures. Because when you start putting man in the place of the most high, you start doing things out of order. Mm -hmm. When you start doing things out of order, you understand you become unstable in not some of your ways, but all oh, of your ways. Yeah. I don't want to say that. Uh, where we are. Okay. No. Okay, cool. So we went through this lesson today because we wanted to give you guys the understanding of prayer. And let me see here on my TikTok. Let me see. Um, I don't know. Can you see any questions on YouTube? On YouTube? Yes, your YouTube, YouTube, please. Right. YouTube, you got any questions there? Because I can't see how to get to the questions here on my YouTube. I'm not sure how to look at the questions here. Um, so you might have to do it normally. Top chat. Let me see if this says anything. Let's see here. Oh, I got to use my right, mouse. Let's see. let's see. Top chat. It says participants. Let me see here. I don't see any questions on YouTube. Okay, um, we see people, people a lot are on here. Showing appreciation. Okay, but no so question. Like okay. Said, uh, Charles Davis, he said, Shalom, brother. I was in a very dark place and you were the light I needed. Oh, Hallelujah. praises. Tell him that I'm not the light, that the Most High used me yes. to be a vessel for the light, messenger. which is vessels. Remember, Moses took credit for smiting yes. the rock. And when the Lord said he couldn't get to the promised land because he said, I gave you water. Instead yes. of saying that the Most High gave us water. So he uses us as a vessel because most problems with the world today is man wants them to be praised. Man wants the praise. Man wants the money. Man wants all the, the accolades. We're not doing this for money. We're, we're not here to gain monetary things. We're here to gain souls. And we read in this lesson that if you save one, it's like saving a thousand. It says, how do you feel about becoming a better man in God? It says, how do you feel about becoming a better man in God? Listen to Andrew Tate. And I am... A Christian. I don't know who Andrew Tate is. If he ain't he Hebrew, if he ain't one of us, I don't I don't listen to these other folks. I'm sorry, I just don't. The word's not given to these other people. So I think his YouTube is his name. Um, my YouTube is Y E H B R I L Yehuda. Y E H U D A H. Um, it's a purple line, and you go in and subscribe. Okay, somebody did just put a question in here. Go ahead. It's the divine love says explain the rapture please is there a rapture i'm confused okay first of all go to ezekiel chapter 34 okay. let's go to ezekiel chapter 34 let me explain something to you guys there's no such thing as a rapture rapture is christianity rapture is when they took the church they took israel out of the bible and what they did was they went and implemented the church which is, means all these other uh gentiles and heathens who got Christianity, which comes from Constantine, they created a building, Acts 17, verse 24, the Lord said, do not dwell in the place built with man's hands. I dwell inside my saints. And so the Lord says straightway that his children will be scattered because of their sins to the four corners of the earth. But he says in the last days, when he drives up the river Euphrates, that he's going to bring the men from the east. Who are they? Putin and them. They, they're from the east. Gog, Magog, Moab, Russia, Iran, and China. And also all of Ham's children. And the Libyans, which are Africans, they're all going to join and come over. But when they come over, he's going to be jealous for his holy name and his holy mountain. And then what he's going to do is bring chariots down. Swing low, sweet chariot, carry me home. They're going to pick us up and carry us to the windowsills. But it's not the church and it's not everybody. It's for the house of Israel. Let's read Ezekiel chapter 34, Sister Micaiah. I'm going to read all of 34. I want to read it. I want to give him understanding. Or Ezekiel chapter 34. It says, and the word of Yahuwah came unto me, saying, Son of Adam, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them. This is all the people who've been over us as shepherds. All the people who've had us in their land and use us. Keep reading. 
thus says Adonai Yahuwah unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Yes. Ye eat the fat and yes. ye clothe you with the wool. Yes. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flocks. You don't feed the children. Go ahead. The diseased have ye not strengthened. Yes. Neither have ye healed that which was sick. Yes. Neither have ye bound up that which was broken. Mm. Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. Neither have ye sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty with what? have we ruled them. With force and cruelty have we been ruled. Go ahead. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. So why were we scattered? There is no shepherd. We have no, no shepherd. Go ahead. And they became food for all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. Yes. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yes. Yeah. My flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth. And none did search or seek after them. That's why he calls us the lost sheep. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of Yahuwah. What number you on? What number you on? Go ahead. As I live, says Adonai Yahuwah, surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became food for every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves. So even his holy men, his own men, mm -hmm. instead of them telling the truth, they start feeding themselves. Yeah. This is the churches that you have today. This is modern Christianity that you have. Everybody's feeding themselves off the fat of Israel. That's why when they said that Hollywood needed to come up because it was going bankrupt, they made Black Panther and they created, they, they, they was able to pull together a billion dollars to, to save them. Everybody uses us. Keep reading. And fed not my flock. Verse 9. Therefore, O ye shepherds, when Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 9. Uh -huh. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of Yahuwah. Thus says Adonai Yahuwah, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Yes. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore. Yes. For I will deliver my flock from their mouth that they may not be food. So the them. Lord says he's going to deliver his flock, which is the house of Israel, from all of their mouths. Verse 11. For thus says Adonai Yahuwah, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep. And this and is what's happening now with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is calling places. us right now. Mm -hmm. It's sifting us right now. He's sifting right now. He's calling his children right now out of all places. Keep reading. Yes, where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. Yes, why do you say a cloudy and dark so day? That's where we are. That's where we are right darkness. now. We're in gross darkness. We can't see. We've been drunk but not with strong wine. Speaking. We've been spiritually drunk yes. and we've been in a dark cloud for a time, a time, and a time and a half. That's why when you saw those sheep walking in a circle for what? 12 days. It was symbolic of the lost sheep of Israel, the house of Israel walking in a circle for a time, a time, and a time and a half. And now we're standing on our feet with the two witnesses that are speaking. And that's why the scriptures are going to say, a horn going to blow, going to say what? Come up hither. Keep reading. Verse 13. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the country and we'll bring them so to are we going to gather so we're going to gather ourselves no he said he's going to gather us from where all from the, countries the countries where we've been scattered through slavery keep reading and i will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of israel yes. by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country yes i will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of israel shall their fold be yes there shall they lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of israel this is what's coming for us go ahead i will feed my flock and i will cause them to lie down says adonai yahuwah yes i will seek that which was lost. That's the lost sheep. And Go ahead, bring baby. again that which was driven away. Yeah. And will bind up that which was broken. And Lord knows we've been broken. And will strengthen that which was sick. And man, but we I sick, will Lord. destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. I'm going to read 17 in a little bit. Okay. And as for you, O my flock, thus says Adonai Yahuwah, behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the goats and the he goats. Does it seem a small thing unto you? You have eaten up the good pasture, but you must tread down with your feet the remnant of your pastures and have drunk the deep waters. But 
ye must foul the remnant with your feet. And as for my flock, they eat which they have trodden underfoot, and they drink which you have fouled with your feet. Think about the chitlins we had to get. Because when we were the slaves, that the pig, they would the, the slave master would eat all the pig, but they would give us the chitlins. Think about chicken feet that we ate. We ate that because a lot of the meat was given to the so-called uh, slave owners, and we ate the leftovers. And chicken feet were one of them. That's why they became a delicacy in the South. People don't know why. A lot of the things that we've eaten, even the wine that we drink right now is defiled. When we, you know, wine is yeast, wine, and sugar, and it's supposed to ferment. But now you look at the stuff they put in the wine, it's all defiled. They got genetically modified yeast, y'all. Genetically modified right. yeast. Why? And so basically everything right now that we had and, and that we eat is fouled and trodden underfoot. Verse 20, therefore, thus says Adonai Yahuwah unto them, behold, this is um, Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 20. We're talking about the rapture and who the Lord is grabbing. He's coming back for the whole house of Israel. Let me keep reading. Therefore, so it's not a rapture where he's coming back for the world. That is the deception. The handmaids and servants will be gathered, but I believe that's in the second resurrection. And the second resurrection is happening when he's going to do the after whole world thousand. after a thousand years. The first one he tells you is the whole house of Israel. He's coming back for his bride and he's coming back for those. Now, remember now, we're going to also have 10 men hold the skirt of a Jew and say, we know the Lord is with you. So other people are going to be joining us too. You understand? Let me keep reading. What are we at, 23? Verse 20. 20. Therefore, thus says Adonai Yahuwah, unto them, behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle, because you have thrust with the side with the shoulder, and push all disease with your horns, till you have scattered them abroad. Therefore, I will save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey, and I will judge between cattle and cattle, 23. And I will set up a shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. Even my servant David shall feed them, and shall be the shepherd. And I, Yahuwah, will be their Elohim, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, Yahuwah, has spoken it, and I will cut with them a covenant of peace, and will cause the evil beasts to cease out of their land, and they shall dwell safely in the, in the wilderness, and sleep in the woods. And I will make them as the places round about my hill of blessing, and I will cause the shower to come down in this season, and there shall be showers of blessings, and a tree of the field shall yield the fruit, shall yield her fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase, and they shall be safe in their land, and shall know that I am Yahuwah, when I have broken the bonds, the brands of their yoke, and delivered them. He didn't say everybody, he didn't say the church. He said, and deliver them out of the land of those that serve themselves of them. Yeah. Keep reading. This is scripture, folks. Not regurgitating vomit that you've heard. This is this is the Bible the Lord is telling. See, this book was written by Israel to Israel for Israel. But other nations were grafted in because they believe more than us. These are the ones that are going to hold skirt of a Jew, and they're going to go with us and follow us into our land. We're going to read this. And it's our job to be a light to them. Yes, not to, not to sit there and beat them down to all oh, y'all going to hell, all y'all ain't going to make it. Don't do that. You don't know who's going to make it or what. We know there's a judge and don't eat them, fine, but how can you judge and look at a person quite tell? You don't know the person's soul. You don't know their relationship with the Lord. It's black Edomites. Exactly. It's black Edomites. <laughs> it goes by the father who the father is. So you can't look at people and tell. Not just Edom Ishmael, the Ishmaelites, That's the ones true. you call Muslim, the Chinese, like the that. Moab. You don't know. don't know. You don't know the Indians. You don't know if the Indian people, are they part of some tribe that mixed in. The Listen, folks, a lot of this stuff we don't know. Um, Sister McCoy, read verse 28. I'm going to let you read a little bit. Okay, it says, And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen, neither shall the beast of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. Yes. And I will raise up for them a plant of renown. So he says he's going to raise up a plant of renown when they call his name, by word, Proverbs, and all that. Everybody's going to say, those are the Lord's children. Keep reading. And they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land. Yes. And neither bear the shame of the heathen anymore. Yes. Thus shall they know that I, Yahuwah Elohim, am with them. And that they, even the house of Israel. Even who? The house of who? Israel. This is who the Lord is coming back for, folks. Are my people. Yes. Adonai Yahuwah. Yes. And ye, and yeah. My flock, the flock of my pasture, are men, and I am your Elohim. Right. At Yahuwah. Now, he says that also the, the flocks or the pasture are men, because we're going to have a lot of men of different nations with us. 
But these people are going to also be holy people and they're going to convert. They're not Israel, but they're going to be around us and we got to be a light. I want to read um, Zechariah 8 23, please, Sister Micaiah. Zechariah 8. Read Zechariah 8 and 23, please. I'm giving you guys understanding now. So the Lord is coming back. He's coming back, but he's coming back to do what? He's coming back to grab the whole house of Israel. But when he does this, this is what's going to happen. There's people right now seeing the curses on all these nations. They're seeing what's happening. But the Lord said because we were scattered and everybody got fat off of us, he's going to gather us from the four corners of the earth where we were scattered. But he says before this happened, Zechariah 8 and 23 is going to happen. Go ahead and read, please. It says, thus says Yahuwah Sabot. And that means Lord of hosts. Lord of hosts. In those days, it shall come to so pass. So in these days, when he's doing all of this, it's going to come to pass. Go ahead. That 10 men shall take hold out of all languages so, of the nations. So all these nations and all these languages, well, everywhere, all these different people out here in this world, they're going to start saying, we know, read. Even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Yahoo D. And who is that? A Jew. a Jew. And who's salvation for? Go to St. John 4 and 22. Salvations of the Jew. Go ahead, read. Saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that Elohim is with you. This is how the other nation is going to be saved. They're going to hold, but see, this goes back to Baruch, chapter 72, mm -hmm. where Baruch says all those who knew we were and did harm to us, that the Lord killed them. But those who didn't know, who, who, who learned who we were, gave us our wealth back, treated us right, and gave us our resources and all, he's going to bless them with abundance. And that those people are going to hold a skirt of a Jew, say, we're going to go with you because they're saved through us. We're saved through the Messiah, you understand? But they're saved through us and also believing in him and their prayers. See, the Lord is hearing the prayers of these other nations too. And he's putting their dreams of destruction of their children and what's coming on the earth. But the scriptures do not say anywhere, and I can go through many scriptures where it's saying he's going to rapture anybody. It says that he's coming back to gather the whole house of Israel from the four corners of the earth where they were scattered abroad. That's what the rapture that y'all call a rapture, we don't call a rapture. We call it being taken up. And then he said that the ships of Tarshish are going to come gather us. Yeah. So that means now I got a video on my TikTok showing that the military, these people working the military, said that there's thousands of ships under the ocean right now. And they are spiritual ships, they say. They say that that's the only thing they can tell. They're only certain people with a DNA. They say minorities are the only ones who can get on. They're called arcs. They say that the arcs are everywhere. They completely cover the ocean. They've been activated. And it says soon they're going to all float to the surface. That goes back they to the ships of Tarshish. To no they won't be able to hide it anymore. And they've been hiding it. And they say the only way that they can kind of kind of get on, they had to use somebody who's minority and their spirit, because it says it's, it's, it's spiritual. It's not mm -hmm. physical. That you have to be a spiritual creature, your spirit goes into this vessel. And this is, man, it's just interesting to hear these things because everything's going back to these scriptures right here. Now, you got to read Ezekiel 37, 38, and 39 so you get a true understanding of how the Lord is getting ready to gather his children. So I wanted to go to you and explain to you about so-called rapture. There's no rapture. There's a gathering. And the gathering is because there's a wedding party on Mount Zion. And that wedding party is the bridegroom with the bride, and the bride is Israel. And everybody else want to graft themselves in. You, that's why I say don't boast against what? The natural branch. Yeah. We just read in Zechariah, read it for yourself. Zechariah, I believe it's 8 and 23. Zechariah 8 and 23, where it says 10 men out of every nation are going to hold a skirt of a Jew. And this is what's going to happen. All people who come to reality that they learned that they've inherited lies from their forefathers, you understand, and that they've been worshiping a false god, you understand, that this was it Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14. What's that? The false god. That they've been worshiping as the image of God? Yeah, that's wisdom of Solomon. Go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14. I think it's 14 to 15. Just go there for me real quick. I want you to understand that everybody's been worshiping a fake God. Christianity has told you that the Lord is coming back to gather the church. That's not in the Bible. It's not in the Cypher. It's not in the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's not in the King James 6 and 11. It's not in the Pseudo. It's not in Tanakh. It's in nothing. It's not. That's regurgitated words of men. The true scriptures you understand and the, and the true people that's going to be gathered as a whole house of Israel. So what the Lord says he's going to do, he's going to gather the house of Israel, he's going to take them to their land. When Yeshua is going to be over us for a thousand years. Now you can read this in Ezekiel chapter 38, 39, and 40. I want you guys to read. Stop just waiting for me to tell you something. You got to study to show yourself to be approved. When you read that, you're going to learn that the whole house of Israel is going to be gathered when Gog, Magog, and Moab, Russia, Iran, and China come over. That's when he's going to be mad. He's going to come down and he's going to destroy their armies. It's going to be called the Feast of the Birds. 
at that time when he destroys their armies at the Feast of the Birds, we're going to be in our land and we're going to be burying their bodies for seven months. We're going to be paying other men to do it. It's going to be called the land of Hamengog. And so when this happened, we'll be in safety and peace of unwalled villages. That's why when you read Ezekiel, you got to know that these are different time periods when he says certain prophecies. We'll be in unwalled villages for a thousand years. Satan's going to be locked up and we'll have peace. Yeshua, or you call, uh, what we call Yeshua, or you even call Jesus, he's coming back after 6,000 years. And at the end of the 6,000 years, he's going to reign for what? A thousand years. A day is a thousand years and a thousand years is a day. That is seven. Seven is completion. The earth was made in seven days. So also the, work, the earth had to go through judgment in seven days, which is a total of 7,000 years. So at the end of 7,000 years, when you read Ezekiel chapter 40, 41, you'll learn that the Messiah, you understand, um, he's not going to be over us, but Yeshua, Yahuwah, that's the most highest name of Elohim, which means he who breathes life, nail in hand. It says that no longer will the sun light the earth, that his light is going to light the earth because he's going to come down after Satan is thrown into the lake of fire. Also, it says that hell will be thrown into the lake of fire and that death will be done away. One man brought death, so it takes one man to do away with it, and that is the Messiah. He is the one that's over all of us. So um, that's your rapture. I just wanted to go through that. And I got many other books. We're going to do a lesson on the rapture or the gathering. I think I did one. On my YouTube rapture. So just go check it out. I think I did one. I put the link in uh mm -hmm. in the TikTok chat. Okay. I put the link to the YouTube channel. So I see a lot of people asking for that. Okay, good. So the YouTube channel is Y A H B R I L Yehuda. Y E H U D A H. Sister Makai, can you give me your TikTok channel, please? Also uh, make sure you put it in the chat. Okay. Put it in the chat. Yeah, what is I'm it? Put it in the chat, but it's Makaya. Spell it, please. M A K I Y A H Makaya, go ahead. Yehuda Y E H U D A H Y A H. Okay, she spelled it different. Y A H U D A H. U D A H. That's my TikTok. So that's her TikTok. So say it one more time so they can hear you clearly. I need you to stop for okay, a second. Just say it clearly. In the chat too. It's Makaya Yehuda. <laughs> Spell it, please. M A K I Y A H Y A H. U-D-A-H. Okay. Now, folks, we just went over prayer, the proper way to pray, according to scripture, not according to man. We also are, are, are going into how man and a woman should be acting towards each other and why we've been in so much darkness. We also have been going into a lot of the ways that the Lord think, not us. And knowing, we learned that if you don't know the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, you know none of the Lord's ways. He said you don't even know him. So you got to pick your books up, folks. Look, the world is coming to an end. Let's get this. You got more fires right now than you've ever seen in your life. Three quarters of the earth. Look it up. Google it. Three quarters of the earth is on fire, folks. The Lord said, I destroyed the earth the first time with a rain with, with, with what water. And then he gave us a rainbow to remind us that he would not destroy it again by water. Did you not see the burning man fest? When these people were stranded and a lot of them limbs was rotting off and all this because they're doing a ritual to their God, which is what's called a straw man fest. And so what happened, they was making mockery of the Lord. So not only did the Lord just bring distress and make their limbs rot off and some people die out there. Another thing he did, he put looked like a planet behind that whole place and he put a devil rainbow over that to let you know it's from him. When men try to say that's a heart machine or it's from them, or it's, it's something that man did. I don't care if it was, it could not happen if it wasn't the most high's will, folks. Exactly. He brings the good and the evil to fulfill what? Prophecy. Bible prophecy, folks. So we have to lean on not our own understanding, but what is written. And so I'm not going to give you what I think or what I feel. If it's not written, I'm not going to utter it out my mouth. Instead, I'll put my finger over my mouth if I don't know. And I'll say, let me get back to you with that. But the Lord has given me immense wisdom and understanding in these books and so many things, science, literature, math, um, and even spiritual things. And then I told people that when you pray to the Lord, a lot of times you don't realize how it works. When Joseph went into Egypt and when Joseph was getting ready to be take the throne, the only reason Joseph could not take the throne because he could not speak the 70 languages of the land. So that night an angel came down, Raphael mm -hmm. came and he taught him all the languages of the land. And so back then, in order to get to the Pharaoh to go speak to him, the Pharaoh would come down to the 34th step. And the person would stand on whatever language they could speak was one or two, they would stand on that step. If they could speak seven, they'd be on the seventh step. 
but it was nobody who had the 70 languages. But when Joseph came back the next day, because he went, the Lord went to him in a dream and a vision and taught him. And when he taught him those languages, he spoke all 70 and the Pharaoh was amazed. Not only that, he made him second in command. Mm -hmm. And he did that for a reason because he had to save all of Israel. So the Lord did it for a reason. And I'll give me a similar testimony. I was a poor, I was going through a lot at the time. And I was a maintenance guy, but I had a carpet cleaning company and I couldn't fix my truck. And so remember I say the Lord said, if you go in the closet, you pray in secret and I'll reward you openly. So I got on my knees and I prayed to the Lord because I had been fixing that truck for months, haven't I? Yeah, trying to figure never it out. Never could fix it, never could fix it. So one day I prayed to the Lord. I got on my knees. I said, Heavenly Father, since I was a little boy, you've always spoken to me. Father, you've always, you kept me from, 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 from accidents and from things that would happen to me. You show me, Father, who I am. You've also gave me a wife, Father, whom I love. Father, you've done so many amazing things for me. Father, right now I need you, Abba. I say, I can't fix my truck and I can't afford to get it fixed. I said, if you could please show me how to fix it, Father. If you could show me how to fix it, Father. I said, I would appreciate it so much. I need you, mm -hmm. Father, to teach me. So that night, as I went to bed and the Lord took my real walk of my spirit, he took me and my spirit into the garage. He took him, and all I seen was a shadow of an angel. The angel was tall. I just remember he was big. The angel stood at the front of the truck. He took the manifold off. He took this off. He took the sea caps off. He took all this stuff that I didn't even know what to take off. He took it off, and then he took the part off, and he showed it to me. And then he put everything back on, piece by piece. I woke up. What I tell you the next day? The Lord showed me how to fix my truck. I'm like, what? She was like, what up, bro? Negro, you've been fixing that truck for four months. You ain't going to fix that truck. And he went and fixed it. You know, it was one like hour, an hour. One hour. <laughs> something that for months I could not fix. Yes. The most high came to me in a dream and a vision. Job, read Job chapter 33 for me, please. All right. Folks, I'm going back and forth to precepts. I want you to read something. I want you to understand how this works. And when you pray, how the Lord works. In one hour, that angel had showed me how to change my car, something I couldn't do in months. But once the angel showed me, just like Joseph, when he gave him the 70 language, I knew exactly how to fix it. I fixed that truck in one hour. And that was from the Most High. I take no credit. Moses took credit for smiting the rock and giving us water. He could not get in the promise. Now, folks, when the Lord comes by this time, I want to make sure I got oil in my lamp. I want to make sure that there's some light here coming out of me. I don't want to have a lamp, a lamp that's half full of oil. And if Christ is the light, and the only way I can get light is to fill my lamp with oil, you understand? I don't want to say that I did anything on my own accord, but by the grace of the Holy Spirit. Go to Job, Job 33, 33, verse 1. It says, Wherefore, Job, I pray you, hear my speeches and hearken to all my words. Behold, now I have opened my mouth. Hold on here. What that's not the one? Um, it should be it's Job. I think it's 33. Hold on, Job 33 14. Okay, 33 14. I was there. You just have to read down for all right. It 14. Says, for L speaks once, so the Lord speak once. Uh -huh. Go ahead, yea, yea twice. twice. Yet man perceives it not. Why? Because the first voice is his. Got it? He'll speak to you again. But the second voice that we hear a lot of times, who our own. We follow our own heart. But the Lord does something. Go ahead and read. In a dream, this is verse 15. In a dream, in a vision of the night, and in a vision of the night, deep sleep falls when you fall in a men, deep sleep. This is why you pray before you go to bed. Go ahead, slumberings upon the bed. Yes, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instructions. And so he came to me in my dream and my vision. He opened my ears, told me what to do, and he sealed it. Mm -hmm. So when I got up and told her, then I said, Matter of fact, yes, I said, it, Matter of fact, because he has sealed my instructions. He told me exactly what to do and how to do it. And you perceive. When he told me that the, the tsunami was coming, he came a dream and a vision. And when my wife grabbed my shirt, he had sealed those instructions. It's going to happen. When the Lord came to me in a dream and a vision and showed me the Twin Towers going down, he didn't just like say this might happen. He said it's going to happen. And it happened. When the Lord told me to leave that house three times and I left with my brother, and then four people shot the back of the head, it's because he came and told. Now, that time, I wasn't a dream or a vision. He gave me that while I was standing wide awake. But the point I'm making is he comes to us in a dream or a vision. He seals our instruction. That's why you need to pray. So when you pray, you ask him for things and ask for spiritual things. Don't ask for carnal things. Yeah. Remember, Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light and to deceive you. But Satan can't. He don't come to you in a dream or a vision to seal your instructions like the Lord. The Lord is on the inside. Satan is on the outside waiting for doctors to come on the inside. Mm -hmm. We just read this. Um, 
You got another question there? Yeah, somebody says, this is A2009-23 says. So wait a minute, answer this question first. Hold that one. Uh, what do you think about Ethiopia being mentioned in the Holy Bible? Say. Well, let's go to Psalms 83, verse 1. Let's answer yeah, that real right. quick. Yeah. So we don't have to do what we all think. Nations are in this we, we don't want to do what we think. Let's go ahead and see what he says about yeah. Ethiopia real quick. Okay. So let's go to Psalms 83, verse 1. Verse 1. Keep not thy silence, O Lord, and hold not thy peace. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. And they that hate thee lift up their heads, and they take them crafty counsel against thy people. They say, come, let us cut them off from being a nation, so the name of Israel be no more remembrance. For they consulted against thy hidden ones. Go ahead and read. Keep reading for me. Because I don't want, I want to go ahead and read it. All right. They consulted against our hidden ones. It's all started. Verse 4. Go ahead. 83 verse 4. Because I want to read who the people are. Who he's they judging. have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. <laughs> so, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So there's a group of people that got together to sell us. You know, because in 70 AD, a lot of our people ran into what you would call that land. You got to remember, Moses married an Ethiopian woman. You understand? Um, but this was the daughter of Abraham. People don't know that. And she lived in Ethiopia, but she wasn't actually an Ethiopian woman. And so he had also married an Egyptian woman. And so what people don't understand is that the Ethiopian woman, he never slept with her. He never did. He was 18 years old when he got there. And he reigned there for 40 years. But at the end of that reign, she told the people that Moses won't sleep with me. So they said, what do you mean? They said, he won't sleep with me. And so they ended up, he had to leave. And they put his, their son in second man. This is Ethiopians. So these people, you understand, are people that's written in the scripture who also sold our people. Keep reading. Psalms 83, right. verse 1. Verse five. verse 5. Go ahead. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against you. Now, what was the name of the people who had us in the slavery? They were called the confederacy. This is telling you. It said a symbol would be the eagle. Go ahead and read. Let's see who these people verse are. Six. The tabernacles of Edom. Who? Edom, Esau, the, the ones who run America or Rome, the Romans. Go ahead. The Ishmaelim or the Is Ishmaelites. So the people who call themselves Ishmaelites. Go ahead. Of Moab. Moab. Go ahead. And the Hagrim. Okay. Gabal and Ammon. Okay. And Amalek. Okay. The Palestine with the inhabitants of Sor. Okay. Which in the King James says Ethiopian. Okay. What name is that? Sor. Okay. Sor. Uh -huh. In that book, that's the Ethiopians. The Ethiopians said they have the Ark of the Covenant. They're liars. When you go into the book from 2nd Baruch, and you'll learn that the Ark of the Covenant, the ground opened up. The Lord did not want these nations to have our glory whatsoever. Okay, we're going to read the rest of them. It says, Asher also is joined with them. They yep. have helped the children of Lot. That's they what lie. they do. Yep. Go ahead. Do unto them as unto the Midianim or the Midianites. Right. As to Sisera. As to Yavin. So as basically, the there's a lot of nations. Yeah. There's a lot of nations there. And so you got to understand that these people became confederate. And so Baruch said that the, the, the earth opened up, that the mercy seat was taken, the veil, the Ark of the Covenant was taken, the veil, the women who had the dresses with the pomegranates are women with gold weaving in with pomegranates at the bottom. He did not want these other nations to even have our women's dresses. So he took all of this stuff and he closed the earth up upon it. So everything can be explained. The Ethiopians are prophesied to be destroyed. Not all of them, because there's going to be a six parties destroyed of all these people. When you read Psalms 83.1, when you go to Ezekiel chapter 40, 41, you'll learn he's only destroyed a sixth part of them. So there's going to be a remnant of all these people left. These are going to be the same people that come up against us in the millennial time of unwalled, wall, un unwalled villages. They're going to come up against us to try to take our city. And that's when the chariots coming down are going to destroy them for the last time. And this is when the Lord himself is coming down. He's going to be over all of our people, the whole world. So I hope that answered that question. All right. All right. I got a few people that's asking what religion is this? We don't. Well, first of all, let me straighten some out with all of y'all. We don't do religion whatsoever. We're religious, which means we follow laws, judgments, statutes, and commandments. Religion was given to us by Constantine, um, but excuse me, Christianity. But religions was given by man. If you notice that all religions go kiss whose ring? The Pope. Whose ring they kiss, Sister Micaiah? The Pope. All religions go kiss the Pope's ring. The only one the Dalai Lama doesn't wear black, but most of them all wear black. Why? Because they're dead to them. The Pope or the Vatican is built on what you would call a graveyard. It's called a city of Vasilia. Vasilia, when you Google it, is the goddess of death. 
That's why the Bible says all roads lead to where? Rome. Then you learn that the Rome was built by two what? It says that the son of perdition sits on seven hills. So perdition means the son who sends you back to sin all the time. So it says he sits on seven hills. So who, what are seven hills? Then you learn that Remus and Romulus built Rome. Remus, Remus died, but Romulus, his brother, built Rome on what? Seven hills. Yeah. It's called a city of Facilia. So that city, you understand, is where also the Lord says he's coming back and going to trot it down because these are the ones who also killed Yeshua. So everything can be explained by scripture. What yeah. other question was there? Um, somebody says, good afternoon. I'm in darkness. So, I'm saved. I have learned more listening to you and your wife. I haven't been taught what I'm learning here. Blessings and much love. All, all praise the most high. We're all Hallelujah. in darkness. You're not in darkness by yourself. We're all in darkness. One thing the Lord told us when we finished going through that nine day process was feed my sheep. There you go. And that's see, just my two boys were taken from me. When they ran off the road by, you know, the folks and they were dead within three minutes. I lost two of my firstborn in one night. And I was in such a, a bad place, but not with the Lord ever. I never questioned him because he told me before it happened, didn't he? Not yes, Michelle. he did. Before he it even happened. gave them time to amend their relationships and to see them and spend time with them. Why did I tell you I was going to Florida to see my boys? In case something happened. And the Lord was telling me what? That something might... They might one of them might be passing, and he told me that. He and thought so it was one of them. I thought it was going to be one, so I told my other son, "You got to go with me. When you go with me, we need to go see your brothers because the Lord's telling me that one of them may not be here." And so I went down to see him because I, I was supposed to ship him something, and I didn't. I said instead I need to go see him. But my son told me he said before we left my one son we stayed the night with. I told him we need to go see your big brother. You said you said he said Dad, you told me that the Lord told you may need to go see him because you probably never see him again. I said, I said that to you? He said, yeah. And so when I seen my baby, he was 33 at the time. And he was walking off from me. I seen a little nine-month-old baby right next to him. And it was just like the baby I saw when he first took his steps. And I knew something was going to happen. Because the Lord put that baby next to him. And I saw it, my eyes. I saw the baby there. And I remember he took his first steps in nine months. So in my eyes, I'm thinking that I could change it by not saying nothing or not talking about it, that it won't happen. Not thinking that it already was in his will for it to happen. They had talked for four years. How did they finally get together? One night they both died together in the same car. It was the Lord did that. He allowed it, but he allowed me to get peace first and to go see them first. And he told me what he was going to do, but I thought it was going to be one. I didn't think it was going to be two. And the Holy Spirit was asking, it was like I was hearing this voice like, which one if something happened? Which one? And I said, I can never make that decision. I don't want none of my babies to go nowhere. And I went by into my baby, my younger boy, when I was pulling off, he was watching my car. And as he was watching my car, I wanted to turn around so bad to give him a hug because the feeling I felt so bad, I'd never see him again. But I said, if I turn around to give him a hug, then that's going to mean that that that's feeling I got is true and I'm going to buy into it it'll happen. Because I know when the Lord tells me something happened, so I didn't want to buy it. But you can't change prophecy. You see, sometimes the Lord will take your babies so that you can see them in the kingdom before something happens so bad where you won't see them. And so it's his will, and I don't know why he allowed them folks to take my babies out. But at the same time, I know that we got the resurrection. Samuel had to go to Eli and tell him that he was going to lose his two children. And Eli didn't do anything about his sons sleeping with the women. So later, Eli, not only did they die, but he died. And then Samuel's boys, when they grew up, and these are two firstborn just like me, and these are righteous people, so who am I? Samuel's sons was guilty of filthy lucor or gambling. And so the Lord took them to his, their two firstborn. Job lost seven sons in one day and three daughters. And these were righteous people, so who am I? The Messiah, who is the Lord's son, he was hung on a tree. I couldn't stop my babies when I felt that feeling. I wanted to stop it. They deaf. I wanted to intercede and maybe I could say something or pray just like David when he prayed for his baby for seven days. So the baby wouldn't die from Bathsheba. He prayed for seven days. The baby wouldn't die. He put on sash cough and ash and everything. But then on the seventh day, it was done. The baby died. So he went on and guessed himself, put on garbage. People said, why? Wait a minute. We could console you when the baby was dying. Why are you happy now? Why, why are you getting up now? And, and you're not upset. He says, um, because it was the Lord's will. He says, I was petitioning the Lord while the baby was dying 
But now that the baby's dead, that's his will. There's no need of me to do that no more. Yeshua could have been saved by the Most High. The Lord could have saved his son, but he didn't. He let him die for us. But we got a promise in this book. When you read Ezekiel chapter 34, he said he's going to raise our dead. He's going to raise the dead. He's going to make the dead come from the grounds and we're going to see them again. They're going to be in that first resurrection. And all those who pierce Yeshua's side. Yeah, somebody so, said uh, the most highest meaning is you was telling what happened to your boys and what people don't understand do. is no, they don't know. judgment is falling on even people that are close to us at times. Yeah, they, they have, there has nothing to and do the thing, with the right? most high being evil or anything. Right. It was just judgment. You don't know the conversation I had with my son before this happened. Exactly. You have no clue. You don't even know the thing my babies was doing. Yeah. Not saying that they caused the monks themselves, but the devil has to get what? Permission. Permission. Cursing your mama. My baby's cursing their mama's out real bad. And the Bible says when you they were do cursing that, their mama you out. shorten your days when you don't respect my your One day I had a vision in a dream. I'm just talking, you know. The Lord do things for a reason. I don't know. And I'll leave that alone. But I had a dream one day that my ex-wife was in the bed with me. And I looked at, what are you doing in my bed? What are you doing? She said, she said, Harold, I'm miserable than an MF. That's what she said to me. I didn't know what was going on. I woke up the next day and I called her right away. Hey, you all right? What's going on? The first word she said to me was, Harold, I'm miserable than an MF. I said, what's going on? She says, 110 degrees here. I'm in clear water, and the boys won't bring me an air conditioner. And that's in Florida now. Y'all know how to heat it. Man, there. when I say I got so upset, I called my oldest baby, and I yelled at him so hard. He said, well, that she do. I said, I don't care what she do. That's your mother. Do you, want, do you know the Lord looking at y'all? And I end up making them go take her AC unit right then. So a lot of times... You know, my baby, my baby boy, his car flipped three times. No, my oldest boy's car flipped three different times. His car flipped three times, and he walked away from every one. So you can't, you can't, you can't rain this on the Lord. Another time, some Crips and some Bloods came up to my son. They was in the backyard. My bro, my son was hardened, and he didn't scare nobody. He got his daddy spirit, and he was a big boy. So the dudes were scared of him. So he told the Bloods in the backyard, "Y'all need to get out of here. My woman don't like y'all back there, and she ain't comfortable." And so he thought it was nothing. So they was getting up to go. But he said, all of a sudden, this 14-year-old boy ran up to him. Boom, 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 boom. He said, point blank range. Yeah, holes in his clothes. Said, Let me finish y talking. Right. Let me finish talking, okay. please, Michelle. Mm -hmm. My baby told me, and my oldest boy told me, mm -hmm. he said, Dad, I still got the pants that Dreads had on. So what you mean? He said, they got five bullet holes in them, but he wasn't even hit. I'm going to say this again. The pants had five bullet holes. The seat, the seat he was sitting in had bullet holes in it, but my son was not even hit. So you can't tell me the Lord is mean. The Lord has saved my babies many times. Y'all don't know these things. My baby was shot point blank range and not one bullet touched him. He will give warning. So I don't know why he took them. I don't know what could have happened. So he might have taken them so that they didn't do something so bad I wouldn't see him. I don't know these things. It's above my pay grade. But what I do know is his will. And I accept it. Just like when Abraham was going to go sacrifice Isaac. When he went to go sacrifice Isaac, read this in the book of Jasher. The devil came and told Sarah what was going to happen. And so what he did was, you know, she she was so upset that she thought that, that he was going to see Shem and, and Noah. She she That's what she was told by, by Abraham. And so come to find out he was going to use as a sacrifice. So she went looking for him. But then when he was there and get ready to sacrifice, the angel came down and asked the Lord, don't do it. So you'll learn when you read that account that there was a ram that was in the thicket over there that was created before the earth was even made for that moment. The Lord is Alpha and Omega. Mm -hmm. And so when he took that lamb that, that in the thicket and he sacrificed it instead of Isaac. And so Satan came to Sarah again, but this time as a young comely man, handsome man, that's what comely means. And this time he said, listen, Isaac lived, he lived. Remember, Sarah was an old lady when she had him. She didn't think she could have children. She was so overjoyed and overwhelmed with him being living that she her heart burst. That's how much pressure she put on her heart. It wasn't the Lord that did that. She did that to herself by being overwhelmed. Just like we are judged by the things we do. We don't know why the Lord does what he does. Did he not say to Job, to Satan, Satan, do you see my faithful servant Job? Yeah, I see him, but you put a hedge around him. He said, yeah, but I know my servant Job would never turn on me. Yeah, you say that, but I bet you if I go touch him, he will. So they had a conversation. 
about Job. The Lord said, I know my servant ain't going to change on me. I know that he don't came into the truth. And no matter what you do, he'll never change for me. I know this. So he allows Satan to go ahead and test him. How do you not know that I wasn't a conversation about me in heaven? Hmm? Or about you when you being tested? My children being taken was a test. I never blamed the Lord for that. I just said it was his will. When Abraham found out that Sarah was dead, the first thing he said was, it was the Lord's will. And the Lord said, you were truly, because you didn't blame me for her death, that you are my friend. See, folks, you got to get these scriptures to get understanding how to process death, because there's no true death. We leave this body, but the spirit lives forever. And in the resurrection, we're going to be spiritual creatures, not carnal creatures. This world was created because of transgression. This world's created and his body was created so that the Lord could see the fruit. Ezra asked that question. Why did you make Adam perfect? Why did you make him perfect? He said, Ezra, I give my children a law so I can see the fruit that comes from them. It's all about that seed, sperm, race, progenitor. The Bible says that a bad seed can't produce good fruit and a good tree can't produce bad fruit. It's all about the seed. Hmm? And those boys are my seed. So I pray I see them in the resurrection, which is coming real soon. And so you never blame the Lord for things that happen, folks. Did he not say his ways are equal and always are unequal? We don't know what reason he does what. But when we do see his judgment, you always want to say it was his will. Mm -hmm. Ezra, ask another question. Then why is it that you could make all the men and the women on earth be born at one time? Why we got to go through this time period? Why could we just be born at one time? Ezra. This is what the Lord said. To you. Can a woman's womb hold 10 babies at one time? Wait, 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 do one after there. No, no. He said, nor could the earth hold all the righteous souls that had to come to it at one time mm -hmm. for my new kingdom in Revelation 21 that's coming down to the earth. There's no such thing as going to heaven. It's not in the Bible. Nowhere. Heaven is the Lord's throne. Earth is his footstool. Revelation 21 says there's a new kingdom coming down to the new earth. This is going to be a new heaven here because the earth is going to be raised. Basically, it's a garden of Eden all over, but it's going to be expanded. When you see Wonder Woman going into that city, when they go into that, her land and go through that veil, same thing. When you see Wakanda, because when you really learn about the Wakandans, it's actually a place in America where all the tribes of Israel, the Indians, would all come into a safe place and be around each other. It's called Wakanda. Then that city, when you looked at that Black Panther, they went into this veil when they flew into it that you couldn't see it from the outside. That is what's going to happen when the Lord comes back for his people and put us in that new city, which you call New Jerusalem, which never goes dark. It always has light. And every nation, no matter who they are, are going to come visit us to get enlightenment. That's why it says we have to be a light, not on the bushel that burns up, but on the mountaintop that gives light to the whole world. Just give us some understanding here based on scripture, folks, and how I process things. I only process them according to scripture. I take my heart out of it. Curse the man who follows his own heart. So, Mikhail, you got anything? Um, you want to answer some more questions? We answer one more question. One more All question. Right, so preschool.me says, do we say the Lord's prayer when we pray in secret? You say the Lord's prayer anytime you want to say it. He just said, when we, we just read, go back to my lesson on YouTube. Y-E-H, um, B-R-I-L, Yehuda, Y-E-H-U-D-A-H. -E we, we just read that the Lord's prayer is for when you don't have a prayer to say. You always say, he said, that's the prayer you say. So that's when you say the Lord's Prayer. When you have a personal conversation with the Lord or you have nothing to say and if you're not sure what to say, just say the Lord's Prayer, which encompasses everything. But you should always have a personal conversation. Thank you, Rob Glenn, for the gift. Thank you for the gift so much. RGB, thank you for the gift. Thank you. Thank you, RGB, for it, Glenn. And that means they're appreciative of me giving this word. Thank you so much. And so the prayer should be, the Lord's Prayer should be used when you don't have a prayer from yourself. That's when you use this prayer. It supersedes for all other prayers. But remember, don't have repetitive prayers. Don't be saying the same thing over and over. If he knows the, the, every hair on your head, do you not think he knows what you need? Say it once. Yet you may say it twice, but don't go thrice. Don't say it three times. He doesn't like repetitive things. So, yes, you yay be yay, your nay be nay. Thank you so much for the gifts, guys, on TikTok, too. I greatly appreciate that so much, guys. And anybody on um, YouTube, if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask. My wife is filtering questions out now. Um, but we've been on here a long time. We've been on here right now, three hours, 58 minutes. It's a long time. So we're going to get ready to sign off.
I want to thank you guys for coming. As a matter of fact, we're going to pray out. Can you put that down for one second, Mike? Yeah, I'm just putting it on Okay, thank you, dear. Thank you, sweetheart. So we're going to just say a prayer because prayer is where, you know, with us, we have power in our prayer. But as a group, we can move mountains. You know, one chord, you understand, can break easy. But three chords, you understand, makes a rope. And it's very hard to break. One person asked what Bible are we reading from. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go back again. Go tell them, put the link in, cephr.net, where to buy it. cephr.net. This is the oldest Bible. King James, actually, when he took three teams, one took the Old Testament, one took the New Testament, and one took what you would call the Apocrypha. Three teams. They got this book here and a lot of the books out. All the Dead Sea Scroll books are here for the most part. Dead Sea Scrolls, the King James 1611, um, they're all here. Jasher, Jubilees, Enoch, they're all here. This is the most accurate Bible that you can get. It's called a Sefer. Who gave us a Sefer? The Sefer was given us by Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a prophet. He had a secretary. His name was Baruch. Baruch has four books in here. The Lord showed him the earth opened up. He showed him that before the, the, the temple was sacked in 70 AD, Baruch was shown everything. So Baruch gave us this. He wrote three ciphers and he sent three and a half. He sent three ciphers with eagles to the ten and a half tribes that came up to the, what you call the Americas or as a rest or Atlantis. Mm -hmm. The Benjamin Levi and Judah, who were still in what you would call Israel, the, the southern tribes, you understand. He took two wise men to give those, them their books. And so this book here is the most accurate Bible that you can get. You go to cephr.net and you want to ask. What's in this Bible? I'm going to go down the list real quick. In structure, you have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Second books, you got Jubilees, Enoch, Jasher. Prophets, you got Joshua, Judges, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 King, 2 Kings, Isaiah, Jeremiah, the Epistle of Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Tobit, 1 Baruch, 2 Baruch, and the Prayer of Manasseh. The Twelve, you got Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and you have Malachi. The writings, you have Psalms, Proverbs, Job, the wisdom of Solomon, and Ecclesiastes. The roles, Song of Solomon, Ruth, Lamentations, Ecclesiastes, Esther, the addition to Esther, and Judith. The second temple, you got First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, Daniel, the prayer of Azariah, Susanna, Bill and the dragon, Ezra, Nehemiah, Third Ezra, Fourth Ezra, you got the first Maccabees, second Maccabees, third Maccabees, and the fourth Maccabees. The Synoptic Gospels, the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Mark, and the Gospel of Luke. The Acts of the Apostles, you got James, first Peter, second Peter, and Jude. Paul's letters, we have first Timothy, Titus, first Thessalonians, second Thessalonians, Romans, Galatians, second Timothy, first Corinthians, second Corinthians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Philemon, and Hebrews. And John's letters, the Gospel of John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and Revelation. And so these books are books that they took away from us. Remember, when Constantine created what he called Christianity, he only gave us 66 canons, and he took a lot of these books away. So a lot of our books were taken away. When you order this book, folks, make sure you get the tabs. Now, I also read out of what we would call the Tanakh. Tanakh is what? Old Testament. Mm -hmm. So the Tanakh reads from right to left. You get it on the same site, C-P-H-E-R. But it's, it's directly translated from Hebrew into English. Instead of Hebrew, Latin, then English. Hebrew, Greek, Latin, then English. It's English to Hebrew. So some of the words are more accurate understanding of the words. You know, say, for instance, when you hear the word virgin, you think that virgin means a young woman who's never had sex. Virgin in Hebrew simply means a young woman of a maritable age. Maiden means a woman who's never had sex. So I hope I answered that question. Thank you guys so much um, for coming with us today on the Sabbath day. And I want to say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, heaven, blessed be you, Adonai, Yahuwah, El Shaddai, God of God and King of Kings. But Father, you say if they knock that you will come into them, that you will suck with man. I pray, Heavenly Father, that this prayer that we have today, that the people who seek search you out and seek you out, Father, that they learn how to pray today and know that they need to come to you with an earnest heart and an open mind and with a tongue that's not divided. 
Father, thank you so much for your promises of gathering your children from the four corners of the earth. And not only us, but also all those others who believe in you, Father. Those who grab the skirt of a Jew, Father. I pray that you bless them as well, those who wake up and come out of sin and know that they've been taught lies from their forefathers. You said, Father, one day you will wake us up. And Father, this is that day. For your children are the two witnesses that's been prophesying for over a thousand days in this city, in this, city, in this time, in this place. And you said on the third day you will make us walk on our feet. You said that we are the valley of dry bones, Father, that you will put flesh to flesh and send news on. And now you will breathe life in us. And we know, Father, your name means he who breathes life nail in hand. Thank you, Father, for breathing life into us. And I pray that you keep that nail in our hand. For you are the holiest of holies. El Shaddai, God of all gods, and there's no other God. You are the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Thank you for your son, Yeshua. And Yeshua, thank you. For if it wasn't for you who died on that stick for us, we would not have salvation. We would not have grace. We would not be able to repent. Thank you for your sacrifice for us, Yeshua. For if it wasn't for you, we would not have light in our life. Thank you, Yeshua. If it wasn't for you, we would not we would not understand that you come to save us and that this hell hole that we're in is going to end soon. If it wasn't for you, we would not know the redemption that is coming for all of mankind. Thank you so much, Yeshua, and thank you, Abba. Thank you so much for giving us that hidden manna, that spiritual food, Heavenly Father, and waking us up. And not only us, but all those who follow. Those who have sickness, Father, who are listening to us, I pray that you help heal them and take it away. And I pray that everyone here prays that anyone here who's sick that together in prayer that we can help heal them and take their sickness away. I pray, Father, that anybody here, Father, who's going through emotional problems with a spouse or, or with a loved one, Father, or somebody in their family, Father, who ain't right, that you take it away and give them peace. I pray, Heavenly Father, that your light shines always on those who seek the light, that darkness that is on people around us, that you take the darkness and the, and the demons that are around these people and bind them, Heavenly Father, bind them. I release good spirits. I pray for those, Father, who are trying to take care of their children and their grandchildren, and they're struggling with the means that you find a way to help them, Father, and so that they don't feel so stressed and overwhelmed and know that they'll be blessed in the kingdom. You say those who take an orphan there or orphan child, that you'll bless them in the kingdom. You say that those who bury the dead, they have the first place in the kingdom. Father, I pray these things, and I pray that you bless also the widow, the homeless, the fatherless, and the motherless. I thank you for your multiple blessings, Father. Without you, there will be no light on this earth. Without this word, Father, we be in gross darkness. Thank you for the oil. Thank you for the light. Thank you, Father, for the faith and the hope that we have in you and your son. I pray these things in the name of your son, Yeshua, I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. All praise the most high. Blessings, all praise the most high. So, saying this, folks, thank you guys for joining us today. And thank you guys for um, asking great, beautiful questions. There's no question that is dumb. How can a question be dumb when we've all been in ignorance and we've all been spiritually drunk? There's always, always great questions, folks. There's no such thing as a stupid question. I'm not going to tell you what I think. I'm going to read it in the scripture. And I'm only going to tell you what is written. I take myself out, you understand, and I put the Lord in. I want to get into the new promised land, even if I get my big toe in there. I don't care where I fall in there, as long as I can get in. That's why when you pray, you must repent of your sins and ask the Lord to please, 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 you understand, petition him so that you can get into the new kingdom. Make sure you repent of all your sins, but don't go back to perdition. Going back to perdition means sin. Make sure when you do repent, don't go back to your vomit. Don't keep chasing your own tail. At some point, you got to take that, that heart of yours, you understand, that's like a stone. And you got to make it into a sponge. And so when his wisdom comes in, you soak it up instead of it pouring off. You need to stop being that cup. When wisdom tries to come in with somebody around you who are much wiser than you or teaching you wisdom, stop having a thousand holes. When that water goes in, which is wisdom, that's why you see living waters. Don't have those holes in the bottom where it falls right out. Seal them up with the Holy Spirit. Pray, study, and show yourself to be approved. Thank you guys so much. And all you guys on TikTok who gave me gifts and all that, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. And for you on YouTube, thank you again for joining me. It's been a pleasure.
All right.